One clear day, in the courtyard of a multi-story university, two boys were deciding where to have lunch. One of them was Ji Hong Hyun. Ji Hong said that it was hot outside, so it would be better to eat in the dining hall. People were bustling around, and suddenly two girls ran up to him and started telling Ji Hong that they really liked his lecture today, and it would be cool if he was their teacher's assistant next semester. The girls invited him to have lunch with them because a new restaurant had been built on the far exit. Ji Hong apologized and said that they could have lunch another time because he and Chang Su were going to the cafeteria now. Everyone around him was delighted with Ji Hong, and his friend remarked that he was a hit today because Ji Hong was tall, handsome, smart, and had a kind heart, and even the boys were delighted with him. Chang Su, with a happy smile, told Ji Hoon as he waved goodbye to the girls that he was making promises to everyone to have lunch another day, and it seemed like he was taking up his time. In the schoolyard, Ji Hoon could be heard asking Chang Su not to say that, because he was already uncomfortable, and Chang Su was surprised and told him to enjoy his popularity. Without turning to him, Ji Hoon agreed, because who would have thought that the guy who was attractive to almost everyone in school had become a young father? The embarrassed hero tells us about himself. His name is Kim Ji Hoon, and he is not used to being the center of attention all the time, because... In the corridor of the university, the boy bumped into a man, apologized frightened, to which the man with glasses and a can of some kind of drink replied that it was nothing to worry about. Walking further down the hall, the guy asked the girl in surprise who this new employee was, and the girl replied that he was a student, working in Professor Chan Dong Ho's research lab, and he was a teaching assistant in the last class. The guy was surprised to hear that he had been in the class, but he didn't remember the assistant at all. Ji Hoon, sipping his drink, told Chan Su that Professor Chan had blown his mind. Not long ago, he was a small man, invisible, an ordinary student who combined work and study and was constantly tired. Once again, Ji Hong is in the university courtyard with Chang Soon as they discuss a place to eat lunch. Chang Su continued to praise him and ask how he had achieved such a change, to which Ji Hong replied in embarrassment and surprise that he hadn't done anything. In fact, he doesn't know how it happened because there is no scientific explanation for it. When Ji Hong and Chang Su were standing by the stairs, they heard people talking to a girl, saying that she was very cute, just a doll, not a child, and asking if she was waiting for someone. A girl with very pretty hair rushed up the stairs, shouting the word daddy. Ji Hong grabbed the joyful girl in his arms. One thing he could say for sure was that all the changes in his life had begun the very day he first met his daughter, his precious beloved baby with big eyes, a joyful smile, and a big butterfly on her dress, Kim John Il. In one of the windows of the high-rise building, someone could be heard telling someone to wake up. The tinkling voice tickled my ears. In the room, which was flooded with the morning sun, someone's voice was heard saying that it was time to get up. It was morning. Was it really a dream? Surprised, Ji Hong lay in his bed with his head wrapped in a blanket. The voice continued to say that his mom always said, the early riser gets the best of the morning, and his dad was a sleeper. Stunned, Ji Hong jumped out of bed because he did not understand who was calling him dad. A little smiling girl with big eyes told him to wake up because the sun was already up. And suddenly Ji Hong remembered that yesterday he had suddenly found his daughter. He laughed sitting on the bed because it was not a dream, and now he had to take care of the child. The little girl climbed onto his bed and called him to eat with a beaming smile. Sitting in the cafe, Ji Hong thought that he never could have imagined that this would happen to him. As he sipped his coffee, he thought about quitting, because he was just an ordinary college student, tired of looking for a job and a steady income. Angry, Ji Hong said that he had put up with the antics of that old bastard of a professor for a long time, but this was too much. Suddenly, the phone rang, and Ji Hong picked up the phone and said hello to his mother. He repeated his mother's question about what he was eating and answered why she thought that a grown man couldn't cook for himself, saying that he was eating well and that she shouldn't worry. When his mother asked him the next question, Ji Hong began to answer angrily, saying that he had already said everything on the subject because he still needed to complete his master's degree to get his specialty. Suddenly, he stood up and slammed his hand on the table, and the people in the cafe looked at him in surprise. Ji Hong began to speak angrily about how if he quit his studies now, no one would hire him later, because big companies don't hire just anyone. Ji Hong got up from his desk, picked up his clothes, and continued to talk to the shouts of the visitors. 
He angrily told his mother that he had already been annoyed with the professor today and asked her to at least stop nagging him. He angrily put the coffee tray on the table and left the cafe. On the street, he continued to ask her angrily why she thought he didn't want to look for a job because he didn't want to work or that he was having fun working in college. His parents' tuition money ran out sooner than he expected, and so Ji Hong had to take time off from school to earn some money. Six years later, he was finally able to graduate with a bachelor's degree, but the professor said that in order to get his specialty, Ji Hong had to complete his master's degree. It wasn't that he persuaded him, but somehow he managed to finish his master's degree, and then suddenly it turned out that he had to get a PhD to be able to teach. Ji Hong continued his angry conversation with his mother. He said that he needed to find a stable job to somehow fix his affairs and his nerves because he still had to defend his PhD. Ji Hong stopped to look at his phone and said that he was so irritated because of the stress. Then he turned to his mom, apologized and said he was in a bad mood, thanked her for taking care of him and said goodbye. Everyone wants a good life, but he can't even provide for himself. So all these things are unattainable dreams for him. Ji Hong looked at his phone again and dialed someone's number. Walking down the street, he asked the person he was talking to what he was doing and if he was busy. It was Friday, so the man suggested going out to eat and drink soju. The morning sun was shining down on the room and the bed Ji Hong was lying on. It seemed that he had had too much to drink last night. He was lying there, dying of a headache, when suddenly the bell rang and Ji Hong pushed himself up on one elbow. His level of irritation began to rise, thinking it was just another salesman showing up on a Saturday morning. After five minutes, Ji Hong's irritation level began to rise, because the person standing outside his door had not gone anywhere. He got out of bed with some mockery, because this someone was very annoying, and because of this, his irritation level continued to rise. Ji Hong put one foot off the bed and was struck by the desire of the salesman, who he thought was behind the door, to sell him something. When he opened the door, his irritation level was already at an all-time high, and he angrily began to shout at the girl standing behind the door that he didn't trust anyone and wouldn't buy anything. The girl with the big eyes and the butterfly on her dress seemed a little upset by this reaction. When Ji Hong realized who he was looking at, his level of irritation dropped to zero, his face became very joyful, and it should not be hidden that he was eager for various niceties. He began to ask what had happened and who had let her walk in just one dress in such a cold weather. The girl was silent and just looked at him. She was carrying a large suitcase behind her back. Then Ji Hong, somewhat embarrassed, decided that she was lost and that he should report it to the police. After some silence, the girl said only one word, Dad, with curiosity in her voice. Ji Hong stood there for a moment, the word Dad running through his head several times. Then he said, embarrassed, that she had probably lost her dad, and that he just looked like him. The girl replied that Ji Hong was her father. Confused, Ji Hong did not understand what she was talking about. He began to explain to her that he was not her father. He began to say that she was still young and probably did not know, but uncles and aunts usually get married and have children, and he was not married. The girl interrupted him with a denial. Ji Hong was desperate. He asked who her mother was. The girl curiously replied that her mother's name was Yona. Bei Yona. The man was stunned to hear this name. Bei Yona was from Ju Gong's first corps, a beautiful slender girl with brown hair that blew in the wind. Seven years ago, he went on tour with Yona, and they actually slept together. But after that, she suddenly cut off all contact, and now this girl claims to be his daughter. While Ji Hoon was thinking, the girl picked up his phone, which he had accidentally dropped and didn't even notice. She said that her mom asked him to call her when the girl came to see her dad. While Ji Hong leaned against the wall in despair, thinking only that this could not be true, the girl dialed the number and told her mother that she had already arrived, and of course nothing had happened because she was her daughter. Then she told her mom that her dad was there and she would put him on the phone. A dazed Ji Hong turned to the girl when she said that his mother was asking him to use the phone and picked up the phone with a calm expression. He heard Bei Young's voice on the phone, saying that they hadn't seen each other for a long time and asking how he was doing. Ji Hoon was shocked that it was really Bei Yona. As the little girl sat on the suitcase behind Ji Hoon and swung her legs, he began to bombard the woman with questions. He didn't understand what was going on, why Bei Young hadn't told him she had a child, and even began to suspect that it was a prank. 
Bae Young was outraged and told him to be careful what he said, because Charing could hear him, she was not a little girl and understood a lot, and the fact that she was his daughter was true. Ji Hoon couldn't believe it, and Bae Young told him to take a paternity test if he had any doubts about her words. Then Ji Hoon started asking why she disappeared, and without explaining anything, Bae Young just said that there were certain reasons. Ji Hoon didn't understand what those reasons were, and little Charin was sitting behind him and seemed a bit upset. Bae Young said that she couldn't tell him about these reasons, but that she would have to leave her little daughter in his care because she would be gone for a while and she promised to send money for Charin. Besides, she had already arranged everything legally. Ji Hong was furious, telling the woman not to hang up, but she replied that she had to go and would call back another time. The only thing that Ji Hong angrily said was F dash. And it was this F dash that Charon repeated with surprise. The confused man couldn't think of anything better than to say that he suddenly had a craving for pancakes. He would have been happy to swear a lot, but he couldn't say that in front of a child. The little girl happily replied that she also liked pancakes. Then Ji Hong took Charon's suitcase and invited her in, and the little girl happily ran after him. Her little hand touched his fingers, and Charon said that she was finally at her dad's house for the first time. Ji Hong was surprised when the girl said that. He looked at this smiling little Chiron with a big butterfly on her dress and was surprised that his daughter had appeared so suddenly, his life was not sweet enough as it was, and now he had a child. At the time, he had no idea how much his life would change from that moment on, and little Chiron continued to hold his hand. This is how Ji Hong's life and Chiron began. The girl was surprised by the emptiness. There was not a single crumb in her father's drawers. He didn't know what to feed the child. He usually didn't eat at home. On weekends, he slept until lunch and ordered food in the evening. Ji Hong reached for his jacket and was about to go to the store when Chiron suddenly wanted to go with him. He started to put on his jacket and had to take it with him. Suddenly, he thought that it was cold outside in January, and this little girl was wearing only one light dress. Then he asked where all her winter clothes were, and the girl happily replied that she never gets cold. The man the man was desperate. Maybe it was true, but he could not let her go in just one dress. Then he took Chiron in his arms. The girl was very surprised. Ji Hong held the child close and wrapped her in his jacket. Chiron beamed at how warm she was, but Ji Hong couldn't understand why she didn't dress warmly if she liked it. With a radiant and sweet face, the girl replied that she was not afraid of the cold. She liked the fact that Ji Hong was warm. The man didn't mind walking around like this all the time, and even thought that he shouldn't buy her clothes that were too small. While Chiron was sitting in her father's arms, people around them started to pay attention to them. They thought it was very cute. But someone did see that the child was wearing only one dress, and Ji Hong decided that he should buy her a down jacket. The man remembered that he had seen a children's clothing store in the mall, and he could buy the little girl's clothes there, because they attracted too much attention. And while Ji Hong was running across the street, Chiron did not understand what was happening. Outside the children's store, they could hear the salesman thanking Ji Hong for his purchase. The man did not understand why children's clothes were so expensive, because now he had almost nothing left in his account. But Chiron was happy. When they were going down the escalator, the girl asked her father what was wrong, because she could tell by the look on his face that he was sick. But Ji Hong replied that she just imagined it. At the grocery store, a man was pushing a shopping cart and remembering the last time he cooked anything. He didn't even know if his rice cooker was working. There was no money for food, and the only thing left for Ji Hong to do was to buy a breakfast cereal. In desperation, he asked his daughter if she liked that kind of food, and Chiron replied that she loved everything her father cooked. Ji Hong was glad that she at least liked it. A moment later, the man was sweating. He did not understand what was happening to him. He was trying to remember what he had eaten yesterday, and the packet of breakfast cereal fell to the floor. Ji Hong asked Chiron to stand still because her dad urgently needed to go to the bathroom, and the girl agreed, saying that she would look around while she did. A moment later, the man ran through the store, almost knocking other customers down. As soon as Ji Hong disappeared, Chiron's radiant face turned into something very sinister. The people around her admired the girl's beauty and couldn't understand why she was here alone. A gray haired man approached Chiron to ask where her parents were. The girl replied with a comment that they had gone to the toilet. The man did not believe her words and offered to help her. Suddenly, the man's face became frightened. Chiron, as if shrouded in darkness, told him to back off. 
All the people around were stunned by what they had just seen. As people shouted in amazement, the girl continued to stand in the middle of the room. Her eyes shone and black lightning flashed behind her. Ji Hong came back and apologized awkwardly to his daughter because he had to stand in line. Now the whole crowd of people were looking at the two of them. Kyron again ran up to her dad with a beaming smile and said that she had been good and asked if her dad's tummy was hurting. Then the girl put her hands on the man's stomach and began to say that Kyron had healing hands. Without removing her hands, she commanded her father's stomach to heal. Ji Hong was surprised, he thought he was imagining things, but his pain really went away. The people around him started whispering, saying that the girl did not look like her father at all. They tried to speak quietly so that the man would not hear them. But he heard everything perfectly. They said that she most likely resembled her mother, that her mother was very beautiful in their minds, and that the child's father was just rich. Others objected and said that he looked like a beggar. Ji Hong was furious. He didn't understand how they could gossip about a complete stranger, but... There was no point in denying it, this smiling girl really didn't look like him. At the cash register, he wondered if Chiron was not his daughter at all. It was already dark outside. Ji Hong sat at his computer and thought that the paternity test at the time lab cost a lot. But he had no other choice, he had to do everything in secret. He read on the website that the test required a hair sample. The man decided that he could just comb Chiron's hair and get a few of her hairs. He looked very tired, so he decided to do it tomorrow. He also thought that he should warn the professor that he was late and that he would pick his brain again. Ji Hong turned around and saw his daughter sleeping. Her hair seemed to shine under the moonlight. The tired man thought that even though Yona said that this was his child, she didn't even resemble him, and he could only assume that she was not his. Jiren continued to sleep under the moonlight. Ji Hong thought that he would find out the truth tomorrow when he took the paternity test. The next morning, Ji Hong was already in the hospital. He sat across from the doctor and was stunned. The doctor happily told him that the test had confirmed that Kim Jong Il was indeed his daughter. Ji Hoon did not understand how this was possible because she did not look like him at all. He seemed frozen when the doctor told him that there could be no mistake. Then he realized that Kyron was indeed his daughter. Ji Hong walked down the street and did not understand what he should do now. Was he really supposed to raise a child now? Yona said she would send him child support. He thought about the fact that he would have to go to work, and even if he sent Chiron to a kindergarten, he didn't know how to pick her up. The man was desperate, and his stress level was gradually increasing. As soon as Ji Hong opened the door to the apartment, little Chiron ran into his arms. His expression brightened when he saw the little girl. She said she had been watching cartoons all day. Ji Hong asked her not to sit close to the screen because her eyes would hurt and she would have to wear glasses. But the girl told him not to worry, because Chiron's eyes were good. The man found himself thinking that it was more pleasant to come home when Chiron was there. He patted the child's head and told her that Daddy had to take a shower, so let her watch some more cartoons. Ji Hong stood in front of the bathroom mirror and brushed his teeth. He was thinking that he would have to survive somehow. If things were going to work out this way, he would have to leave his Ph.D. defense and start looking for a job. It had its advantages, he wouldn't have to see the disgusting professor. There was a noise outside the door. Chiron opened the door and said that she also wanted to brush her teeth. She held out her toothbrush to her daddy and asked for toothpaste. As she brushed her teeth, the toothpaste foamed and made bubbles. Ji Hong thought it was quite cute. The two of them stood in front of the mirror, and Ji Hong asked her if she had been bored all day. The little girl seemed upset, saying that she was bored and wanted to go to her daddy, but he was at work. Then she raised her head and smiled, saying that Chiron could be patient. Ji Hong patted Chiron's head and said that she was so grown up. Still, the man decided to ask where Chiron lived with her mother. The girl replied that it was very far away, and she wished her dad could go there too. Ji Hong thought about it. If it's far away... It could be abroad, which is possible, since it's not the Josian dynasty. 
The man poured some water into a cup and handed it to the little girl. He would have asked her many questions, but he could not burden the child with questions he would probably find out later. The moonlight flooded the room again. Chiron was sleeping with her daddy. She was very comfortable and happy. She asked excitedly if her daddy was happy that she had come. When she heard a yes, her hair, eyes, and smile began to shine with joy. Chiron wanted to give her dad a massage, and Ji Hong was even a little surprised. The girl began to rub her husband's back and said that Chiron was good at massaging. In fact, it should not be hidden that Ji Hong was pleased. The man relaxed, because after a shower, the massage was incredible. Suddenly Chiron screamed, she saw that her daddy had fallen asleep. She poked his cheek with her finger. When he didn't react, she smiled and thought. A white glow began to appear from her little hands, and she told her daddy to be good. Her hair began to rise up, and the glow filled the whole room. She was telling him to be healthy. Meanwhile, Ji Hong was sleeping, unaware. The light was intertwined in different patterns. She repeated the same words, and then she pointed the beam at his father. Two ribbons of light rose from his back and began to intersect. Chiron was watching all this. Then everything suddenly disappeared, but the girl was happy. She lay down next to her dad, wished him good night, and fell asleep. The alarm clock went off in the morning. Ji Hong sat up on the bed and stretched. His expression became very surprised. His neck did not hurt. In the kitchen, he was getting some breakfast cereal for Chiron and thought about how his neck didn't hurt in any place. He was surprised because he hadn't done anything special yesterday. Joyful Chiron threw her arms around her father. She was already awake. Ji Hong took his daughter in his arms and she asked him if he was feeling well this morning. The man was surprised that she would know. The girl hugged her father and said it was all thanks to the massage. The man patted Chiron on the head and said that she was a good girl and that she was his only joy. The girl was happy and promised to do massages every day. Then Ji Hong sat his joyful daughter down at the table and offered her something to eat. The phone rang. Ji Hong was surprised, because who would call so early? His mother's number was displayed on the phone screen. He looked at it silently and smiled. He had completely forgotten that he needed to tell his parents about his granddaughter. Angry, Ji Hong did not know what to do, whether to lie or tell the truth. The phone kept ringing. Ji Hong was desperate because he didn't know what to do. He decided that he needed to calm down and act as if everything was normal. Ji Hong reached for the phone. He picked up the phone and tried to be calm, but his mom realized that something was wrong with his voice. Chiron looked at her father in surprise and ate her breakfast. Mom asked if he had eaten breakfast today, and the man almost blurted out that they had eaten breakfast together. Ji Hong, worried, told his mother not to worry, because he was eating well. His mother stopped asking and told her son that she was going to call him yesterday. She was looking for a job for him. Ji Hong was very surprised by this. In a calm tone, he replied that he had already made up his mind and would not be getting his PhD this year. He needed a job. While her husband was talking to her mom about coming to visit her on New Year's Eve, Chiron looked at her dad with somewhat confused eyes. He told mom that he would come next week, and of course, mom was very happy about it. Ji Hong hung up the phone and breathed a sigh of relief. He was going to introduce Chiron to his parents next week. His mom was happy, unlike her son. He didn't know how they would react to the bad news. Chiron ran up to Ji Hong and hugged him. The man was surprised. He pretended that everything was fine, but Chiron could see that he was sad, so she became sad too. The girl looked at her father with a serious face and asked him to tell her when something was bothering her dad, and then she would make sure that he was okay. Ji Hoon replied that he would definitely tell her and then took her to the table. The man asked if the girl liked cereal. She happily replied that they were delicious because she was eating them with her daddy. Chiron was smiling. Ji Hong realized that his little daughter was really dispelling all his worries. He thought that it would be great if time could stop right now and all his worries would just disappear. 
It was a sunny day outside. In the school corridor, Chang Su's surprised voice was heard. He saw happy Ji Hong and wondered where the dark circles around his eyes had gone. Ji Hong hadn't noticed the absence of neck pain in the morning, but when he saw the dark circles in the mirror, he was surprised because they had been with him since he started working in the lab. The man wondered how Chiron's massage could have helped him. He could not find any scientific explanation. Then Chang Su said that Ji Hong was looking for a professor. He didn't know what he wanted from the man. But he said that the professor was not in a good mood, so Ji Hong had better be careful, and Ji Hong thanked him with a happy face. Ji Hong knocked on the door and entered the office. Before he could say a few words, a pile of paper flew into his face. The professor was very angry. While Ji Hong was picking up the papers from the floor, the professor was scolding him for his bad annotation. When Ji Hong looked up at the professor, he was very surprised. Ji Hong looked like a fresh cucumber, and the professor began to scold him for it, because in his opinion, Ji Hong was sleeping well and was not ashamed of the play he had written. The man got up from his knees, and the professor began to say that Ji Hong was an untalented employee and that he was ashamed of him. Then he started shouting and said that Ji Hong was almost 30 and had no intelligence. Ji Hong started to get angry when the professor started to say that only because of him would all doors open for Ji Hong. The man was angry because he thought the professor was an old cad because yesterday he had praised his abstract. Whenever the professor was in a bad mood, he would take it out on Ji Hong, and when the argument ended, he would blackmail him with his privileges. When the professor had yelled enough, he breathed a sigh of relief and asked him not to make such gross mistakes next time. He put his hand on Ji Hong's shoulder and asked him about his PhD. Ji Hong replied that he hadn't thought about it. The professor said that a high-class engineer can only be a PhD, and then he pushed Ji Hong out the door. In the corridor, Chang Su ran up to Ji Hong to ask if he was okay. He told him not to pay attention to the professor because he was yelling at everyone. Ji Hong waved him off and said with a smile that he was fine. In fact, he was very upset. Ji Hong looked at the screen of his phone, thinking about sending the professor three funny letters and leaving with a scandal. Suddenly, he was surprised. On his phone, he saw a smiling photo of Chiron taking a selfie. Ji Hong's mood began to improve. He was very touched. He realized that even looking at her photo made his heart melt and his soul calm. Ji Hong leaned back and exhaled. He decided to hold out for another six months and then quit. The man began to type something and thought that he would try not to do anything that could be found fault with. Ji Hong cheered up and a melody started playing in his head. He sat in front of the computer and thought he could hold out. After a while, the work was completed. Ji Hong corrected all the mistakes and hurried home to Chiron. Suddenly, he turned to Yerim, his colleague, and asked if she had seen the professor. She very rudely said no. In surprise, she turned to Ji Hong and asked why he was asking her that. Ji Hong was confused and apologized. He had noticed that she had been depressed and irritated lately, but he didn't understand why. Yerim opened the door and went out into the hallway. Suddenly, she stiffened because she heard the professor's voice addressing her as my Yerim. He stepped out of the shadows and asked her where she was going in such a hurry. With a broad smile, he reminded her to look in his office before leaving. The girl just looked at him and did not say a word. Ji Hong returned home and called Chiron. She threw her arms around her father and told him that she missed him very much. The man also missed her. She looked at her dad happily and said that she had cooked her own rice and eaten it. Ji Hong praised Jiren and she beamed with joy. The man looked at the plate and felt a little sad. He was very worried that Chiron would lose weight from all the food and then Jonah would kill him. Chiron did not understand his surprise. Ji Hong picked up the phone and decided to call his mom because it was no big deal and he and his daughter had to go to their parents' house tomorrow. He couldn't explain anything to his mother, but there was no other way out. He couldn't leave Chiron alone from morning to evening. The next morning, the professor scolded Ji Hong again because he was going to be late due to family circumstances. 
He even shouted at him on the phone to give up his Ph.D. because Ji Hong was not going to work. The man promised to fix the family affairs and come to work. Chiron looked at her father with surprised eyes. The man had been desperate after talking to the professor, but his expression changed immediately when Chiron asked him who had called him and why he was yelling. The man explained that it was the professor who teaches him and that his dad was just a little bit guilty. The girl was surprised. Ji Hong asked her not to worry, because it was his fault. Chiron was upset, and Ji Hong didn't know how to explain everything to his parents, and he hoped they wouldn't kick him out and help him. Chiron was angry because of the professor. Ji Hong and his daughter came to his parents' house. When they opened the door, a happy Chiron stood on the threshold and told them that she was their granddaughter. The man and woman, Ji Hong's parents, were at a loss for words. Ji Hong was confused, saying that it was his daughter. Ji Hong's mother was dizzy and his father could not believe it. Ji Hong explained that he had only found out a few days ago when Yona called him. The parents remembered Yona, a girl their son used to date. Ji Hong said that they had gone on a tour once, and that was probably where it happened. The father asked if the woman had been raising the child alone all this time, and Ji Hong replied that she had said so. The angry father took a swing at his son, not understanding how Ji Hong could believe that and why he had come alone and not with Yona. Ji Hong replied that she couldn't make it and that they hadn't spoken to each other since the phone call. Then he pulled a piece of paper out of his pocket. Ji Hong showed his father a paternity test that proved that Chiron was indeed his daughter. The parents were shocked. Ji Hong's father asked his wife to feed the child while he talked to his son. He went to the door and called Ji Hong to come with him. His mother took Chiron with her to eat, which the girl gladly agreed to. The father wiped his eyes and asked what his son was going to do now. Ji Hong replied that he would raise the girl because she was his child. But that wasn't what the father was interested in. He asked about Yona, but Ji Hong couldn't get in touch with her. Then his father asked if it was because of Chiron that he had come to visit them so quickly for the weekend. Ji Hong scratched the back of his head and answered embarrassedly that he couldn't keep an eye on her because of his work. And he couldn't feed her properly either, and he didn't want it to continue. The room fell silent. Ji Hong would not have been surprised if his parents had kicked him out in a scandal because he had brought home a child who had fallen over. He didn't know what he was thinking because he didn't even have a job. He told his father that it was normal to worry about the child. The father promised his son that he would look after his granddaughter, but Ji Hong would have to find Yona and get back together with her. Ji Hong was very surprised. The father said that parents should raise a child together, and even if he found a job, he should live with Yona. Ji Hong was happy. He realized that his father had accepted Chiron as his granddaughter. The father replied that he was doing his best for Chiron, not for his son. Ji Hong was happy and thanked his father, but he reminded his son that his life would not be honey and he felt bad about having to spend the money they had saved for his son's wedding. Ji Hong apologized, but his father said that he could just pay him back later if he decided to get married. Ji Hong was beaming with happiness, and he was very grateful to his father. The man was glad that he had accepted Chiron. It was a sunny day outside. Ji Hong was getting ready to leave and promised Chiron to come back in the evening. He patted his daughter's head and asked her to obey her grandparents, and then one day they would go out together. The girl was surprised. She held out her little finger to her daddy to fulfill this promise. Ji Hong held out his little finger in return. The girl waved goodbye to her dad. Ji Hong's parents were no longer angry. They waved back and said goodbye until the evening. Ji Hong went outside. Today he felt as if he was flying on wings to work, and it was the first time he had ever done so. He ran happily down the street and hummed something. He had been afraid that Chiron would go hungry, but now his worries were gone. Today was his first weekend with Chiron, and he wanted to go for a walk with the girl. Ji Hong was relieved. He took out his phone and started to choose where they would go together. He wanted to go to Everland because there were many beautiful views. Chiron was now part of their family. 
As he walked, he thought about how before she came into his life, he used to spend his weekends sleeping and doing nothing. Ji Hong looked up at the sky and thought that this was the first time he was looking forward to a day off. But, that evening, he heard a surprised voice from the office window asking about outdoor team building. The professor did not understand the surprise. The project was almost complete and he decided to hold a team building event in nature before the new year this weekend. He turned to Ji Hong with a smile and asked him if he had any family emergencies because he had already taken off work twice for this and could have taken care of all the business during this time. Ji Hong embarrassedly replied that he did have plans for the weekend. The professor looked at Ji Hong in surprise. He did not understand what kind of plans he could have. Ji Hong did not know what to say. He decided to go anyway and angrily told the professor that he had solved all the family circumstances. The professor was happy, put his hand on Ji Hong's shoulder and said that they would go to nature on the weekend and recuperate. He then turned to Yerim and Chang Su and asked if they would go as well, but no one answered him. The professor turned around and said with a smile on his face that silence is a sign of consent and asked them to remember that if someone refused, he would be very upset. The room was completely silent. Everyone was outraged because they had their own plans for the weekend. Chansu called the professor a stuffy old man because he thought everyone stayed home on weekends, just like him. Ji Hong was worried. Everyone in the lab was under pressure from the professor and no one could openly speak up. Ji Hong realized that he would have to postpone the trip to the amusement park to the next weekend. Their careers were a carrot on the professor's fishing rod, and everyone was blindly following them like donkeys. No one likes it, but they have to do what the professor says. Ji Hong looked at the monitor. He felt bad, because he couldn't give up this nonsense. He thought Chiron would be very upset. After work, Ji Hong and Chiron went for a walk. He was embarrassed to tell the girl that he was sorry, but that her daddy would not be able to be with her this weekend. The girl, wrapped in a warm scarf, just stared at Ji Hong in silence as he told her that they would definitely go next weekend and that he had already bought the tickets. The girl hugged her surprised father. He asked her if she was upset. The girl replied that Chiron would be able to get over it. She saw that her father did not want to go on this trip and that someone was forcing him. She said that it would even be good for her father because he hadn't done any sports for a long time. Ji Hong looked at his daughter and told her not to worry, because everything would be fine. Chiron looked at Ji Hong and asked if he was being honest. The man hugged the girl and said that he was. Chiron asked if it was because of the evil uncle who called him today that daddy had to go camping. Ji Hong was surprised and replied that it was their professor, they had finished a project and he wanted to celebrate it together in nature. Chiron hugged her surprised father and asked him to be careful and come back safe and sound. Ji Hong told the girl not to worry, because the mountain they were going to climb was safe and not difficult. He hugged the girl, and Chiron's eyes shone with fury. In the evening, they returned home. Ji Hong took a shower and asked Chiron if she was sleeping. The girl did not answer. He thought she was probably asleep. It was not surprising, because they had been traveling home for an hour by bus, and of course she was tired. It was a shame that they wouldn't be able to talk, but there was nothing that could be done. Ji Hong lay down on the bed. It was already one o'clock in the morning, and the only thing he had time to do was wash himself and go to bed. He thought that if he had to travel like this every day, public transportation would make him a poor man. He was just starting to think about going to kindergarten, but decided to think about it in the morning. Chiron opened her eyes. She realized that her daddy had fallen asleep. Again her hands glowed. She called out to her daddy for a deep and sound sleep. Ji Hong continued to sleep unsuspectingly and smiled. The girl was happy to see the smile. Suddenly her expression became very angry. She decided to scold this evil uncle, the professor. She stretched out her hand to her sleeping father and apologized because she needed to peek at his memory a little. Pictures flashed in front of the girl with the image of this professor who was in Ji Hong's thoughts. 
His name was Jang Dong Ho, an old boomer who played the good guy in public, but was actually cunning and sneaky. He sucked up to those above him and was a tyrant to his subordinates. Chiron remembered her mother's words. She told her to remember that if Chiron saw a hypocrite oppressing people, she could punish him. But you need to intervene in this situation in a way that does not disrupt natural processes. You need to do everything so that sin swallows a person like a swamp. The girl's dress began to rise. She flew upward, enveloped in radiance. Chiron said the professor's name and asked him to show her where he was. The radiance enveloped the girl even more, and she found him. Chiron turned to her father and said that she would be back soon. She needed to teach the rascal an important lesson. The girl disappeared, leaving behind shining stripes. The room was lit up. Chiron descended from this radiance. She stood in front of the bed with Jang Duho sleeping. She decided to see what he was hiding. Shining purple balls flew out of her hand. They flew to the professor and scattered over him in different patterns. They were sins, many of them, and they were brewing. Chiron wondered which one she should choose so that it would bear fruit. Then she reached for one of the balls that would bring the most harm. Of course, she would have to save another person, but... It was all for her daddy's sake. She ordered the balloon to return to Jang Dong Ho and the other person who was involved with her. Now this sin will ripen before its time and bear fatal fruit. It would be painful but it would be worse if this sin were to mature far into the future without Chiron's help. She felt radiant again and decided to come back later to check the result. Her mother had told her that you have to keep an eye on things when you start such processes. Ji Hong's room glowed again. A happy Chiron lay on the bed next to her dad. She imagined how surprised he would be when he found out. He would probably only find out later what she had done. Chiron was beaming with happiness. When her daddy found out, she would tell him that it was a special surprise for him. She wrapped herself in a blanket and said good night to her daddy. It was already quite sunny outside when Ji Hong brought Chiron to his parents. She kissed her daddy on the cheek and asked him to be careful. Ji Hong put the girl down on the ground and asked her to obey her grandparents, who were happily waiting for Chiron at the door. Ji Hong promised his daughter that they would play together tomorrow. Chiron asked her grandmother if it was true that she was obedient. The grandmother put her arms around the girl's shoulders and told her that Chiron was their little beauty, a golden girl, and that her son should not worry. Ji Hong was touched. He thought that when his child is complimented, it feels much stronger than compliments given to him. He was pleased that Chiron was being praised. His parents told Ji Hong that it was dangerous in the mountains in winter and asked him to be careful. He promised to be careful and said goodbye. Ji Hong was in despair. This was not the weekend he had hoped for. This is the life of a graduate, depending on the whims of a professor. The weather was sunny in the mountains. The happy professors thanked everyone for coming together this weekend. He asked everyone to enjoy the cool, fresh air so that everyone could see what a friendly working team they have. After that, he called everyone to follow him. Chang Su was unhappy, saying behind the professor's back that if he liked the mountains so much, he should go there himself instead of dragging everyone along. Ji Hoon asked Chang Su to speak quietly because Jang Duho could hear everything. There were a lot of people around. Chansu couldn't believe it was so crowded, so they wouldn't even get the promised fresh air. Ji Hong had heard that tourism was booming, and as it turned out, it was true. Chansu complained that the mountain was too high, that it was too much, and he would die on the way. Ji Hong was surprised that Chang Su seemed to be tired, but he did not stop talking. So Chang Su turned to Ji Hong and asked him if he was tired. Surprisingly, Ji Hong seemed fine. He had already begun to suspect that Ji Hong was playing sports without him, but their schedules were the same, so there was no time for sports. As they walked up the stairs, Chan Su thought it was suspicious, maybe his partner was eating some healthy food without him, because his skin had recently brightened up a lot. But Ji Hong hesitantly replied that he hadn't done anything like that. It was worth noting that the man had indeed been feeling lighter lately. Before that, it was common for him to have pain all over his body after sleep. 
Ji Hong remembered the smiling Chiron. Ever since she had come, he had been feeling better and better. And even during the professor's screams, the thought of Chiron made him feel better. Chang Su was very tired, unlike the energetic Ji Hong, who was thinking about seeing his daughter as soon as possible. Chang Su was upset because he and Ji Hong had always been inseparable, and now he was smiling at his thoughts. The man began to calm his friend down and say that without him, he really didn't do anything. However, he noticed that his friend was out of shape and that he hadn't been like that last year. Chang Su replied that last year his stomach was just starting to grow. He sat down on the bench and began to breathe heavily. Ji Hong was a little worried about his friend because he was only in his third decade and already so unhealthy. Chang Su replied that Ji Hong was a cheater because a lab rat can't have such stamina. Suddenly, they heard the professor's voice. He was speaking to Yerim, saying that if she was tired, she could rest as long as she needed. The girl was silent. Her friend started talking about her. Chansu said that Yerim Nuna had been very gloomy and depressed lately. Ji Hong then asked what his friend knew about it. But he didn't know anything. She had been like this since last year's New Year's Eve corporate party. Changsu thought she had some kind of problem with the professor. Ji Hong was interested in this idea. His friend said that Yerim Nuna had been absent for a long time after the corporate party and that it had all started since then. Ji Hong thought about it and realized that it was true. Changsu was surprised that she hadn't had anything to do with the absences. If it had been him or Ji Hong, the professor would have torn them to pieces. He began to suspect that the professor had forgiven her because he was involved in her disappearance. That's why he was so angry when he asked where she was. Ji Hong laughed and asked his friend to speak quietly so that the professor wouldn't hear. Then Changsu joked and said that in that case, he would tell the professor that it was Ji Hong who started the conversation. Ji Hong jokingly started chasing Chang Su, saying that he was crazy. The sun continued to shine in the sky and the company stopped at a cafe. They happily raised a glass to the success of their laboratory. Everyone was sitting at a set table when the professor said that it was always good to drink after a hike. Only Yerim was not in a good mood. Then the professor sat down next to her, asked her to smile, and offered to drink with her. Yerim agreed but she was thinking that the professor disgusted her and made her sick. The girl picked up a glass. Before drinking, she asked the professor with a serious face if he had forgotten his promise. The professor was surprised and asked what promise she was talking about. Yerim instantly blushed and her expression became very angry. The professor began to say awkwardly that he remembered everything and that she shouldn't be angry. He took her by the elbow and said that he would secure her an exchange place abroad, and when she returned, he would help her get a professorship. He looked at her seductively and said that she knew who he was. He is Jang Dong Ho. The professor was surprised by this reaction. She slammed her fist on the table and said that he had to do what he promised. Otherwise, she would do it herself. The professor was outraged and accused Yerim of threatening him. The girl said that she did not threaten him. She thought that he had threatened her, that he would cut off all her career paths. She thought he was a scumbag, but she couldn't say that. She thought she had done the right thing. Yerim felt as if she was surrounded by a sinful purple glow. She didn't understand why it was so hard for her to control her emotions today. Then the professor said he would be honest. He would keep his promise, but she had to be honest too. Yerim agreed. The professor was very surprised. She smiled and promised to be honest. Yerim was shining purple. They sat on the couch together and smiled while the purple light absorbed everything around them. Little Chiron stood on the balcony and held a purple ball in front of her, which was also shrouded in radiance. She realized that Yerim was having a hard time. Her hair was developing. Chiron understood that the girl was in pain, but she knew that soon everything would be over and everything would be fine. Ji Hong was very surprised by the news. Professor Chan was summoned to the prosecutor's office. Chan Su said that it turned out that after the weekend team building, Jang Dong Ho had been harassing Yerim. Ji Hong couldn't even think of such a thing. 
He thought that the professor had at least a little bit of common sense left, but he had lost touch with reality. Now it was clear why Yerim was so irritated. Chang Su was worried about this, because without the professor, he would have to make a report on the closure of the project. And then Ji Hong remembered the project. The university probably already considered it closed. Hatch Group had commissioned a research paper from the professor, but now it was all for nothing. Chang Su lamented that he had spent many sleepless nights on this project. He did not know what would happen to their work now. The professor hadn't put any effort into this project, but it was ordered in his name. Without Professor Chan, all their work would be for nothing. Ji Hong looked around. All the lab technicians were in despair. Suddenly, one of the lab technicians came up to him and said that the dean was calling him. Ji Hong was surprised and asked what the dean wanted from him. But he did not say anything to the lab assistant. Ji Hong did not understand what the dean wanted from him. Ji Hong went to the dean's office. A gray-haired man with glasses asked if Ji Hong knew why the professor was absent. Ji Hong replied that he did, in general terms. The dean continued to say that he knew the project was almost complete. The worried man replied that all they had to do was check and write a report, but the professor. The dean angrily put his mug on the table and said that he was now instructing Ji Hong to complete the project. The guy was shocked. He was at a loss for words. The dean calmly said that Ji Hong was the senior staff member in the lab and if what happened to the professor was what happened, then he should take responsibility for the project and complete it. Ji Hong was stunned. This is an order for laboratory research for industrial use, and the dean should know how it works. They are in terrible competition with other laboratories. Before Ji Hong could say a few words, the dean told him that he had already contacted the Hatch Group, so the only thing left for him to do was to finish and deliver the project. The dean smiled and told Ji Hong not to worry and to work calmly, because he always does a great job. Ji Hong was as if inspired. He returned to his workplace. He briefly recounted everything that had happened in the dean's office, and the only thing left for him to do was to read and hand in the project. All the lab technicians were surprised by this news. Chang Su said that he knew what the problem was. The rector's election is coming up, and the dean clearly wants to take credit for this project and thus increase his chances of getting the job. Everyone agreed with this, because it was logical. Of course, he would like to get promoted. Ji Hong was happy, because his task was just to prepare and make a detailed report. Chan Su began to joke that if Ji Hong stumbled and mumbled, the dean would fail his entire report. He added that Ji Hong should remember to take his medication before his speech. There was a smack. Chan Su called Ji Hong a thief because he would fight for a harmless joke. Ji Hong, laughing, went with the other lab technicians to finish the project. They had failed in the morning, but they still had time. The report was due tomorrow, so they could still make it if they tried. Ji Hong was happy and encouraged his colleagues to get to work. In the evening, Ji Hong picked up Chiron from her parents. The pedestrian light was red. The man asked his daughter how her day had been and if she had obeyed her grandparents. Chiron answered that she had and that she had eaten a lot of goodies. They walked happily down the street hand in hand. Ji Hong apologized for being late. Chiron understood that her dad was at work, so she didn't get upset. The man said that tomorrow he would go to the office of the big hatch company, so he had to stay late today. The girl asked him what he was going to do there. Ji Hong happily told her that he was going to give a presentation there and asked Chiron to keep her fingers crossed that he would succeed. Chiron's smile shone, and she promised to cheer for him. It was already dark outside. Ji Hong was sleeping, and Chiron was sitting on the bed next to him, wondering what she should do. A jar with the words confidence and charm and knowledge floated into her hands. They all hovered in a glow over the joyful girl. She could not choose which one would help her daddy the most. She grabbed the jar. She added a little bit of knowledge. And a little self-confidence. She thought about it. She also added a little bit of charm. She wanted a little bit, but accidentally got too much. But Chiron hoped that everything would be fine. 
All these mixtures merged into one radiance. And yet, Chiron decided that there is never too much magic. She lifted the radiance up and rejoiced. It began to approach Ji Hong and made its way into his body like a thin ribbon. Chiron rubbed her hand on her forehead and wished her dad good luck. In the morning, Ji Hong thought about it. He hadn't worn such clothes for a long time, so he asked his daughter if it suited him. A happy Chiron gave him a thumbs up and said that it looked great on him. Ji Hong put on a black jacket and tie and thought about how he felt calm and confident in the morning. He wore an elegant black suit and a white shirt. Ji Hong said goodbye to Chiron. He felt like he could move mountains that day. The sunlight reflected off the panoramic windows. Ji Hong stood in front of the office. Suddenly he began to worry, because this was the first time he had come here alone and maybe he should have listened to Chang Su and taken the medicine. He went to the entrance and began to calm himself down. His task was just to explain the results of the study in a clear way. Besides, he already knew the director, Yang, and everything would be fine. He remembered his daughter telling him that he was the best. He realized that Chiron was rooting for him, so he had to try his best and not lose his confidence. Ji Hong stood in the hallway. The secretary told him that the management would be here soon. She also said that the director of the corporation would also be at the presentation, so Ji Hong had time to prepare. The man was surprised. He said he was ready and asked to print the materials from the USB. The girl was shocked by his confidence. In his mind, Ji Hong was crying. He was very confident in the morning, but when he heard that the director of the corporation would be there, his confidence was shaken. He realized that if the CEO was there, so was the top manager. His one mistake cost him his career. While Ji Hong was almost crying from worry, a man approached him. It was Yang's boss, and Ji Hong greeted him. Yang said that this was not the best moment, of course. Ji Hong's tears started to flow, and he asked why it wasn't the best time. The worried man said he would explain everything after the presentation. Ji Hong stood behind the podium as if dead while everyone took their seats. His confidence was shattered, and he hadn't even started. He had forgotten what he was going to do. The secretary invited people into the office. A man in gray pants sat down in a chair. His face was displeased, and he told Ji Hong to start. The guy was sweating. He had seen this man on TV, and even then he thought he had a hard look in his eyes. It seemed to Ji Hong that if he faltered even once, he would simply be kicked out. He resigned himself, grabbed the podium with his hands, and began his presentation. All eyes were on him. After a while, Ji Hong finished his report. Everyone was silent. The man did not know where to go. Excitedly, he tried to remember where he might have made a mistake. He didn't even remember what he was talking about. Whatever happened, Ji Hong hoped it wouldn't happen soon. The man in the gray pants asked for his name. Ji Hong thought the man was asking about the name of the study, so he started to say the name of the study, but... The man replied that he was not blind and could see the name on the screen. He was interested in the name of the speaker. Ji Hong didn't understand why he wanted his name, but he introduced himself. Then the man turned to Ji Hong and asked him to describe the degree of accuracy of the experiment. The young man replied that their research method was 95% accurate. Then he asked what gives such an accuracy rate. The man smiled, and Ji Hong explained. He saw that smile. He considered it a success because this serious man smiled. The man said that was all he wanted to know. Everyone started to say goodbye to him. Ji Hong realized that he was finished. He thought that smiling was something good, but it seems the opposite is true. He was disappointed because this serious man just got up and left. He was addressed, but Ji Hong did not hear the first time because of his own thoughts. Yang said that they were listening carefully and that the director seemed to like his presentation. Ji Hong was disappointed. He didn't really believe it because the director just got up and left. However, the audience began to say that the mood seemed to be positive. Ji Hong couldn't figure out if this was good or bad. He was confused. Those present at the presentation began to discuss the report. 
One of the men began to say that they should urgently implement the technology that this research had provided and that this way they would outperform the competition. One of the women was worried that the investment might not pay off, so they couldn't throw money away. They began to argue. A nervous Ji Hong realized that they were discussing internal company matters, and so he thought he should leave. Then the man involved in the argument banged his hand on the table and suggested asking for an expert's opinion. He pointed to Ji Hong and asked what he thought about it. The guy was confused. Suddenly, the man scratched the back of his head and apologized because he remembered that Ji Hong was not their employee. And he wasn't the only one who thought that. The man began to say that Ji Hong's tense face reminded him of when he was a new employee and making a presentation in front of his boss for the first time. Ji Hong smiled, thinking that it was really easy to mistake him for a kitten, a dog, or even a Hutch employee. Perhaps he should have been happy that they liked him so much. One of the women turned to Yang's supervisor and smilingly asked him to escort Ji Hong out, since they had detained him. The man agreed. Ji Hong and Supervisor Yang left the office. The guy was walking on his ass and thought he was finally going to get out of here. Supervisor Yang laughed and said that Ji Hong's knees were almost shaking, but he did a great job despite the presence of the director. They stood in the hallway. Yang said that he used to think Ji Hong was shy, but today he changed his mind. The guy was surprised and thanked him. Suddenly, the boss said that they had already decided to merge the project. Ji Hong was dumbfounded, very surprised by these words. He almost started to cry, because all the words that were said to him were just to comfort him, and he decided that everyone lives in a very unfair society. But Supervisor Yang began to calm him down, because everything had gone perfectly. Ji Hong looked at him with tearful, surprised eyes. The bright sun was shining through the windows. Ji Hong asked what to do about the project's leak. Yang replied that it was a matter of schools. That's why the boss was so angry and came to hear the presentation in person. He put his hands on the upset boy's shoulders. Yang couldn't talk about it, because sometimes it happens that the less you know, the better you sleep. He asked Ji Hong to move away from the topic of business and asked him with a serious face if he was going to improve his skills abroad. Ji Hong was surprised and replied that he hadn't planned to. Suddenly, Mr. Yang's face lit up and asked him what Ji Hong thought about working for their company. The guy seemed happy, but was surprised and thought it was a recruitment. Yang smiled and asked him not to be scared, but to listen, because Ji Hong probably knows that there is a lot of competition for the professionals they hire. Ji Hong knew that. Yang continued to say with a smile that for some reason the boss liked Ji Hong, so if he thought about a career, the doors of their company would be open to him. Ji Hoon smiled back and thanked him for his attention to his person. They were already at the entrance to the building, and Yang said that he should thank his boss and that his presentation had impressed everyone. Then he thanked the guy and they said goodbye. Despite the bright sun, there were no more leaves on the trees. It was an incredible day. From the beginning, it seemed like everything was going to fail. Ji Hong still couldn't believe that the director liked his performance, he thought it was some kind of magic. However, later, after a chain of luck, Ji Hong smiled and thought, what kind of magic can there be these days? It's just that sometimes you get lucky. Suddenly, Ji Hong's phone rang. He took it out and didn't realize what had happened. Suddenly, he was confused and didn't know what to do. On screen zero of the phone, a message appeared saying that Yona had sent him money. Ji Hong remembered that it was the promised alimony. Then his surprise faded and he smiled. Ji Hong wanted to get takeout chicken for dinner tonight, but now he could go to a restaurant. He walked down the street humming. He had even finished his workday early, so Ji Hong tried not to waste any time. It was already evening when they arrived at the restaurant. His parents were a little upset. The father said that they were glad that their son came home from work early and took them to the restaurant, but he asked if everything was okay at work. The mother was worried that everything was expensive and that this evening would hurt her son's budget. Ji Hong sat next to a happy Charon. He said that he had left early because they had finished the project and he had money. There were various salads, steaks, pasta with shrimp on the table. The parents were surprised to see how Ji Hong had come by the money. The boy explained that Charon's mother had sent it to buy her food. 
Ji Hong's father smiled and praised Chiron for cutting the steak very properly, according to etiquette, and asked who taught her how to do it. The girl smiled and said it was her mom. Ji Hong's mother beamed with joy and said that Chiron was a precious little girl, very well-mannered, with good manners, and that Yona was a good mother. She wondered how Ji Hong could have such a wonderful daughter, since he used to break all the dishes when he was a child. Chiron drank lemonade through a straw. Ji Hong replied, embarrassed, that Chiron probably looked more like her mother. He looked at the smiling Chiron and thought that he was even a little sad that she didn't look like him, but that was nothing and the main thing was that she was his daughter. The man exhaled and thanked his parents for taking care of Chiron all this time and maybe they wouldn't have to do it anymore. The parents were surprised, they thought something had happened. The evening sun was shining on the restaurant's sign. Ji Hong explained to his parents that Professor Chan was in trouble with the law, and now it was even worse, so he would not be coming back. There was no point in staying in the lab without the professor. My mom was surprised. She thought the professor needed some help. Her son began to reassure her he wasn't going to get a PhD anyway. He would just finish his master's degree and go into the field of engineering research. The parents were upset but they believed that their son would succeed. Ji Hong smiled and asked them not to worry about him. He had to be responsible because now he had Charon. It was already dark outside when the father and daughter returned home. Ji Hong asked how she was doing at her grandparents' house. Charon answered that it was good. Her grandmother cooked her something delicious every day. Ji Hong looked at his daughter suspiciously and asked her if she liked him or her grandparents better. The girl smiled and said that she loved him the most. The man was very happy to hear this. He picked up his daughter and told her that her daddy also loved her more than anyone else in the world. Suddenly the girl reached for his face. Ji Hong was surprised. She asked if he was comfortable wearing glasses all the time. The man smiled and said that of course he was uncomfortable. Then the girl asked why he wore them. The moonlight illuminated everything around them. Ji Hong said that he could not read and look through the microscope without them. Charon was surprised. Ji Hong carried her in his arms and told her that he was very proud of her kind heart because she always took care of him. The little girl did not mind because he was her daddy. The usual cold winter was the same as before, but Ji Hong felt so warm because he had Charon by his side. The blue sky stretched over the courthouse. The criminal case against Professor Chan was fast-tracked because Yerim had spent a long time collecting evidence and presenting it. There was a huge crowd outside the building. Students were outraged when they learned about the incident. They were holding signs with inscriptions like Professor Chan, get out of education or rapist to jail. All the courses he taught were canceled. Chan Donghou was fired. Thanks to these events, Ji Hoon and Charon had a relaxing week. The happy girl sat on the bed next to her father and asked if they would go to the amusement park tomorrow. Ji Hong answered that they would. The weather was supposed to be nice tomorrow, so he suggested that Charon have fun. They heard a noise outside the window. The father and daughter went to the window. Thin strips of water were running down the glass. Ji Hong was surprised to see rain in the middle of winter. Charon asked what they would do if it didn't stop raining by tomorrow. Ji Hong almost shouted with anger. The weather forecast showed rain until at least Saturday. The man did not understand when it had been changed. In this weather, he couldn't even leave the house. Charon folded her hands in front of her and told her worried father to pray as soon as possible. The girl closed her eyes and said that if she prayed, Rain Nim would go away. Ji Hong was surprised. He thought that praying to the rain was very cute. He almost cried because he thought that if the prayers worked, he would have prayed himself to win the lottery a hundred times. Charon looked at him and was indignant because he had to pray. She folded his hands and told him to repeat after her. She diligently began to ask Rain Nim not to come tomorrow. Ji Hoon thought it was strange, but he agreed. The two of them stood in front of the window with the rain pattering on it and repeated the same words. 
The man did not believe it would work. He didn't want Charon to be upset in the morning. In the morning, Charon began to wake up her father. Ji Hong wiped his sleepy eyes, and his daughter asked him to go see something with her as soon as possible. The man was surprised, because the alarm clock hadn't run yet. Charon began to rush her father to go with her as soon as possible. Ji Hong sat on the bed and did not understand what she wanted to show him. Outside the window, a bunch of small white snowflakes were flying. Charon turned to her father and asked how he was feeling, because snow is better than rain. Ji Hong couldn't believe his eyes, it really wasn't raining. They both looked at the falling snow. The girl said that all they had to do was pray. The man thought that his prayers had never been answered before, and this was a miracle. He looked at Charon and didn't know what was better, the rain or the cold snow, but lately, one good thing after another. Charon looked at the snow as if mesmerized. The man suggested that his daughter go wash and get ready and said that there would be traffic jams because of the snow. Charon happily agreed. The happy girl said she had to hurry. Ji Hong thought that today would be the best day he would ever have with Charon. A huge ferris wheel was sprinkling snow. Charon was very happy. She thought it was a fairy tale world. Ji Hong was worried that the girl would like it. She was happy to be in such a big, beautiful place. The man was thinking about where to go first, maybe to see some animals, but Charon had already seen something. Ji Hong noticed her interest, and it was clear that they would go there. But just in case, the man asked if Charon wanted to go there. The enchanted girl said yes. Ji Hong couldn't stop looking, he felt like his heart was starting to pound. Charon was wearing a deer cap with little bells on the ties. The girl said that this hat was very warm. Ji Hong sat down in front of Charon and said that it looked great on her. The happy girl asked her dad to pick something for her as well. The man was a little embarrassed and explained to Charon that daddy doesn't wear cute things. The girl looked at him with very pitiful eyes and the man could not resist. A moment later, he was standing with horns and ears on his head and asked if it suited him. Charon said he looked great. Suddenly, Jihun heard a man and a woman talking about the father and daughter wearing deer antlers, and they thought it looked really cute. Ji Hong thought it was nice to hear that after all the comments about how Ji Hong was not like him. He looked at the girl and wondered when he would ever get to treat her like that again. Ji Hong took a happy chair into the cash register and told her that today they would be reindeer. The fluffy snow continued to fall on the ground. Ji Hong asked Charon to tell him if she wanted to go somewhere. He began to tell her that Kid's Village had rides for children and a zoo, they could see the animals and then have lunch at the cafe. Charon pointed her finger in the direction of a certain attraction. It was a huge swing in the shape of an axe that swung to a great height. Charon wanted to go there. The man was surprised. He explained to Charon that it was an adult ride, and he promised to take his daughter there when she was older. The girl was surprised, but agreed. Then she asked to go on the roller coaster, but she was not allowed there either. Charon was upset, because she wanted to go on a ride that went high, high into the sky. The man thought about it. He pointed to one of the rides and said that they could go there. After a while, it started snowing even more from the sky. A huge ferris wheel stood out against the sky. Charon looked through the glass of the booth in awe. Ji Hong asked her if she liked it, and she said that she did, because they were very high up and could see the whole huge amusement park. Ji Hong took out his phone and took a picture of his daughter. She asked what was in the distance. The girl looked very excited and sweet. Ji Hong was touched. Charon was so photogenic that any picture turned into a work of art. The girl was looking at everything around her. Ji Hong didn't know when he would get to spend time with her like this again, so he decided to take more photos. After a while, Charon happily looked at the rabbits sitting behind the fence. Then she and her dad ate sweets with joy. Later, they watched a magic show. They took pictures with a huge New Year's cat. They rode the carousel together. Charon was looking at something with admiration. There was a huge, shiny, beautiful Christmas tree in front of them. 
While Charon was looking at the tree, Ji Hong took another photo of her. He looked at his phone. There were so many photos on it. He thought it was getting dark, so it was probably time to go home. He looked around, but Charon was not there. Ji Hong panicked and started calling for his daughter. He didn't understand where she had suddenly gone. Among the crowd, he finally saw Charon. He thought that she was sad because her mother was not there. He approached Charon, who was looking at something in surprise. The girl took her daddy's hand and said that he must be cold. She asked him to make her dad feel warm. Ji Hong was surprised. Charon pulled away from her father and asked him happily if he was warm. Ji Hong sighed in surprise. Unbelievably, her words made his cold body and mood warm. Charon looked at him and said that she had fun with him and then asked him to come back here again. Ji Hong was glad that she enjoyed it. He had no reason to be sad. He wanted Charon to have fun and everything went great. They stood by the Christmas tree and Ji Hong held out his little finger to Charon and promised that they would come back here, but with her mom. Charon gave him her little finger in return and happily agreed. It was still snowing outside. Ji Hong and Charon were lying in bed looking at pictures. The girl said that the sweets they ate were very tasty. The man promised to buy her more the next time they went there. Charon commented on each photo. She said that she didn't even notice that the churros she was eating were sugar. They thought the huge bear on the safarf was very cute. So did the Christmas tree and the lights on it. Suddenly, Charon shrieked and said that she liked one of the pictures the most. In the picture, Ji Hong was holding Charon in his arms and they were smiling. Charon said she liked it because it was with her daddy. Ji Hong was touched and asked if she really liked being photographed with him that much. The girl replied that she did because it was always good to be with her dad. Then the man suggested that they take more photos together. The girl happily agreed. It was already dark outside, but the snow was still covering the ground. Ji Hong was grateful for the day, because Charon had fun. He hoped it would help her grow up happy. Surprisingly, the morning was very sunny. A bright-eyed Charon woke up her dad because the sun was already up. Ji Hong got up and asked her if she wanted to sleep some more, because she was tired at the amusement park yesterday. Charon smiled and said she wasn't tired. Ji Hong wondered why his daughter always woke up early. He had always thought that children usually slept a lot. The early morning sun shone through the window pane and flooded the whole room. Charon asked him what he was thinking about. He told her that he was thinking about how beautiful his daughter was. Charon hugged her father happily and asked if she was really beautiful. Ji Hong replied that she was the most beautiful of all. Then the girl said that her dad was the best in the world. Ji Hong reached for his glasses and said that he was going to make breakfast. The man started to get out of bed and suddenly winced in pain. He had hit his head. The man could not understand how he had managed to crack it. His eyes began to double. He thought his vision had deteriorated, but nothing seemed out of the ordinary. Charon asked him if he was in pain. Ji Hong replied that he was fine, he just bumped himself a little by accident. The man took off his glasses and decided to visit the ophthalmologist after breakfast. As Ji Hong had planned, he went to an optical store. The doctor told him that his vision had improved. Ji Hong stood in front of the ophthalmologist and did not understand how this was possible. The man in the white coat said that Ji Hong's vision used to be minus six, and now it was minus four. It was like a miracle. There was a Snellen chart hanging in the office. The doctor thought that Ji Hong had gone for laser vision correction. He denied it because he hadn't done anything to his eyes at all. The doctor was embarrassed and adjusted his glasses. He advised Ji Hong to go to an ophthalmology institute because this fluctuation could be a symptom of a serious disease. Ji Hong thought that all he needed was to ruin his eyesight. A woman in a white coat was sitting at a computer. She said that Ji Hong had visited them before. She happily told Ji Hong 
who was sitting across from her, that his vision had improved to minus three, which was a big difference. The man was surprised, because his ophthalmologist at the optical store had said he was minus four. The woman was surprised and said that his myopia was adjusting so quickly on its own. Ji Hong was worried, he thought it was bad. The doctor reassured him. This is, of course, a rare occurrence, but it is possible. There were a lot of glasses in the office behind the window. Ji Hong asked if he needed new glasses then. The doctor replied that if his vision improved, he would have to change them more than once, but for now he needed to get new ones soon, and then they would look at the dynamics. Ji Hong lay in bed and looked at his phone screen. He was looking for cases of improved vision, but there just never were any. Everyone had heard of sudden deterioration of vision, but never of sudden improvement. He thought that temporary improvements happened when you reduced the time spent in front of a monitor and using a smartphone, but this was definitely not the case for him. Ji Hong put down his phone and decided to go for a walk because he was on vacation. You can't just lie around and do nothing all day. He was thinking of buying a new book for Charon as well. He sat on the bed and asked Charon, who was sitting at the table, if she wanted to go to the bookstore with him. Charon happily put her hand up and said she did. She wants to read books. At the bookstore, Charon's eyes were dazzled by the assortment. Ji Hong told her to choose whatever she wanted and he would pay for it. He wondered what she might choose, maybe some fairy tales or comics. Suddenly, Charon found what she wanted. She took a book from the shelf and said she wanted this one. Ji Hong was a little surprised at her quick choice. But a moment later, Ji Hong was overwhelmed when he saw which book Charon wanted. The girl was happily holding a math book for preschoolers. The man asked her if she was sure about her choice. Charon replied that it was an interesting book. Then he asked her, embarrassed, if she had ever studied math before. The happy girl replied that she hadn't, but she liked this book and wanted it. Ji Hong took the book in his hands. He thought it was just money down the drain. She would probably read half a paragraph and then put it down forever. Then Ji Hong held out his little finger to Charon and asked her to promise him that she would read the book to the end. Charon gave him her pinky back and agreed. Ji Hong tried to choose another book for her as well. He thought that he would probably regret it, but he could buy one book, especially since he liked it so much. The father and daughter returned home. Ji Hong hoped they had at least some food left in the fridge because he wanted to get takeout, but he spent all his money on books. But Charon was happy to be able to read her book. She flopped down on the bed and opened the book. Ji Hong told her that while she was reading, he would make lunch. Ji Hong opened the drawer and turned to the curious Charon. He did not understand what could be interesting in this book. The man began to put food on the table. He thought that most kids hated math, and Charon would probably give up on this book soon. Charon approached Ji Hong with the book in her hands. He invited her to the table because he had already prepared everything. Charon opened the book in front of him and told him that she was done. Ji Hong was petrified. He could not understand how she had solved all the problems. Charon stood with the book open and smiled. She wanted her daddy to praise her. Ji Hong couldn't imagine how she had managed to complete all the tasks. Her husband was sitting at the table with a book in his hands, confused and surprised. He did not believe that she had really solved everything. But Charon asked him to believe. Ji Hong looked at the correctly solved examples. These were exercises for preschoolers, and she had solved them all, but Charon was not yet in the preparatory class. He was confused. He didn't make a single mistake. He thought that Yona had already taught Charon how to add and subtract. Ji Hun told Charon that it was correct and asked if her mom had taught her. Charon jumped for joy. She said she had learned it herself from this book. Ji Hong was surprised that Charon could learn all this on her own and said that she was incredibly smart. The girl replied that she liked numbers and math because it was so much fun. Charon danced and sang about being a math genius. Ji Hong looked at her and thought that she really had a knack for it. 
Her husband was proud of her. This was another proof that she was his daughter, because he remembered being called a math genius as a child. He must have been. Ji Hong suggested that Charon have a lesson in the afternoon. He could teach her something new. The girl stopped dancing and was surprised. She started to be happy that her daddy would help her, thank Ji Hong, and said he was the best. After a while, they were solving the last example. Ji Hong asked how much is 14 plus 6 minus 3. They were sitting at the dining room table. Charon happily raised her hand and said it was 17. Her husband praised her and said that she had learned addition and subtraction very well. Ji Hong picked up the phone and thought that he should also explain division and multiplication to her. He didn't know if she would be able to memorize the multiplication table, but it was worth a try. He happily told Charon that they were going to learn the multiplication table and asked her to repeat after him. The girl gladly agreed. There were various papers with examples and tables on the table. Ji Hong taught Charon the multiplication table by two, and she repeated it clearly. After a while, they finished the table by nine, and Ji Hong asked if Charon had memorized anything. The girl, who had been listening attentively, said that she had memorized everything. Then Ji Hong began to say that she would not be able to remember the first time and should repeat it again. Charon interrupted him and confidently said that she had memorized everything. Ji Hong was surprised. He could not believe that his daughter was so smart. Charon stood up angrily and asked him what he had just said. Ji Hong shouted he hadn't realized he had said it out loud. Charon was angry that her daddy didn't believe she was that smart. Ji Hong started to deny it and say that he was just very surprised. She looked at him angrily and asked him if he didn't believe she was smart because she was Kim Charon, daddy's daughter, Kim Charon. Ji Hong was embarrassed and said that of course he believed in her abilities. Charon angrily began to stretch the smile on Ji Hong's surprised face with her fingers and told him that he should be happy and smile if he believed in her. The confused man began to say that he did believe in her and would smile. Satisfied, Charon snorted, put her hands to her sides, and said that she had memorized the entire table. Ji Hong smiled and offered to practice. Ji Hong asked how many four by SIXS Charon confidently replied that it was 24. Then he asked her how many sevens would be. The girl smiled and answered 49. Several more examples were asked and Charon gave the correct answer to all of them. Charon said she had memorized everything. But Ji Hun couldn't believe it and he asked if she was sure her mom hadn't taught her. Charon got angry again. She didn't understand why her dad didn't believe her. She was upset because she wasn't a liar and Ji Hun himself had said he believed in her. The man apologized and explained that he was just surprised because his daughter was amazing. Charon wrapped herself in a blanket and turned away from Ji Hoon, who didn't know what to do. She said that she wouldn't believe him either because her father's daughter was a liar. So she decided to curl up in the blanket and start to get offended. Excited, Ji Hong began to say that this was not true and she was not a liar. He apologized to Charon, asking her to forgive him, and said that he would always believe her. Charon snorted under the covers. She turned angrily to him and told him never to doubt her. Ji Hong folded his hands in front of him and promised that he would not doubt her and asked if she had forgiven him. The girl stood up and hugged Ji Hong, and she couldn't help but forgive him because he was her dad. He thanked the girl very much and said that he had the best daughter in the world. As they hugged, Ji Hong thought about how children her age learn multiplication. He couldn't understand it. Or maybe his daughter was just a genius. The sun lit up the houses and small balconies cast a long shadow. It was in this way that Ji Hong realized, like many other parents, that his child was a genius. He decided to study math with her until Charon started preschool. They started with something fun. There was a pile of math books on the table. Charon calculated that 4 by 4 by 3.14 would be 50.24 square centimeters. She smiled and asked if she was right. She considered herself a math genius. 
Ji Hong held the preschool textbook in his hands and could not believe it. Charon could calculate the plane of a circle. She was only six years old, but she had learned the entire preschool math curriculum in just one month. Ji Hong looked at the book, and there were various geometric shapes and examples on the pages. Charon was solving not only ordinary, but also the most difficult problems. The girl grasped everything on the go and had a very deep understanding of the theory. In her dreamy father's imagination, Charon stood with a huge cup in her hands. He believed that with such skills she could win a philosophy prize. She would be the youngest person to receive this title. Ji Hong looked at the little smiling Charon and could not understand how she had such genetic aptitude for the exact sciences. The man thought about it. He had a very ordinary level of intelligence, and as far as he remembered, so did Yona. He had once read that genius children are born regardless of heredity. It seemed to be true. When Ji Hong found out that Charon was a prodigy, he had another problem. The man looked at the screen in search of a school for gifted children. He didn't know what kind of education would be best for her. Ji Hong sat at his desk and looked at his daughter. He had been desperate since he found out how smart she was. He thought that if Yona was with them, they could think about it together. Ji Hong looked at his phone, which was off. Yona had sent the money and that was it. He still couldn't reach her. He didn't know what to do if the woman just didn't pick up the phone. Ji Hong leaned back in his chair. He thought about the choice he had to make that would affect Charon's future. It was very difficult to make a decision on his own. Charon was lying on the bed with a pencil in her hand, doing math problems. Ji Hong thought that the new year was coming soon, so they would go to his parents' house and he would consult them. The New Year's Eve holiday had begun. The sun was blinding everything around. Ji Hong's parents were happy to see Charon. She missed them very much. Ji Hong's father told them they were good for coming and asked if they had been stuck in traffic. Ji Hong answered embarrassedly that it was not that far to Suwon, there were no traffic jams, and he hoped that there would not be any now. His father came to the car door and told everyone to get in, because it was a long way to go. Ji Hong's mother and Charon sat in the back. The woman was pleasantly surprised that her Charon knew how to fasten her seat belt herself. She praised the girl for it. Charon replied that it was her mom who taught her to buckle up when riding in the car. Suddenly, Charon looked at her grandmother and said that her daddy was studying math with her. The woman was surprised because it was too early for such a science. Ji Hong turned to his mother and said that Charon was a smart girl because she had learned the whole preschool program in three weeks. The father was surprised. He did not believe that this was possible. Charon was offended again and snorted because her grandfather did not believe her either. They were driving fast on the road. Ji Hong said in embarrassment that he would not lie to his parents. His father thought about it and said that it meant their granddaughter was really that smart. Ji Hong said that this was worrying. The father didn't understand it. He thought it was better to have a child who was smart than to have a child who was stupid. The man began to say, embarrassed, that he had to give Charon a proper education that would develop her talents and he asked if his parents had any ideas. His father wasn't sure because he had never had to raise a genius. Ji Hong could not deny it. His mother was a little worried and she thought that there was no need to rush because he needed to give himself time to think about such a difficult decision. Ji Hoon embarrassedly agreed. Huge buildings loomed over their car. Ji Hong thought that this was a problem because he had no one to discuss the matter with. If only he could get hold of Jonah. Different voices were heard in the house they arrived at. Everyone had finally seen Ji Hong's daughter, about whom he had talked so much. Several people stood by Charon and admired her beauty. The girl smiled and introduced herself, saying her name was Kim Charon. The woman turned to Ji Hoon and asked him with a smile if he was sure that Ji Hoon was his daughter, because it was not his set of genes. The woman was Ji Hong's cousin. The man was embarrassed to ask if he spoke to his cousin about his children in this way and said that she was indeed his daughter. Suddenly they looked around because a boy was talking to Ji Hong. 
He was surprised that Jihan still hadn't gotten through to Charon's mother and said that he was like a hillbilly and maybe it would be better to contact a private detective. The guy's name was Ji Hyun. Ji Hyun looked at the guy menacingly and asked what he meant. Ji Hyun asked him equally menacingly if it had ever occurred to Ji Hoon that something might have happened to the girl's mother. It was getting dark outside. Ji Hoon said he would think about it. Ji Hoon was outraged because when a person disappears, the passage of time speeds up dramatically. Ji Hyun turned away from him. He didn't know what to do. He thought about calling him a hillbilly and wondered if he looked stupid. Ji Hong went outside. It was already dark. He thought that on the other hand, Ji Hyun was right and he should ask Charon about her mom. Suddenly, the little girl looked outside and asked in surprise what her daddy was doing here. The man shouted and asked why she had come out. It was cold. She ran up to him and hugged him, and the girl came out to warm her dad, because Charon never gets cold. Ji Hong was touched that Charon was taking care of him. His daughter was such a good girl. He wondered if he was the reason she couldn't express her kindness. He pulled Charon away from him and asked if she missed her mom. The girl deflated. She thought about it for a while, smiled, and replied that she did miss her mom. Ji Hoon thought about it. She had been keeping it all to herself all this time, and he decided to discuss it with her when they got back. Suddenly, his phone rang in his pocket. Ji Hong wondered who was calling on his day off. The man looked at the screen and froze. It was Bei Young calling him. Ji Hong put the phone to his ear. A little scared, he asked if it was really Yona calling him. The woman replied that it was her. Who else could be calling him from this number? Ji Hong began to yell at her because she kept not answering the phone. Charon stood behind him, scared. She turned to her father. Ji Hoon just looked at her and continued talking to Yona. He was angry. He asked her where she was and why she didn't answer her phone. She replied that she was very far away. There was thick, flaky snow falling where the woman was. She could not say where she was. Ji Hoon began to suspect that she had debts and was now in hiding. The woman denied it because she had sent him alimony and a large amount of money. Then Ji Hoon asked her if she missed Charon. Yona remained silent. But after a few seconds, she answered that of course she did. She also told the worried Ji Hoon that she missed him because she loved them both very much. After these words, Ji Hoon got the answer to the question that had been tormenting him since Charon appeared. He began to remember all the good moments with her and realized that he had accepted Charon as his daughter because he still had feelings for Yona despite the fact that they hadn't seen each other for many years. He was angry with the woman for suddenly disappearing when everything was going well and now she says she loves him after seven years of absence. Concerned Ji Hoon said he had an important question for Yona. He looked at the surprised Charon. He didn't want to ask but otherwise he wouldn't understand. Ji Hoon asked if Yona had left Charon for another man. The woman began to say angrily that Ji Hong was not in his right mind. The woman could see a big blue sea in front of her, and her hair was covered with snow. She said that there was only him and Charon in her life, and she would never leave them. She began to say that if he ever said something like that again, even jokingly, she would do bad things to him. Ji Hong was embarrassed and apologized. Yona turned to her worried husband again, her hair blowing in the winter wind. She said that she loved him and her daughter and asked him to trust her and just wait a little longer. Again, Yona spoke to the distraught husband. The winter wind blew her hair as she expressed her love for him and their daughter. She asked him to believe her and to just wait a little longer. Ji Hong then asked the woman to answer another question. He asked when she would be able to explain everything to him. Yona wasn't sure, but she promised to tell him everything in time. She asked Ji Hong to trust her and wait for her. Ji Hong sighed and asked Yona to promise. She did so. Ji Hong remembered what he had said about Charon being very smart. She was happy to hear that. The man said he didn't think it was just because she was their daughter. He thought Charon was a prodigy. 
Ji Hong asked Yona what she thought about sending her to a school for gifted children. The woman replied that he could send her there if she wanted to, and asked Ji Hong to remember that nothing would work if it wasn't Charon's own desire. Yona said that Ji Hong may not know Charon well, but she is actually a very stubborn girl. Charon looked at her father with interest. She did not know what it meant to be stubborn. Ji Hoon didn't know which of them was telling the truth. He told Yona that he would do everything he could for her anyway, but he couldn't be home all the time. He would find a job soon. Ji Hong told Yona that he needed her here. The woman replied that she would send money so that Ji Hong could hire a nurse for Charon. The man did not understand her words. She repeated that Ji Hong should hire a tutor for her because she needed to study. The man started to get angry, and Yona asked him how much money he needed for that. Ji Hoon was angry, telling the woman that they were talking about Charon's future and that temporary solutions were not appropriate. Yona replied that she couldn't come anyway, because she had already told him. The man didn't let her finish, he knew she was in some kind of a cursed situation. Charon was scared. Ji Hong continued to say that he would raise the child alone, and Yona would have to explain everything to her daughter later. The woman wanted to say that she didn't mean it, but Ji Hong hung up the phone. The man was desperate, he didn't want to hang up and thought he should call her back. Suddenly, Charon asked about the fight. Ji Hong turned to her. He embarrassedly walked over to the girl and asked if she thought it was because she was scared that her dad was yelling, and then apologized. Charon asked him not to fight with her mom. Desperate, Ji Hong realized that he had shown Charon his bad side and realized that he could not make such scenes in front of her anymore. The man said that the girl was probably cold and took her inside, promising that her daddy would be back soon. Ji Hong picked up the phone again and dialed Yona. He wanted to apologize to her. He was told that the caller could not accept his call. He was surprised. He did not believe that she could block him so suddenly and decided to dial again. He smiled as he waited to hear from her, but the caller again said that the caller could not take his call. These words ran through his head. Ji Hong was almost crying when he realized that she had blocked him. The phone repeated the same phrase again. He scolded himself, because how could he end the only call he had ever had like that? If only he had known that he would not be able to reach her again, he would have told her that he loved her too. Suddenly his eyes rounded with surprise and he looked at the phone screen. Yona had texted him. She apologized for giving the impression that she was taking this situation very lightly, but in fact she had thought it through. She added that she would like to call them more often and talk to Charon, but that it was a bit difficult for her. She asked Ji Hun to write to her and she would reply any time. Ji Hong wrote to ask if she was telling the truth. Yona replied that of course it was true. She would send money for Charon, and if Ji Hong could not find a tutor for her, she could at least buy her some books. The man thought about it. She really wanted to hire a tutor, but it was a lot of money every month. He did not understand where Yona would get that kind of money. As far as he remembered, the woman did not have a rich, ordinary family. He began to suspect that Yona had started doing something illegal. He decided to ask her about it and wrote her a message. Yona did not understand what he was talking about. She reminded him that she was from a rich family and that her family gave her the money, so he didn't have to worry. Ji Hoon thought that her family was giving her as much as his monthly salary, which was a lot of money. Ji Hong thought this was suspicious. He decided to ask Charon tomorrow where she lived because children would not lie. In the morning, the sun was peeking through the white clouds that covered the sky. The sun's rays made their way to the roofs of the buildings. Charon happily told me that her mom's house was very, very big. She said that when she was little, she would sometimes get lost in it, but her uncle would always find her. Ji Hoon held the box in his hands and marveled at her story. He imagined a huge castle and a man with a monocle. It sounded incredible. Even if you win the lottery, it's impossible to live in such luxury. Ji Hoon wondered who Yona's parents were. 
Ji Hong's mother came over to them and asked if something had happened to Yona because she had heard that they had talked about her with her parents yesterday. Ji Hong smiled and replied that his mother shouldn't worry, that Yona had called him and said that she was fine. Then my mom asked if he would tell her anything, and Ji Hong smiled and said no, because she had important family matters. The man couldn't get the thought out of his head that if Yona's family was so rich that they lived in a castle, then it was possible that they were in a war over their inheritance. It was the only logical thought. Charon told her daddy that she had seen many stars in the sky at night and that she had had a very tasty dinner yesterday. She liked it. She asked her dad to come here more often. Ji Hong patted Charon on the head and said that they would definitely come back. He looked at Charon's joy and decided to teach her on his own for the time being. Everyone was returning home by car. Ji Hong had no hurry. He had a long vacation and the opportunity to be with Charon. A week has passed since the new year. Ji Hong began to see poorly with his glasses on, so he went to the ophthalmologist again. And what he heard. The female doctor was embarrassed. She adjusted the glasses and said that now Ji Hong had plus one vision in both eyes. The man was dumbfounded. He did not understand how this could happen. The woman took him by the hands and asked him to study his case and write a dissertation. She could not miss this opportunity. Ji Hong agreed, of course, but he didn't understand whether he needed to wear glasses or not. The doctor looked at him in surprise. She said it was obvious. Ji Hong no longer needed glasses or their services. The man did not know what to say. He did not understand how this was possible. He was overwhelmed with joy and was shaking in his chair. After 15 years of wearing glasses all the time, this was real happiness. The weather outside was clear as usual. Ji Hong walked along the sidewalk. He wondered how this was possible. Then he stopped. Ji Hong thought that he had never seen so clearly without his glasses. He looked at his reflection in the window. He thought that his friends would be very surprised and most likely think that he had had laser correction. Now he could see. He looked pretty good without his glasses. Ji Hong admired himself to the strange looks of passers-by. Suddenly, the man was frightened. He suddenly received a phone call from Jiang Su. He asked why Ji Hoon had been so hard to reach lately, and he was worried that Ji Hoon had hit the fan. Ji Hoon asked why Jiang Su, after they hadn't talked for a month, had asked if he was alive. The man asked his friend not to worry, and if he decided to die, he would ask the former to bury Jiang Su in his will. The guy couldn't understand where Ji Hoon was all this time, and he was beginning to think that he was having family problems. The man could not say that everything was fine. He decided to teach Charon at home. Jiang Su thought about it. He asked if Ji Hoon was planning to get married. The man was stunned by this question. Ji Hoon joked and said that he was going to marry twice. Then his friend asked why he didn't come to the university. The man had other reasons. Suddenly he thought why he was hiding Charon from his friends. After all, she was his legitimate daughter. He quickly told Jiang Su that if he was so interested in knowing, he should come to his house and say goodbye. Then Ji Hoon thought that even though he invited him, Jiang Su can make a circus out of anything and maybe he shouldn't have invited him. Ji Hong opened the door and told Charon that he was back. The girl was happy to see him. She noticed that her dad didn't have his glasses and said that it looked good on him without them. Ji Hong blushed. Charon smiled and said that his glasses were very thick. Ji Hong was embarrassed. He thought his glasses were stylish. Children are very direct sometimes. Charon put her fingers up and said that he was very handsome now. She hugged her dad and asked him not to wear glasses anymore. Ji Hong smiled and said that daddy would go without them now. Then he asked what his daughter had been doing all day. Charon answered that she was doing math and then saw an interesting thing on the computer called MeTube. She happily said that she was watching beautiful Appa dancing. Ji Hoon realized that it was probably Baze, a popular K-pop group. Charon put her hand to her heart and confidently said that she would make her dad be as cool as them. Ji Hong scratched the back of his head in embarrassment. 
He said it would be difficult, but he thanked her for her efforts. Charon got angry thinking that Daddy didn't believe her again and said she would make him cool anyway. Jihun raised his hands and thanked her and said he believed her. He thought that it would be good to be cool for his daughter. Then he thought that he should pay attention to his appearance. It was getting dark outside. Pink clouds hung over the houses. Jihun asked what Charon would like for dinner. She said that she wanted her daddy to cook something. It was always delicious. The man looked at her and asked her to wait a little while while daddy cooked something. He opened the refrigerator and wondered what side dish to choose. Suddenly, Charon said that someone was at the door. Ji Hoon didn't know who it could be. Jang Su was standing on the doorstep with two guys. They were holding bags of drinks. Ji Hoon did not expect him to come on the same day. Charon asked curiously who these men were. Ji Hong embarrassedly replied that they were friends of her father's and asked if she would mind if they had dinner with them. Charon thought that they were poor if they came to eat with him, and her mother had taught her that you should help the poor. Ji Hong thought that the students were really poor people and mentally apologized to the boys. Ji Hong opened the door. Chang Su was complaining that he almost died of cold. Suddenly he was numb with cold. The beautiful Charon stood in front of him, surprised. Chang Su could not move. The boys began to ask him why he was not coming in and how much longer they would be cold. Chang Su suddenly shouted that he saw an elf. The boys were surprised and thought that Chang Su's brain was frozen. They told him to go inside and shut up. But suddenly the boys were also frozen. They also saw the beautiful Charon. They didn't know what to say. Then Chang Su asked Ji Hong in horror who the little elf was. The man put his arms around the smiling Charon and said that she was his daughter. Chang Su looked at Ji Hong closely and asked him to tell him who it was without joking. Ji Hong was embarrassed to say that it was indeed his daughter and asked him to take his word for it. The girl took her father's hand with her two small hands. She smiled and politely said that her name was Kim Charon and she was indeed her daddy's daughter. The men could not believe it. Chang Su thought she was a foster child. Ji Hoon was outraged and asked him to watch his language in front of the child. He explained that she was his biological child and asked why he had come and what was in the packages. Chang Su embarrassedly replied that Ji Hoon had invited him, so he came. He was worried about him being here and thought they could have a drink. Ji Hong said that they would not drink in front of the child. Jang Su scratched the back of his head in embarrassment and said that he didn't know about it. He said that two months ago Ji Hong lived alone and asked how he managed to have a child in two months. The man replied that there was no point in talking to them and decided to show them the document. He handed the men a paternity test and told them to read it. They were surprised. It was really true. Then Jang Su started asking if Ji Hong understood why it was hard for them to believe it. No one in their position would have believed it when they heard that a man had suddenly had a child. Charon was standing next to them. She said she wouldn't have believed it either. Ji Hoon asked her in embarrassment why she was standing next to them. Then Ji Hong said that it was his fault for not explaining everything to them from the beginning. He invited the men to come in and said he would explain everything over dinner. The men were sitting in Ji Hong's apartment. They were surprised that he hadn't seen Charon's mother for seven years. Jang Su said that the girl was very beautiful and that her mother was probably beautiful too. Then he asked if they had any photos. Ji Hoon replied that there were no photos, but that Charon's mom was really beautiful. Jang Su thought about it. He said that Ji Hoon was lucky that Charon didn't look like him. He had heard that the first girl looked like her father and if she had inherited his looks. Ji Hong heroically slapped Chang Su and said that he had been asking for it for a long time. The men sat at the table in astonishment and Charon smiled. Jang Su asked why Ji Hong was doing this to him because he knew it was a joke. The guy started to say that Ji Hong has been looking better lately and with the way he looks now, people would more easily believe that Ji Hong is his daughter. They also noticed that he didn't have glasses and asked about laser correction. 
Ji Hong blushed. He replied that his eyesight had improved recently, so he didn't need glasses anymore. It was the first time he had heard that since he started raising Charon. He was flattered. Charon smiled and said that her daddy was the most handsome man in the world. The men also smiled at her and said she was very nice. If they had a daughter like her, they would blow dust off her. Ji Hong decided to show off. Just a month ago, Charon had just learned to count, and now she was solving quadratic equations. The boys were surprised. They did not understand how this was possible. Ji Hong was outraged that no one believed him, and Charon confidently said that she could really do it. Then one of the boys embarrassedly wrote an example and asked Charon to solve it. Charon asked him to wait a bit and concentrated. She happily handed the paper back to the men and asked them if it was correct. The men were surprised. One of them said that when he was Charon's age, he only liked to poop. Jang Su jokingly asked if he didn't like to pee. Charon jumped up and down and said she was smart and beautiful. Chan Su jokingly started pushing Ji Hoon and said that Charon was very smart and if he raised her properly, he would have a happy old age. While Jang Su was joking, Ji Hoon thought that he really needed to raise her properly, but she was too smart for him to do it alone. He looked at Charon, who was solving problems and surprising the boys with her abilities. The man thought that while he would finish his Ph.D., Charon would study the entire high school course. One day he would have nothing to tell her. And then it would probably be time to send her to a school for gifted children. Suddenly, Jang Su whispered to Ji Hoon to listen to him. He said that the university held an Olympiad for gifted children every April and asked if he could enroll Charon. Ji Hoon was outraged. Why would a seven-year-old go to a university Olympiad? Jang Su confidently said he had connections and asked Ji Hoon to trust him. Ji Hoon didn't really expect any of this, but he told his friend to do what he could. The weather was clear in the morning. White clouds floated in the sky. Ji Hoon's phone rang. It was Wu Chang Su. He was wearing a towel around his neck. He answered the phone and the man on the phone asked him to meet him on Friday. Ji Hoon asked why. The man said he had an appointment with a professor who would be on the jury. Charon needed to test before the Olympics. Ji Hoon wondered if his friend had done this for him. Jang Su replied that he could move a little for Ji Hoon's sake so that he could owe him a favor. The professor wanted to see Charon's abilities in person. Ji Hoon agreed, as he had no plans on Friday anyway. Jang Su said he would pass on his agreement. Ji Hong was a little worried. Charon was a genius, of course, but he was a little worried that she was in for a real test. What if he had overestimated her abilities? Ji Hong was sweating with worry. But he changed his mind, because solving quadratic equations at the age of seven is brilliant. Suddenly, he saw himself standing in front of a professor who said that quadratic equations are nothing for a genius at that age, that geniuses are capable of doing mathematical analysis. He thought that perhaps his measure of genius was too low. Charon asked her dreamy father what he was thinking about. She smiled and looked at him. Ji Hong decided that he shouldn't worry so much. No matter what happened, Charon would always be his daughter. He thought that he shouldn't look insecure and worry in front of her. Ji Hong hugged Charon and told her that he loved her even if she was not a genius. The girl replied that she loved him too. It was Friday afternoon. A building stood tall in the sky. A woman looked at Charon and said that she was pleased to meet her. She introduced herself as Professor Beck Nahai, but the girl could just call her Professor Beck. A happy Charon agreed and said it was nice to meet her as well. The woman turned to Ji Hong and said that his daughter was a smart girl and she had prepared test questions for her. Ji Hong thanked her and said he wouldn't interrupt. Charon sat down on a chair. The professor asked her to solve everything she could and she had an hour. Ji Hong was worried. Charon had never tried to solve problems for an hour before, and he did not know if she would be able to concentrate for long. After a while, Charon brought the papers she was writing on to the professor and said that she had already solved everything. 
The woman said that Charon was a very diligent girl and had solved all the problems, but she needed to check their correctness. She asked Ji Hong to wait a little longer. The man hoped for the best. The scale of expectation began to rise. He began to calm himself down, because if he hoped for the best, it would be painful to be disappointed. His expectation level began to decrease. Chiron happily told her dad that she hoped for a good outcome. He smiled and said that he still loved her no matter what the outcome. Chiron said she loved her daddy too and made a heart with her hands above her head. Suddenly, the professor came out and said she had checked the test. The scale of expectation went up to the maximum and Ji Hong didn't know what to do. He wondered what Charon's score was. The sun was shining through the windows. The professor said that Chiron had taken the Wexler Adult Intelligence Test. This is the most reliable modern test that shows the level of intelligence. The excited woman said that the margin of error is usually plus or minus 16 points. Charon's score was 150. This score means that Charon is a true genius, of which there are only 0.04%. Ji Hong was shocked. His daughter is a real genius. The professor noted that the girl also showed a high score in terms of socialization. She will have great success in the future. Charon was beaming with joy. A happy Ji Hong thanked the professor. She asked if he had ever thought about sending the girl to a school for gifted children. The surprised man said that he had, but that usually children older than Charon study there. The professor said that some of these schools have elementary grades, usually starting in the sixth grade. She thought Charon had a chance of getting in. Ji Hong turned to his daughter and asked if she wanted to go to such a school. The girl replied that if she could go there with her dad, she would. Ji Hong explained to Charon that he would not be able to attend school with her. She replied that she didn't want to go to school without her dad. Charon sat there furious. The man embarrassedly explained to the professor that Charon's opinion was the most important. The woman smiled and said she understood, but if she changed her mind, she asked him to call her back. She would then help find an institution that would accept the girl. The father and daughter left the office. Jiang Su rushed to them, burning with curiosity. Ji Hong replied that Charon's results had broken through the ceiling, that was all he could say. Chan Su was impressed. He asked for Professor Beck's response. Ji Hong replied that the professor had recommended that Charon be sent to a school for the gifted, but the girl refused and he would not force her. The men were in a good mood. Jiang Su thought that Charon would be the first child in Korea to win the Nobel Prize. Ji Hoon replied that maybe the girl would want to be such a child someday and patted her on the head. They were passing a vending machine when Jiang Su asked what course Ji Hoon Hyun would choose. The man replied that he would have to change his schedule because he had no one to stay home with Charon. Suddenly, Jiang Su had a brilliant idea. He asked if Ji Hoon would like to take his daughter to class with him. The man thought about it and replied that it would be boring for her. Charon began to protest because she wanted to go to class with her dad. Ji Hong asked her if she could sit in one place for two hours. Charon enthusiastically replied that she watches movies for two hours and doesn't get tired, so she could sit in class. Ji Hong agreed, but said that if she got bored, he wouldn't take her again. Happy Charon hugged her father and agreed. She kissed the happy Ji Hong on the cheek and said that he was the best. While Charon was kissing her dad and telling him that she loved him very much, Jiang Su was surprised and thought that Ji Hoon's cheeks were smeared with honey. Before the classes started, Ji Hoon decided to teach Charon English. She showed her genius even in this. Charon sat at the table and read Kima led police and prosecutors to a remote coastal area. Her husband was very impressed. He taught her only the most basic rules of grammar, and within a week she was able to write at a high school level. Soon she would be able to speak like a native speaker. Ji Hong thought that he had nothing more to teach Chiron. Maybe he should really hire the tutor that Yona had sent money for. He couldn't figure out which subject was better. In Korean, English, and math, Chiron had long been ahead. Suddenly, the girl told her dad to look at a cool auntie. There was a picture of a woman at a piano on a sheet of paper. 
Chiron said that it said that this woman was a pianist and she asked who pianists were. Suddenly Ji Hong realized. He explained to Chiron that pianists are people who play the piano and asked if she wanted to learn how to play it too. Chiron happily replied that the piano was cool and she wanted to learn with her daddy. The man explained in embarrassment that he did not have time to learn, but perhaps the girl wanted to go to music school. Charon replied irritably that she was not interested without her dad. Then he asked if she wanted to learn math. Charon replied that she would only if her dad taught her. Ji Hong then asked what the girl wanted to study. An illuminated Chiron replied that she wanted to learn from her dad because he was interesting. The man basically thought so. Suddenly, Ji Hong wondered what if she would only want to do what she could do with him. He wanted to be with her, but he couldn't stay at home all the time. Charon ran into her dad's arms and told him he was the best. The disappointed man thought that to understand what she needed, he would have to try different things. But he had neither the time nor the money. Suddenly he had a thought. There is a way to introduce her to different areas of life without having to delve into them. Ji Hong asked Cherna if she wanted to go to the library, where she could read books and then find what she liked best. The girl was surprised. But when she realized that they would be together with her dad, she happily agreed. The weather was clear when Ji Hong and Cherin arrived at the library. The woman who worked there embarrassedly explained that Cherin was too young and they couldn't let her in the library because children are noisy and the library is not supposed to be noisy. Ji Hoon embarrassedly explained that they had nowhere else to go to read and if Cherin started making noise, they would definitely leave the library. The woman agreed. Ji Hoon and Cheren thanked her and the girl said she would make sure that her dad didn't make any noise. The man asked his daughter again if she understood the rules and Cheren told him to be quiet and she replied that she did. People at the bookstand suddenly started turning around. Ji Hong and Cheren were walking through the library and all eyes were on them. A man whispered to his daughter that she should pick out all the books she liked. Cheren thought about it and started walking forward. The girl took a book from the shelf and whispered that she liked it. Charon opened the book and went back to her daddy. The people around her looked at her. Ji Hong was also choosing a book. He noticed the stairs and it was expected for him. But she is interested here because the library has a huge number of books. Suddenly, his phone rang in his pocket. Ji Hong took it out to see who was calling. He was very surprised because it was Professor Jang Dong-ho calling him. ji Hun touched Charon's shoulder. The girl turned to him and her dad whispered that he would answer the call. Charon stared at the screen of ji Hun's phone. She was furious. Was that professor calling again to scold her dad? ji Hong went outside and picked up the phone. Suddenly, the man cringed as he screamed. The professor was shouting that Ji Hong was a bitch and a rat and asked if he had done it. Ji Hong did not understand what the professor was saying. Jang Dong Ho started shouting again, asking if Ji Hong had suddenly reported him to the police for embezzling the budget. The man still could not understand what the professor was talking about. Jang Dong Ho continued to accuse Ji Hong of being a bitch and that it was he who reported that the professor had embezzled the money given to the university for research for the Hatch Group. He added that he would make Ji Hong's life merry for snitching. The man was furious and thought the professor was a jerk. Ji Hong wanted to address him as Professor Chan, but the professor interrupted him and said that he was Jang Dong Ho to him. Ji Hong calmly said that he did not know what evidence the investigation had, but that he and the other lab workers should still testify against him. The professor was furious. He called Ji Hong a son of a bitch and asked him how dare he threaten him. Ji Hong calmly replied that the professor could call him whatever he wanted, but he didn't dare call his parents dogs. Jang Dong Ho continued to shout at the angry Ji Hong that his parents must be dogs if they could give birth to such a bastard and that Ji Hong had no education because he had no respect for his elders. The angry man wanted to say a few kind words to the professor, but he didn't have time. Someone tugged on his jacket. Ji Hong turned around in surprise and saw Charon. The man told the professor that he would not talk to trash like him and hung up. Upset, Charon asked if he was okay. Embarrassed, Ji Hong smiled and said that everything was fine. 
He asked her why she had left, as she was supposed to be reading. Upset, the girl replied that she didn't want to read anymore, but wanted to go home. Ji Hong was surprised, but agreed. He wanted to tell the professor to stop talking, but he couldn't do it in front of Charon. He thought that the professor had told him about the embezzlement of research fees and that it was worth finding out more about. After a while, they returned home. Ji Hong told Jiang Su about the professor's embezzlement and asked what he could know about it. The man was sitting in a chair and talking on the phone. Jiang Su told him that the professor was capable of such a thing, but he wondered what had happened and why Ji Hong was asking about it. The man told his friend about the conversation. Jiang Su was furious, and he asked Ji Hong if he should check the records. Ji Hong said yes, and that he would come to the lab tomorrow. Ji Hong hung up the phone and thought that he had a lot to do tomorrow, so he should take Charon to his parents' house. He asked the girl, embarrassed, if she wanted to go to her grandmother's house tomorrow, because he would be very busy tomorrow. Upset, Charon asked if he would be very, very busy. Ji Hong said yes, and asked her to stay at her grandmother's tomorrow. Charon was outraged and said she wanted to be with her dad. The man patted his daughter's head and said that he wanted to be with her too. But he could not be there all the time and Charon had to understand that. Charon was upset. Still, she agreed, she didn't want to be alone with her dad, but she had no choice. Ji Hong thanked her for her understanding and said good night. The little girl lay down next to him and sobbed. It was the middle of the night. Ji Hong was sleeping soundly. Suddenly Charon woke up, her eyes filled with anger. Once again, a glow appeared from her hands. She pointed it at Ji Hong and asked him to be healthy and sleep well. The radiance enveloped the man. The blue glow lifted Charon out of bed. She said that it was time to punish sinners. Her eyes shone with fury. She had to get to Chan Dong Ho's house. The blurry space in front of Charon began to become clearer. She was in the professor's house, but no one was there. She didn't understand where he could be. She asked the shining light that was enveloping her to show her where the professor was. The jets of light began to intertwine in different patterns. Charon saw the professor. Instantly she disappeared, leaving the light behind. There were bars on the window. Alcohol bottles were scattered around. The professor promised to strangle all those who had put him up to it. Charon was behind him. The professor was sitting on the floor in his t-shirt in a pile of bottles and promised to give everyone a sweet life after what they had done. He was holding a glass and promising that everyone would be washed in blood. Charon was thinking about what punishment to choose for him. She wanted to humiliate the professor in front of everyone. Suddenly, the bottle flew into the wall and broke into pieces. The furious professor promised to kill everyone. He held his head and promised to strangle everyone with his own hands. Charon was still watching him. She knew that he would soon break down. He was aggressive, and this could not be left unchecked. A purple glow appeared from her hands and began to approach the professor. Charon's work was complete. The glow enveloped the angry Chan Dong Ho. She wanted to punish him herself, but it was forbidden. Charon didn't want to, but she had somewhere else to go. The glow carried the girl over the sleeping city. Today she had things to do all night. In the morning, Ji Hong took his daughter to his parents' house. Charon almost cried and begged her father not to go. Ji Hong's parents were worried. The man said that Charon had promised to stay with her grandmother. He could not stay. Ji Hoon asked Yuan Yi to stop tormenting him. He had to go because he couldn't let the thief Jang Dong Ho be free and dangerous. He then asked Charon, who was in despair, if there was anything that was bothering her. The girl hugged her dad and said that everything was fine, she had always obeyed him and would do her best this time. Ji Hong thanked her and asked her to obey her grandparents. The father asked his son to stay out of trouble. The mother agreed and asked Ji Hong to be careful. They were worried. The man asked them not to worry and to look after Charon. The girl looked at the door behind which her daddy had disappeared. She knew that he didn't need to do anything, because that man would soon break down. She couldn't tell her dad about it, and it made her feel bad. 
she scratched the back of her head and said she wanted to play with her dad. Ji Hoon arrived at the lab Jiangsu and the boys were already waiting for him. The men were outraged because the professor had also called them with threats. They were furious that Ji Hong asked if they had found any information. Jiang Su found a financial report on the professor's computer and invited everyone to look at it. Ji Hong was surprised. He was amazed at the amount of money stolen and did not understand how he had gone unpunished so far. Jiang Su suggested looking at other orders. He was sure that the statute of limitations had not yet expired for a bunch of the professor's crimes. The men agreed and set to work. It was already starting to get dark outside. Ji Hoon thought the professor was crazy because there was embezzlement from every project. Suddenly, Jiang Su nervously called everyone to him. The men gathered around Jiang Su. On the computer screen, they saw a news story titled Revenge for Reporting Sexual Harassment to Police. It described that a 47-year-old professor had attempted to murder a student and was arrested. It was definitely Jiang Dongho. Jiang Su noticed that the news was all over the news and social media. It meant that the professor had attacked Yerim with a knife. Jiang Su said it was hard to believe, but it was good that the victim was not injured. Ji Hong was embarrassed. It was good that Yerim was not hurt, but murder. No one expected the professor to be so crazy. Then one of the guys started to worry about what if the professor came after them, what if they tried to testify against him. They were all worried. Ji Hong thought about the fact that he had a daughter and he did not want to end his life like that. The men spent the whole day rummaging through the archives. Suddenly, Ji Hong suggested that they select the files they needed and send them to the police by email. Let them use them if necessary, then the men decided to end the search and go out to eat. At the same time, they decided to drink beer and scold Jiang Dongho. Jiang Su said that he knew that the professor would commit some kind of crime sooner or later. Ji Hoon thought that he would like to take revenge on the professor, but he dug his own grave. He was still angry, but it was good that everything ended well. It was already getting dark outside when Ji Hoon picked up Charin. She asked him, somewhat upset, if Daddy had been drinking, because he smelled like alcohol. The man was embarrassed to ask if he really smelled like that, because he had only had a little bit to drink. Charon started to get angry and asked him not to drink anymore, because alcohol is bad for your health. Ji Hoon agreed. Then she asked him if he had done what he wanted to do. Ji Hoon smiled and was surprised by her question. He wanted to talk to someone about it, but he didn't know if he should tell Charon. Charon started to get angry. She said she would be hurt if her dad didn't tell her. Ji Hong apologized and promised to tell her. They walked down the street. The man asked if Ji Hong remembered that daddy wanted to punish Jang Dong Ho. But this man made a big mistake and now he was arrested by the police. Ji Hong said in embarrassment that everything he wanted to do was unnecessary. The professor had made things worse for himself. He was satisfied with what had happened, but the man was annoyed. Sharon proudly said that she had told her dad that this would happen even if Ji Hong hadn't done anything. The man was surprised and asked if the girl knew about it. Sharon happily threw up her hands and said that bad things always happen to bad people. She told the surprised father not to worry. Sharon would always protect him. Ji Hong thanked her. The man thought that she was being supportive again and it was great that he had Sharon. The girl happily said that she would give her dad a massage. Ji Hong happily replied that in that case they should hurry home. The shining balloons flew around the room. Ji Hong was sleeping soundly in his bed. Kyron noticed that her father's eyes had recovered. She wanted to treat them to about plus two. But she realized that there were other parts of the body as well. The shining book was hovering over Kyron. She couldn't decide whether to treat her tummy or her face. The girl reached for the book. It was impossible to treat everything at the same time, otherwise Daddy's body would not be able to cope. Then Charon happily decided to make Daddy's skin beautiful. She put her shining palms on her husband's face and told his skin to get better. She sat over Ji Hoon and asked his skin to shine so that Daddy would be beautiful, beautiful. Charon clapped her hands and said that was all for today. 
She said good night to her daddy, who was glowing, and went to bed. The next day after the news of Chan Donghou's arrest, the weather was fine outside. Ji Hong was reading the news and hoped that the professor would be jailed for 30 years. The man stretched out in his chair and decided to start looking for research positions. He looked at Charon who was sitting on the bed reading a book. Ji Hong thought that in addition to work, he needed to start teaching the girl, at least to understand what and how to teach her. He taught Charon almost everything from the scientific field. Only art and sports remained. But given the fact that the girl does not want to study with anyone but her dad, Ji Hong opened a search and decided to buy a musical instrument for Charon. Maybe she would be interested in playing. Suddenly, he saw something that would fit the bill. It was a portable piano. Ji Hong decided that it was perfect because it would not disturb him at home and Charon had been interested in the piano last time, so she would like it. The man realized that without him, the girl would not want to learn, so he looked for a video to learn something himself. A few days passed. Ji Hong sat at his instrument and played a melody. Charon was impressed and said that her dad was the best. The man rubbed his forehead and proudly said that he could play such an easy melody with his eyes closed. The girl did not know that he was secretly practicing. Charon enthusiastically said that she wanted to play just like her daddy. The man was glad that she had finally developed an interest in the piano. Ji Hong sat little Charon on a chair and began to explain that each key had a different sound and they started with the white ones and learned the notes. Charon memorized everything carefully. It was as if Ji Hong was explaining how the words of the song would sound in the names of the notes. Charon was happy. She played the easy song that Ji Hong had learned. The man was amazed. He had just taught her the notes and she could play the song. He asked how she was able to play it so well the first time, if she had studied before. Charon happily replied that she was just following her dad's lead and asked if she played well, then he surprisingly started teaching her how to play a song with black keys. The girl happily said that she would repeat it now. And, not surprisingly, she succeeded the first time that Ji Hong looked at her and realized that Charon was not just a genius. He considered her the genius of the century. The man mentioned the Renaissance genius Leonardo da Vinci. He was educated in all fields. Perhaps Charon was just as brilliant. Ji Hong imagined that in a few years Charon would have comprehended all the truths of this world. He imagined Charon calling herself the goddess of truth. The man realized that it would never come to that, no matter how brilliant she was. He looked at the girl playing the piano. Ji Hong knew that the girl's genius was beyond his reach. It was a pity to waste her talents. Charon was happy to do anything if only they could do it together. He imagined the girl making a human sculpture out of sand. There was nothing wrong with her succeeding in sand modeling faster than her peers. Suddenly, his thought was shattered. It was impossible to think about this. Among a population of seven million, such a person is very rare. You can't waste such a talent on digging in the mud. Ji Hong could not let it go. Someone was not happy. Jiang Su repeated Ji Hong's question about what to do with Charon. They were standing in the corridor of the university. Ji Hong replied, isn't it obvious that the loss of a genius like Charon would be a huge loss for humanity? Then Jiang Su asked if Ji Hong hadn't said that he wouldn't force her to do anything she didn't want to do. Ji Hong was surprised. It was true. Then Jiang Su said that the man's words sounded like he was ready to force Charon to do something. He told Ji Hong to leave the girl alone. When she wants to, she will find something to do. Ji Hong was surprised. He hadn't thought about it and thanked his friend for his advice. Jiang Su laughed and said that he was Charon's uncle, so he should be the one to give advice. Ji Hong was outraged, he didn't remember Charon having such a lousy uncle, and especially since the man didn't agree with him. Jiang Su was also outraged, because he was giving advice like an uncle, and Ji Hong was just using it. The man thanked him for the advice, but he was not Jiang Su's uncle. Jiang Su said that being like Ji Hong was bad, otherwise Charon would only learn bad things from him. Ji Hong asked Jiang Su what he had said. 
He quickly said that he was receiving a call, ran away from Ji Hong, and promised to return when he answered it. The man thought that his friend always knew how to ruin everything. However, Jiang Su helped him understand something. Without realizing it, Ji Hong almost started to force Charon to study under the pretext of wasting his talent. He remembered Charon's smiling face. He might be able to raise an incredible genius by teaching her everything, but if it was against her will, she would be miserable. Ji Hong smiled and looked out the window. He remembered Yona's words that what matters most is what Charon thinks. Suddenly, Jiang Su ran up to him and asked if he knew Professor Choi Wusuk. Ji Hong did know him. Jiang Su embarrassedly told him that he had recently talked to him and accidentally blurted out Ji Hong and Ji Jin. Now the professor wanted to meet them. Chang Su asked if his friend was okay with it. Ji Hong was surprised to hear that he wanted to meet with Charon. Jiang Su asked if Ji Hong had signed up for the professor's class. He had, but Jiang Su didn't let him finish. He told him to meet the professor because it would be nice to get to know each other before the semester started. Professor Choi Waiti specialized in neuroscience and was known for his good-naturedness and high intelligence. Ji Hoon had heard that the professor was currently conducting research in the field of artificial intelligence, and the man did not understand why he needed to see him. Ji Hong thought that there was really nothing wrong with meeting him, and Charon would be happy to go with her father. And in principle, the professor was not a bad person, so nothing bad could happen. Ji Hoon invited Jiang Su to go out to eat, he was buying. The man gladly agreed. The day of the meeting with Professor Choi Udak came. There was a shout of joy. It was Charon, who was excited to finally go to the university with her dad. Suddenly she looked back at her dad and asked if Professor Choi Wu Sang had bullied him. Ji Hoon was a little embarrassed. He thought about how he had only taken one of his classes during his university days. He thought that he had tried very hard in class, but the professor had given him only a B+. And when he came to the professor to ask the reason, he angrily replied that this was his maximum grade. At that moment, Ji Hong regretted taking his course. If you think about it, the professor didn't look good even then. Suddenly, Charon asked why her dad wasn't answering her. Ji Hong replied, embarrassed, that he was just thinking about something. He said he couldn't get a good grade from him, but the professor was a good person. Ji Hong, very excited, asked Charon not to worry. He was only thinking about not embarrassing himself in the interview. In the office, there were various statues on the tables. Ji Hong and Charon politely greeted the professor and the girl introduced herself. Choi Wu Hyuk smiled. He had heard from Ji Hong's friends about Charon. The professor called the girl a real beauty. He invited them to the table, Ji Hoon thanked them, and Charon was happy to have cookies. The girl took the cookies and thanked the professor. Choi Woo Hyuk smiled and told Ji Hoon that with a daughter like that, every day must be filled with happiness. The man embarrassedly replied that it was true. Even in difficult moments, just looking at Charon fills him with strength. Then he asked why the professor had invited them. The professor asked if he knew the topic of his research. Ji Hong replied that he was not familiar with the details, but as far as he knew, it had something to do with artificial intelligence. The professor said that this was true, and he believes that the key to creating true artificial intelligence lies in the human brain. Specifically, in the brain of a child. It was as if Ji Hong was struck by lightning. He realized that the professor wanted to use Charon as a model for experiments. The cookies on the plate gradually shrank. The first time Choi Woo Hyuk heard about Charon was from Professor Beg Nahi. She said that she had seen an incredibly brilliant child and decided to consult him about this child's participation in the Olympiad. Ji Hong was surprised. The professor went on to say that he had been supervising the Olympiad for three years. And he has been studying artificial intelligence for almost as long. He was interested in the children who scored the highest score at the Olympiad. But despite their intelligence, they were not in the right age category, so he began to despair. Charon continued to eat the cookies. Just then, the professor brought him Charon's results. He was going to make an appointment right away, 
but as luck would have it, he had trouble with Jang Dong Ho. Ji Hoon smiled. His professor didn't like Jang Dong Ho either. The professor sighed. Not long ago, he had learned about Charon from Jang Su and asked him to extend his invitation. He said that only if Ji Hoon and his daughter didn't mind, he would like Charon to be the subject of his research and asked what they thought about it. The father and daughter were surprised. Ji Hong asked if it was safe. The professor replied that it was safe and that Ji Hong should also participate. In any case, he would not be able to harm the child in the presence of the parents. The professor also suggested that Ji Hong resume his studies at his research center. Ji Hong was surprised. He explained to the professor that his specialty was far from artificial intelligence research and that he would hardly be able to fulfill his duties. The professor was somewhat surprised. He laughed and said that no one could do his job as well as Ji Hong. The professor said that if his memory was correct, they had met in the third year of Ji Hong's tenure. The man said that was indeed the case, and that's when the professor gave him a B plus, which is why Ji Hong thought he had no connection to the professor's specialty. Then Choi Woo Hyuk said that he seemed to have confused Ji Hoon. The professor had never given someone an A. In his opinion, an A is a grade that a student simply cannot get. So he gave Ji Hoon, a student he wanted to grow up to be a B plus. In addition, this grade was supposed to encourage the man to learn science. The professor believed that Ji Hong could become a great man in science. Many people can see the sprouts of a scientist in their student years. Ji Hong's sprouts were strong and green. Then the professor asked Charon if she didn't agree with his words. The girl hugged her dad and said that he was very smart and good at explaining math. The professor smiled and told Ji Hun that he had no idea how much he regretted choosing Chan as his mentor. The man embarrassedly said that he had not chosen Professor Chan out of personal sympathy. Choi Woo Suk heard that Ji Hoon had been through a lot. But he decided to give advice that it was not good to humiliate yourself too much. He thought Ji Hoon was a pretty good student, so he asked him to be more confident. Ji Hong didn't know what to say. With the praise he had heard for the first time since he had continued his master's studies, the weight of suspicion slowly dissolved and disappeared. He remembered all the quarrels with Professor Chan. This man had made Ji Hong doubt his doctorate. He made him think that all professors use students for their own benefit. Ji Hong loved learning. Perhaps under Professor Choi's guidance, he could get tenure and concentrate on research again. Ji Hong thanked the professor and asked him to take care of him in that case. Then the professor also asked him. He did not want to be delayed and suggested starting this week. The professor assured him that Ji Hong would not regret this experience. It was already evening outside. Pink and orange clouds hung over the buildings. When they left, Charon asked her father if they would have to go to university every day. Ji Hong replied that not every day, but often enough, and asked if Charon had changed her mind. But Charon hadn't changed her mind. She liked doing everything with her dad, because the professor said that her dad would also be involved. Suddenly, Ji Hun had a change of heart. He said that he couldn't go with her because of class. Charon was frozen with horror. Suddenly, Ji Hong had a change of heart. He said that because of the fumes, he would not be able to walk with Charon. The girl was numb with terror. She began to say in anxiety that the professor had said she would be with her dad. Ji Hong began to say, with mock sadness, that he was going to tell the professor anyway that it would be difficult for him to participate. Charon began to cry. She did not want to go alone. Suddenly her tearful eyes shone with surprise. Ji Hong said that he was joking, because how could he send her alone? He picked her up in his arms. Charon asked if her dad was lying to calm her down. The man told her not to worry. He would see her through. He asked if she really didn't want to leave her daddy that badly. Charon replied that of course she did. She asked him not to joke like that anymore because she would get offended. Ji Hoon apologized, asked her not to be angry, and said he would buy her something delicious. He carried her in his arms. Charon snorted and said she wanted pizza. The blue sky stretched over the university building. The professor was incredibly happy. 
He knew that Ji Hong and Charon were coming. He was very happy to see them. Ji Hong thanked Choi Wusuk for his hospitality and asked him what Charon should do. The professor was holding a book on higher mathematics. He planned to model artificial intelligence through learning. As the professor had said earlier, Ji Hong had to be there during every process. Charon couldn't contain her joy because her dad would be with her. She breathed out a sigh of relief because she was starting to worry about being alone. Choi Wu Hyuk told her not to worry because her dad would always be there for her. The professor adjusted his glasses and said it was time to start the exam. Charon solved the problems the professor explained that the main purpose of the study was to explore the limits of brain activity during Charon's learning. The woman explained to Charon how to solve the problems. The professor used a high school curriculum as the basis for the intelligence test. Together with him, Charon's learning speed reached incredible heights. Ji Hong looked at his daughter. He had tried so hard to put her off school, but it made no sense when she was picking up everything on the fly. Choi Wu Hyuk walked over to Ji Hoon and asked him if he thought the Charon was incredible as well. If he succeeds in modeling the girl's brain, the age of artificial intelligence will come ten years earlier. The professor seemed to be burning with joy. Charon is the first person who has managed to rekindle his research spirit recently. One meeting in two to three days was not enough. The professor wanted to have them every day. Suddenly, Ji Hoon apologized for interrupting the professor's burning aspirations, but there was no way to see him every day. Choi Woidi was desperate. Ji Hoon explained that he was starting classes next week, and Charon was only willing to go with him. The professor laughed. He understood that the girl loved her dad very much, but he was sure he could convince her. Ji Hoon was embarrassed, and he explained that it was hardly possible. Choi Wu Hyuk didn't understand how it was impossible. There was no such word in his vocabulary. For Charon's sake, the professor was ready to change the entire interior of the laboratories. The professor hung balloons and toys all over his office. Charon thought it was boring. Choi Wu Hyuk didn't understand, because yesterday she had said something completely different. The girl explained that she was not interested in anything without her dad. Charon threw her arms around her father. Ji Hoon decided to warn the professor that he was graduating in June and was planning to get a job as a researcher at a private company. Therefore, the professor could only conduct experiments until then. Choi Wu Hyuk was stunned. He said that these experiments would take at least a year. Ji Hoon replied in embarrassment that, as the professor could see, Charon didn't want to come to the institute without him. The dejected professor told the man that their Neuroinformation Technology Research Center needed researchers. Ji Hong was surprised. This was the first time he had heard about it and asked how long the position had been available. Choi Wote said that it had been available since that very moment and handed Ji Hong a sheet to sign. The man did not expect such a suddenness. Suddenly, Ji Hong looked at the document. It was a placement under Professor Choi Wu Hyuk. Only one signature was needed for Ji Hoon to be accepted. The professor adjusted his glasses and promised to give him a research assistantship for his participation in research. It was a very attractive offer. Ji Hong thanked him for his concern, but his future depended on this decision. He needed to think about it. Choi Wusuk looked at Ji Hoon pleadingly and said that he had agreed to work under him last time, but now he was saying the opposite. The professor looked in Charon's direction and said that it was unlikely that other research centers would look at Ji Hong's circumstances the same way he did. Ji Hong agreed, but there was a place he wanted to go. The professor explained that, of course, the salaries at a university center are not as high as at private research centers. But in exchange, they can give him free time. They will not keep him with Charon for 12 hours a day. Choi Wu Hyuk approached Charon and asked her what she would like more rather to spend more time with her dad or for her dad to earn more money. Of course, she wanted to play with her dad. Her family was rich, so it was no big deal if her dad's salary was low. Ji Hong thought that even participating in research takes no more than three hours a day. Then he is free. But he also had an offer from Hutch, so it was very difficult to make a decision right away. Choi Wu Hyuk told the man that nowhere else in Korea would he be so welcomed. 
but the professor realized from Ji Hoon's face that he had not convinced him. Choi Woo Hyuk adjusted his glasses and asked Ji Hoon not to blame himself because it was the professor's fault that he was not convinced. Ji Hoon was surprised. The professor told Chiron that it was unfortunate that her father had chosen money over time with her. The girl was shocked. She couldn't believe it. Choi Woo Hyuk said that he, as a professor, did not have enough to support Ji Hoon. Chiron asked why her dad didn't want to spend much time with her. Ji Hoon, depressed, could not understand at what point everything had taken a wrong turn. The professor told the man to forget about the proposal and pretend it never happened. Ji Hoon was surprised when the professor took the contract away. Choi Woo Hyuk said that it was a burden for him to open an unplanned vacancy now, and Ji Hoon had lost his only chance to spend free time with his daughter. Chiron was indignant and said that her dad was a bad person. Ji Hoon stopped the professor. Almost crying, the girl said that she was having fun doing experiments with her dad, and he wanted to go somewhere else. Ji Hoon looked at the document and said angrily that he would sign it. Choi Woo Hyuk smiled. He thought it was a very good decision and called Ji Hoon to come over to his place to fill out the form. Chiron was happy. Ji Hoon felt like he was being forced into this. Even though Hutch had just been offered the job and it was not certain that he would be able to accept it. It's not that he wasn't interested in the field of artificial intelligence at all. Ji Hong filled out the form under Charon's watchful eye. The main thing was that he would be able to watch Charon grow up. He thought it was the right choice. That's how Ji Hoon entrusted Professor Choi Wusang with his future. And his experiments continued quietly. Choi Woody offered Charon different ways of learning and situations. He wanted to study and model all the reactions of her brain. A bunch of rose petals flew in the air. Ji Hong wished Charon good luck on the exam. He said that it was okay if she made a mistake and asked her not to worry too much about it. A happy Charon said she would do well because she was his daughter. Finally, it was time for the Olympiad among gifted children that Professor Choi Woody was waiting for. Charon waved to her dad and asked him to promise to have fun with her if she did well in the exams. As usual, it was very sunny outside. Ji Hoon entered the university when he suddenly saw Choi Wusuk. The professor told him to hurry up and go. He asked with a smile if Charon was nervous, because it was very exciting to take an exam with other people for the first time. Ji Hoon smiled and replied that Charon seemed very calm to him. He didn't know who had such nerves. Choi Woo Hyuk remarked that Charon definitely took after her father because he had heard about Ji Hoon's speech to the Hatch Company CEO. Ji Hoon was embarrassed, saying that the professor hadn't been there because he was overwhelmed that day and had spoken out of turn. By the way, the man asked the professor to reconsider the decision about today's lecture with the high school students. Choi Woody replied that he thought Ji Hoon was qualified enough. The man embarrassedly explained that in his current state, he might say something stupid and that would undermine the image of the institute. The professor replied that there is a high probability that thoughtlessly spoken words are what make the most sense. And if you are nervous and don't really know anything, you won't even be able to say these words. The professor asked Ji Hong to think about the report to Hutch. He asked if there were many people who asked questions because they didn't understand the meaning. Ji Hong thought about it. There were none. Choi Woo Hyuk smiled and said that this was proof of the success of his report. If Ji Hoon didn't know how to do them, Jang Su wouldn't have praised him. Ji Hoon thanked him, but his slurred speech was not a good report. Choi Woo Hyuk touched his shoulder and said that he shouldn't say that there was nothing to work on. But you need to move forward and very rarely do you get a good chance for development. That is why the professor asked Ji Hong to give a lecture. He believed that Ji Hong would be a valuable staff member who was worthy of representing the research center. He asked Ji Hong to be more confident. He smiled and understood. He promised to do his best. The professor entrusted Ji Hong to give a lecture on artificial intelligence at a local school. He put something in his mouth and convinced himself that he could do it. The woman on stage asked to greet the professor with applause. Ji Hong walked on stage in embarrassment. There were many more people than he had expected. And besides, 
The children who applauded seemed to have sucked out his soul. If Ji Hoon let them be sad even a little bit, they would fall asleep. The man smiled confidently. He had prepared a trump card that would not leave anyone indifferent. Not a single applicant. Ji Hong greeted the students and introduced himself. He said he worked at a research center for neuroinformation technology. He asked who knew where their institute was located. The students did not seem interested. They did not understand where Ji Hong worked and would rather sleep. The name was new to the students. But Ji Hoon held up his hand and said that their center was located in the most prestigious place in their country, the Korean University. The students began to whisper. It was the first time they had heard the name, so at first they thought it was some small university. Ji Hong continued his lecture. He said that their research center had prepared a lecture that would tell them a way to improve their grades. The students began to discuss Ji Hong's words even more. They realized that with this knowledge they would be able to take the top places in the ranking. Ji Hong expected this. The best bait for students is entrance exams and grades. He managed to attract attention, so it was time to start the lecture. Ji Hong explained to the interested students that the brain is responsible for learning. Their center studies the connection between the brain and the computer. The man explained that the goal of artificial intelligence research is to create a mechanism that can think like a human, overcoming basic algorithms. It will be able to analyze and predict academic progress just like a teacher. After a while, the entire room sat with interested eyes. Ji Hong thought that he had built the lecture on the connection between the purpose of the research and its results with academic achievement. In this way, he had achieved the absolute attention of the students. Then Ji Hong decided to end the lecture with one of Chang Su's roasts. He said that he was finishing his master's degree and preparing to write his doctorate. He began to explain the difference in a joke and compared the master's and doctoral degrees to Kachari and Mujinji. In any case, you will have to languish in research. The students didn't get the joke. They thought it was a kind of humor from the students of Korea University. Ji Hong was almost crying. He blamed himself for trusting Jang Su. He said he was waiting for questions from anyone who was interested in the research center. After a few questions, Ji Hong finished his lecture. After a while, the woman who had introduced Ji Hong at the beginning thanked him for today's lecture. The man replied that there was no need to thank him and that he was happy that the children had listened attentively. The woman said that it was the first time she had ever seen them behave so well during a lecture. No one was napping, they asked a lot of questions, and it was all thanks to an interesting lecture. A woman remarked on the last joke and laughed softly. A very embarrassed Ji Hong was also sorry for her. The woman thanked Ji Hong again for the great lecture and said that they would love to have the opportunity to meet him again. Ji Hong returned to the university. He was happy because it was the first time he had given such a successful lecture. Presentations always depressed him, but success was very uplifting. He thought about accepting if he was asked to give another lecture. Ji Hong was happy that everything had worked out. He was walking down the hall and remembered Charon's exam. He had heard that the questions were really difficult this time. He was worried that she might cry because of the results, because she was still young and it was her first exam, which made it even more exciting. Ji Hong opened the door. He told Charon that he was back and asked her how she had passed the exam, but suddenly he was stunned. Charon sat next to the upset professor with her head in her lap. Ji Hong was frightened. He ran up to her and asked the professor what had happened if Charon had failed the exam. Choi Woo Hyuk scratched the back of his head and replied that the questions were harder this time, but he didn't expect it to be that hard. He said that Charon had handed in her exam paper when not even an hour had passed and had been sitting here all this time. Charon looked up, crying, and turned to her father. He said that Charon had handed in her exam paper when not even an hour had passed and she had been sitting here all this time. Charon looked up with tearful eyes and turned to her father. The man was surprised at how quickly the girl passed the exam. Choi Woo Hyuk explained that she had completed the paper in 45 minutes and that he had personally checked it. Charon covered her eyes with her hands. 
Ji Hoon wondered how hard the assignments were that the girl handed in the paper in 45 minutes. Was it really that difficult for a child who was taking an exam for the first time? Ji Hong hugged Charon and asked her if she was sad because of the difficult exam. He took pity on her. The girl purred and replied that it was honestly very difficult. Charon was worried that the other children would be upset because she had made up her mind so early. Ji Hong looked at her in surprise. He asked her what it meant. Charon smiled happily. Choi Wu Hyuk smiled and replied that she really did leave the office having completed the work so quickly. Charon smiled and said that the problems were easy. She solved them in 30 minutes and spent the remaining 15 minutes checking. She smiled at her dad and asked him to praise her. Ji Hong was embarrassed when he heard how fast Charon had done the work. He patted his daughter's head. Choi Wu Hyuk handed Ji Hong the letter with Charon's decisions so he could see for himself. The man was surprised. The problems were designed for at least three to four years of university. All of Charon's answers were correct. Choi Wu Hyuk smiled and noted that even the solutions were perfect. Ji Hoon finally understood everything. They decided to play a prank on him. Charon replied that last time, Daddy played a joke on her, and this time, she played a joke on Daddy. Ji Hong scratched the back of his head. He didn't even realize it at first and let himself be tricked. Choi Wu Hyuk said that Charon's abilities were beyond their expectations. He asked if Ji Hoon knew the 20th century geniuses Von Neumann and William Seedes. The man answered embarrassedly that he was familiar with these names. Newman, at the age of five, divided eight-digit numbers in his mind, and Sadie's, at the age of eight, knew math better than his father, who was a Harvard professor. Charon had abilities that exceeded these two geniuses. If she was properly educated, the girl could change world history. It was impressive for Ji Hoon to hear this. Choi Wusuk patted him on the shoulder and asked him to raise Charon well and to find her ma'am as soon as possible. Ji Hoon replied in despair that it was not that easy. Choi Wu Hyuk looked at him intently. The professor said that the man had been looking better lately and asked if he had started taking care of his skin. Ji Hoon said he hadn't done anything. Choi Wu Hyun then asked why his skin had improved. The professor honestly said that he had overheard the students talking. They were saying that Ji Hoon had started taking care of himself because he was going to get married. The man was stunned by what he heard. Ji Hoon asked about the protection of his privacy. Choi Wu Hyuk said that he didn't think the research center had that kind of protection. Rumors spread instantly if they have nothing to do with research. Ji Hoon was confused and asked what marriage had to do with it. The professor asked if he was really watching himself because of such an event. The man replied that there was no woman who would agree. The professor was surprised. He couldn't understand why Ji Hoon was looking better. Charon listened to them attentively and with interest. She said it was all thanks to the massage she gives her dad every night. She promised to make him very handsome. Choi Wu Hyuk was surprised. He said that if he were Ji Hoon, he would have rejuvenated 20 years by looking at Charon. Ji Hoon realized that the professor did not believe him. Choi Wu Hyuk asked him not to do anything that would affect Charon's state of mind. He said that Ji Hoon was fine without a woman. The professor smiled and told the man that he was asking for his skin because of the girl. He didn't care about Ji Hong's personal life, but if it was bad for Chiron, he would talk differently. Ji Hong said that he should find something to do. The professor told him that there was nothing like that in the center and that he had to find something himself. The man was almost crying, as Ji Hong expected, he was just a trailer trash Chiron. Ji Hong thought that the rumors about his wedding would quickly disappear, but he was wrong. The man was looking at something very carefully and thinking. He was looking at Ji Hong and it was bothering him a little bit. The man asked what Ji Hong was doing with his skin and asked if he was really going to get married. Ji Hong was outraged. He would not leave Charon for some woman. He just had no reason to be stressed lately. The man noticed that Ji Hoon had decided to become a researcher. And Professor Choi Woiti has prepared a place for him. Now he doesn't have to worry about grades. He envied him. 
Ji Hong replied that there was nothing to be jealous of because he also had doubts. The man said that Ji Hong's only concern was attendance. If he doesn't skip, then he has the place in his pocket. Ji Hong replied that life doesn't end with being a researcher and that he needs to think about what to do later. The research center offered him good conditions, and he joined it, but he needs to think about what to do next. It is still much more profitable to participate in private research. The man told Ji Hong that there was nowhere else to resolve the issue with the army, and he was jealous that Ji Hong could afford such thoughts. Nevertheless, Ji Hong struggles to find something to do after the service were real. After all, the artificial intelligence research at Professor Choi Wadi Center did not match his specialty. He wondered if he had made the right choice in choosing to work there. From the very beginning, Ji Hong wanted to study a little under the professor's guidance before graduation. The man went outside. Still, the best solution was to get a job in a large company. But he had heard that lately they had been resigning employees very quickly. Ji Hong sighed. He had never worked. And maybe he should have stayed in the center. He thought he had already made up his mind, but the thoughts continued to torment him. Suddenly, someone spoke to him. It was the manager, Yin. He said he was glad to see Ji Hong and asked how he was doing. Ji Hong greeted him in surprise and asked why Yang was here. He replied that he was here for work. Ji Hong asked if it was related to some new project. Mr. Yang smiled and replied that it was partly because of that. He had a conversation with Ji Hong and offered to have a cup of coffee. Ji Hong was surprised. Yang smiled and said that he wanted to call Ji Hong, but they were lucky enough to meet. He said that the coffee was on him and asked if the man had a minute to spare. Ji Hong realized that the only thing they could talk about was the research assistant position. He thought that Yang wanted to offer it to him again. He thought that if it was really about that, now was the time to make a decision. Ji Hong agreed to the conversation. The men entered a coffee shop. They were sitting at a table discussing Hatch's plans to concentrate on manufacturing machinery in a fourth facility. Yang asked if Ji Hong had thought about his proposal. The man was surprised. Yang's supervisor reminded him that they would be accepting applications to join their research study at the end of April. Ji Hong was nervous. He thought it was very strange, because Yang sounded serious. Almost three months had passed since then. Yang remembered what had happened so long ago. He probably had a good opinion of Ji Hong. The man thought that it was much more profitable for him to work for the Hatch Corporation. Besides, he could develop his profession there. But, he remembered Cherny. She would have been happy with any choice he made, as long as he stayed close to her. Ji Hong thanked Yang's boss for the offer, but he had already found something else to do. Yang was surprised and asked if other companies were also accepting applications. Ji Hong embarrassedly explained that he had originally planned to work for Hatch Corporation, but decided to get a doctorate at his professor's institute. He planned to get professional training there. Yang was a little upset. He wanted to work with Ji Hong. But still, he congratulated the man on a very wonderful opportunity. Ji Hong thanked him. He thought it was a pity, of course, but as soon as he made the decision, it was like a weight was lifted from his soul. He thought it was the end of his relationship with the corporation. Ji Hong thanked Nu for the coffee, and Nu wished Ji Hong a safe journey. At least Ji Hong thought that was the end of it. Manager Yang looked at Ji Hong in surprise and asked what he was doing here. The man embarrassedly explained that the professor he was talking about yesterday was Director Choi Wu Sang. Then he asked what brought Yang here. He explained that he was in the process of signing a cooperation agreement with this company. They were going to be the first to make a real assistant with artificial intelligence. Ji Hong thought it was amazing that they kept seeing each other. Then Yang remarked that maybe Ji Hong was destined to work with them. There was no way to be sure that he wouldn't be part of the corporation in a few years. Ji Hong was embarrassed to hear that. He wondered if Yang was really offering to be their potential scout. He imagined himself as one of the employees of the best corporation in Korea. Just the thought of it was exciting. It was a beautiful dream. 
Ji Hong thought that he shouldn't think too far ahead, he would be very disappointed if he was just imagining things. In any case, he continued his ties with the Hatch Corporation. The flowers were already in full bloom. The end of April was approaching. And after it, summer. The people around us were looking at something in wonder. Sharon asked her father if he was having a hard time. He was carrying a rather big girl in his arms and said that it was not hard for him at all. He liked to carry her and hug her like that. They would get lost around the campus, attracting unwanted attention. That's why Ji Hoon didn't carry her here, not because he didn't care about his daughter. He was not comfortable with it. The weather was getting warmer and more and more students came out to look at Charon. It was nothing more than the struggle of a depressed father for the safety of his child. Carrying Charon in his arms meant not letting the students surround her. The man leaned tiredly against the wall. He hoped no one would come here. Charon thought it was quite difficult for her dad. Ji Wong was hurt by the fact that he was finding it difficult to carry his daughter in his arms, even though she had grown up a little. Perhaps it was a sign that he needed to take up spotting. Suddenly, Jang Su ran up to them. He happily told Charon that her uncle was here and offered her a hug. The girl stopped him and told him that her daddy told her that if she came close to Chang Su, she would get the disease stupid. Chang Su was surprised. He had no idea what this meant because he was a university student after all. Ji Hoon patted Jang Il's head and praised him. He told his friend to just think about his behavior. Jang Su got angry and asked him to introduce him to Charon normally. Ji Hoon indignantly agreed. The man told his daughter that Jang Su was a talented student at the best university in Korea and that he was a genius and wanted to teach the girl many things. Charon smiled and asked the surprised man what exactly he wanted to teach her. Jang Su called Ji Hoon very rude. He would also have to have a child to say something like that to Ji Hoon. Suddenly, Ji Hoon said that In Jiang and her friends were walking behind Jang Su. The man looked back in surprise. The woman asked how long they had been waiting. Jang Su smiled and said that they had just arrived, but the woman rushed to the surprised Charon and said that she was getting prettier and prettier with every meeting. She hugged the girl, who didn't really like it. Yu and Jiang was a friend from the student club. Ji Hoon didn't know much about women's clothing, so he needed her help in choosing clothes for Charon. Jang Su told Eun Young to stop bothering the girl and introduce her friends because they were embarrassed to be standing there. She introduced the women who were supposed to help with the shopping. The short woman with blonde hair was Huang Su Young, and the tall, black-haired woman was Kim Tae Young. Yu and Jang introduced Ji Hoon as a man who had suddenly become a father and Jang Su as a man who was still a child. Jang Su was outraged. He asked what kind of impression people would have after that. Yu In Yong indignantly replied that she had just told the truth. Then she introduced the surprised Charon, about whom the woman had talked so much. The women were amazed at the girl's beauty. Charon embarrassedly hugged her father, who covered her with his arm. Jang Su thought it was strange for him to feel unwanted. Ji Hoon thanked the women for agreeing to help. Sharon needed to update her wardrobe and had no idea where to go. Yu and Jong replied that when it came to Sharon, she couldn't refuse to help. It was her duty as the president of Sharon's fan club. Ji Hoon was surprised. Yu and Yung said that it wasn't official yet, but since he was her father, she would tell him. She pulled out a strange plastic stick that looked like a microphone, but with half an orange on top. The woman began to say that in order to be useful and to make the world filled with love and peace, every home should have a child like Charon. Her friends got the same strange accessories and Yu and Jong proclaimed the official name of Charon's fan club as Vitamin C. Ji Hoon was surprised and embarrassed. Yu and Joe began to say that in order to do good and make the world filled with love and peace, every home should have a child like Charon. Her friends got the same strange supplies, and Yu and Joe proclaimed the official name of Charon's fan club as Vitamin C. Ji Hoon was surprised and embarrassed. He asked if she was joking about it. Yu and Joe replied with a serious expression that it was serious and that there were a lot of fan clubs in the world. She said that even the flying pasta monster has won, and how much worse is Charon? 
She thought that Ji Hoon thought that the girl didn't deserve it. Ji Hoon wanted to say something, but Yu and Joe interrupted him. She held the somewhat indignant Charon by the shoulders and said that it was no surprise that people admired her and that Charon's fandom would soon spread across the planet. Ji Hoon was embarrassed. He didn't know at what point he should have convinced the woman. Now was the time, but Yu and Joe spoke so seriously about it that he was speechless. Yu and Joe said that her friends were the first official members of the fan club and these amazing girls would help with the shopping today. The women continued to be touched by Charon's appearance and Ji Hoon did not understand if this was normal at all. Finally, they reached the store. Chansu asked if the women would have time after shopping because they could order chicken and drink a glass of beer. The women thought it was too much. Yuen Jo pulled her husband's collar and asked him to mind his manners at least a little bit. She was indignant at Jang Su and told him that she was ashamed to study at the same university with him. Her friends were not interested in him and the woman told him to stop hitting on her. Jang Su was embarrassed because he hadn't done anything wrong. Yuen Jo whispered to him that if he behaved well, she would introduce him to her other friends. Jang Su's eyes lit up when he heard that. He happily jumped to the others, and the woman thought she shouldn't have invited him. But without Jang Su, she wouldn't have been able to meet Ji Hoon. Ji Hoon is the only guy in the company, and he will try to leave as soon as possible. Yu and Joe found a nice shop and invited everyone else to go. Huang Su Young picked up a dress and said that it would look perfect on Charon. Kim Tae Young picked up a slightly different dress, which she thought was simple but beautiful. Yu and Joe smiled and said to take everything to try on everything. The women began to choose a huge number of clothes. Ji Hong was embarrassed to think that they had just started and he was already tired. Charon began to try on everything they had chosen for her. First, she stood in a light light dress that Huang Su Young had chosen and the woman thought it was very cute. Then she put on a knitted vest chosen by Kim Tae Young who thought it was comfortable and pretty. Then Charon tried on a dress chosen by Yu and Joe. She looked like an aristocrat from a palace with a small hat. Ji Hong was amazed that everything looked incredible on his daughter. Jang Su said that it spelled their Charon. The women looked at the girl. Kim Tae Young asked if there were too many colors. Yu and Joe replied that the girl needed such things. They couldn't decide which outfit was best for her. Yu and Joe asked the girl what she liked best. Charon thought about it and replied that she liked everything. The women began to argue. Ji Hoon thought that he wanted to go home. The women decided to choose the outfit Su Young suggested. The man was happy that they had finally decided and he could go home. Then Jang Su suggested going to another store. He said that maybe they could find an outfit that each of them would like. Ji Hoon and Charon were embarrassed. The women agreed with Jang Su's suggestion. Ji Hoon did not understand how his friend could let this horror continue, also, he could spend more time with the girls. Charon turned to her dad and asked if they would be done with the choices today. Ji Hoon hoped so. The women were delighted. Even the old style dress looked great on Charon. Anjo thought that she should buy all the outfits she had chosen. Her friends agreed with her. Ji Hong smiled and said he would pay for everything. He had no idea how much everything cost, but he was ready to do anything to get this over with. The man went to the cash register, but suddenly In Joe handed the saleswoman her card. The surprised man asked what she was doing. The woman explained that as the president of the Charon fan club, she had to pay for her first shopping spree. The man said that she would spend all the money on it and he would gladly accept her offer, but he would rather pay for it himself. Unjo told him not to worry, because she had earned enough money in 10 years to be able to afford such purchases. Then Jang Su said that he would pay for the dinner, because most of all, fans dream of having dinner with their favorite. Unjo clapped her hands with joy. Ji Hoon turned to Charon in embarrassment and asked if she wanted to go out to dinner with his friends. The girl happily replied that she would go anywhere with her daddy. Then the man promised to buy her some goodies. He felt as if he had fallen into a trap, but he still had to repay the help. The group went to a coffee shop. Enjo thought it was a big mistake to invite Jang Su along. Ji Hoon didn't understand why he had to be so humiliated. 
Chiren was embarrassed to ask why Jiang Su's uncle was acting so strangely. Jiang Su was approaching the embarrassed and indignant De Young. He really thought it would work. The woman turned to him. She said that his words were completely boring. This hit Chan Su right in the heart. He was embarrassed and asked if things were really that bad. Young replied that even her old father would not have said such a thing. Suddenly, Su Young looked at something in surprise. She told Ji Hoon that ever since they met, she had been thinking about how clear his skin was. The man thanked her embarrassedly. Enjo said that he looked much better now than before. Charon smiled. Ji Hoon asked her not to say that, because sometimes people say stupid things about him getting married. Young replied that they probably say that because he's well-groomed and attractive. Jang Su looked at her in disappointment. She added that she thought Ji Hoon was a model. Su Young added that now she understood why Charon was so beautiful. The man was embarrassed and said that it was the first time he had ever been complimented like that. Jang Su looked at his friend and thought it was too much. After all, they had rejected him, calling his joke stupid, but as soon as Ji Hong opens his mouth, women smile, he also wanted to be popular with the ladies. After that day, Jang Su thought seriously about his image. The men were at the university. Jiang Su said that Ji Hong should remember the day they went shopping. The day when everyone didn't like him. Ji Hong pretended not to understand. Ji Hong said that he was embarrassed by his friend's clumsiness and asked him to tell the truth. Chan Su was upset. Ji Hong asked him not to despair and that the next time they met, he would tell him that his friend was just not good with women. Jiang Su clenched his fist angrily. He had been worrying about this for several days. Finally, he realized that looks are important. So he told Ji Hoon that he would start playing sports with him. The man was embarrassed. He didn't understand who said this to Jiang Su. He refused, because if Ji Hoon trained, there would be no one to look after Charon. Jiang Su began to say that he couldn't do it alone and begged his friend to save him. Ji Hoon started running away from his friend and said how dare he make such a cute face and said that there was no way he would help. Jiang Su ran after him and asked him to help. Ji Hoon thought that Jiang Su would calm down after he refused, but he kept begging him throughout May. Jiang Su brought Ji Hong a box of cookies and said that he must be hungry. He said they were sweets from the bottom of his heart. Ji Hoon was shocked. He asked Jiang Su why he hadn't stopped, since it had been weeks. It was a waste of time and he always leaves with nothing anyway. Jiang Su looked at his friend with pleading eyes and said that this was the reason why he could have already agreed. Ji Hoon indignantly replied that he had said many times that he couldn't because of Charon. Jiang Su thought about it. He asked his friend if he had forgotten everything. Chang Su shed a tear. He reminded him that Ji Hoon couldn't eat properly because of his work and studies, and he always brought everything he needed. Jiang Su dramatically asked why Ji Hoon was treating him like this now. Ji Hoon thought that when Jiang Su said that, he wanted to return the favor, but Charon came first. Suddenly, someone advised the men to find another way. They turned around in surprise. It was a professor. He said that while he was studying with Charon, the boys could go to the gym. Ji Hoon asked if the professor was sure about this. Choi Wu Hyuk dramatically replied that Jiang Su had always looked out for his friend, and how could he ignore that fact now? Jiang Su told Choi Wusuk that he was the most attentive professor. Ji Hoon was embarrassed to thank him for his concern. Then the man asked that Jiang Su promise that if he ever started whining, Ji Hoon would not study with him. Jiang Su confidently told his friend not to worry, because he had no concept of giving up. And so, thanks to the professor, Ji Hong and Jiang Su were able to train together. A week later, Chang Su said he couldn't do it anymore. Ji Hoon asked if his friend had forgotten his promise and said that he shouldn't give up so easily. Tired, Chang Su began to say that he had never held anything heavier than a spoon before and Ji Hoon was being too hard on him now. The man began to tell his friend to stop fooling around because it was an easy exercise even for him. Jiang Su was outraged. He grabbed Ji Hoon and started to say that he must have drunk some kind of energy drink that gave him so much strength. Ji Hoon asked him not to talk nonsense. 
He said that there was no point in him hiding anything, because they were training the same way. Charon added indignantly that her dad was not a liar. Jiang Su was embarrassed. He didn't understand why he was so tired. Ji Hoon smiled and said that he would pick up his friend at the same time tomorrow. Then he thought about it. Ji Hong hadn't practiced for a long time, and he didn't understand why he felt so easy. At the time, he thought he was among the 0.04% of sports geniuses. But it was not so. The reason Ji Hong adapted to the sport so easily was Charon. Once again, there was a glow in the room. Charon wanted her daddy to be healthy. The girl sat next to Ji Hong, who was sleeping. She asked that her daddy not be tired anymore and told the light to make him stronger. Charon wiped her forehead and said that the restoration magic should work. She wanted to test it today. She thought she should do the face first and then the weight loss, but daddy had already lost quite a bit during the training. Nevertheless, there were still some imperfections. A shining magic book floated above the smiling girl. Now she could move on to the next step. Charon was choosing among the idols looks the facial features for her daddy. She happily assured herself that she could do it. She touched her daddy's nose. She wanted to make it even more beautiful. The girl was embarrassed. She could not believe what she was seeing. Her magic was so strong that Ji Hong's face literally shone. She really wanted to see how much more handsome her daddy would become. Charon hugged him and hoped he would dream about her. Three weeks after the start of the training, the two men met again at the university. Ji Hong was embarrassed to say that it was impossible because they were doing the same exercises. He didn't understand how Ji Hong had gotten so much better looking. The man blushed a little. He himself gradually began to realize that he had become even more handsome. People say that losing weight is better than plastic surgery. Ji Hong has changed a lot since losing weight. Even in his school days, when he was thin, no one praised his appearance as much as they do now. Jiang Su tugged on his friend again and tried to find out how it happened if they were doing the same workout. Ji Hoon didn't know either. Their friend started saying that life was unfair and that Ji Hoon had always been handsome, they just didn't notice it. Jiang Su was hurt by this truth. Professor Choi Woidi came back with Charon and asked why there was such a crowd outside the lab. The men replied that they were just discussing Ji Hoon's beauty secret. Choi Woo Hyuk laughed and said that it was an interesting topic and that he also admired Ji Hoon's looks. The man thanked him in embarrassment. The professor then asked if Ji Hoon would like to be the face of their lab. The man was embarrassed and very surprised. Choi Woo Hyuk smiled and said that from now on, Ji Hoon would represent them everywhere. The man asked in confusion why they were talking about this at all. The professor looked at him closely and asked him what activates in the brain when we see something beautiful. Ji Hong thought about it and answered that the adjacent nucleus. The professor then asked what would happen if it was activated during a lecture. The man replied that everyone would become more interested and have more fun, as if they were at a party. Choi Wu Hyuk excitedly told Ji Hong to think about what it would feel like to be at a party during a lecture and how well it would work. Ji Hoon thought it sounded absurd, but incredible. Although no matter how much he thought, he had little faith in the effectiveness of this method. Ji Hong did not understand what had happened to his appearance. Charon stood behind him and smiled. She was happy because everything was going according to her plan. Under Charon's guidance, Ji Hong was getting more and more handsome every day. The weather was clear outside. Two pairs of men's feet stood side by side. Ji Hoon told his friend that he was wrong, and Jiang Su assured him that he had grown. He noticed that they used to be the same height, and now Ji Hong was taller. The man could not understand how this was possible. Jiang Su asked if it was the training. Ji Hong was also surprised. A girl stood behind them. She said in embarrassment that she had been watching them and asked Ji Hoon for his number. The men were surprised. Ji Hong apologized in embarrassment and said that he already had a child. The girl was a little upset. The man said that this was not a reason to refuse, but the truth. Jiang Su asked if she hadn't heard of Charon, his daughter. 
The girl apologized in embarrassment, and Ji Hoon said that it was okay and there was no need to apologize. The girl left, and Jang Su said that he should probably have an operation. Ji Hoon said that his friend shouldn't talk nonsense and suggested that he finish the reports because he still had to go to Charon. Jang Su said that this was too much and he would definitely run away somewhere and Ji Hoon would work alone. The man replied that he would only make Charon angry. Jang Su replied indignantly that his soul was wounded and he didn't think that Charon and her anger. Suddenly, a joyful little girl ran up to them and said that she missed her daddy very much. Ji Hoon replied that he missed her too and asked her if she had done her homework. Charon ran to her dad and said that she had done it. She asked if Ji Hoon had finished his reports and if they could go out this weekend. The man replied that Uncle Jang Su had promised to help, but now he said he was going to run away. Charon was surprised by this news. She turned to Jang Su and asked him, almost crying, if he was really going to run away. The man replied that he didn't even know because he was angry with her father. Charon said with pleading eyes that she was looking forward to this weekend, and if he didn't help, then. Chang Su thought about it. He smiled and agreed to help if they had dinner together as planned. Charon was happy. Ji Hun said that he knew Jang Su would not be able to resist. They sat down at the table and Ji Hun asked him to concentrate so that he could finish quickly. Jang Su agreed. Suddenly, the man was surprised when he looked at the papers. It was much more complicated than he thought. It was going to take longer than he had planned. Jang Su smiled and said that the task was not difficult and in his opinion, there was enough work for 30 minutes. Ji Hoon embarrassedly told him not to be a jerk. Jang Su offered to bet. Whoever finishes last pays for dinner. Ji Hoon agreed. Charon wished her dad luck and said she would be rooting for him. Ji Hong thanked his daughter for her support. The girl asked her father to become even smarter, and the man replied that she had given him even more strength. Chang Su felt defeated, even though they hadn't even started yet. Chang Su felt like he was burning with rage. He could lose in anything, but certainly not in intelligence. After a while, Ji Hoon asked how long Jang Su would be writing. Charon said she was hungry. Outraged, Jang Su thought that Ji Hoon was cheating because it was impossible to solve everything so quickly. Ji Hoon told him to stop looking for a trick and finish quickly because Charon was hungry. Jang Su asked him to wait a little longer. He finally finished and said desperately that he shouldn't have argued. Ji Hoon smiled. He said that he would pay for the dinner himself and they would pretend that there was no agreement. Jang Su beamed with happiness. Ji Hoon asked him to be more modest. Suddenly, Charon turned to her dad in embarrassment. She asked Daddy to have dinner at home because she wanted Daddy to cook something for her. Ji Hoon replied that it was true that sometimes they only ate store-bought food. But what if they had already promised Uncle Jang Su to have dinner together? So he suggested that Charon cook a lot of goodies this weekend. The girl was excited and asked her dad to promise her that it would really happen. And Ji Hong promised. Charon ran forward happily and said to hurry up because everyone was already hungry. Charon enjoyed her dinner and received her promise. Ji Hoon was surprised at how generous the restaurant owner was because she always gave them a free extra. Jang Su confidently replied that it was because of him because he comes here often and the owner knows him. The owner turned to her husband and said that the girl was eating very nicely. The man replied that he wanted to watch this forever. Charon ate happily. It was very tasty. Chansu did not even realize that the restaurant owners brought them free food just because Charon was eating so nicely. The morning of the day off, which Charon had been waiting for, came. She opened her eyes. Her dad was still sleeping, so she started to wake him up because the sun was already up. Ji Hong didn't want to wake up because it was still early in the morning. Through his slightly open eyes, he saw Charon blurrily. The girl said that if her daddy didn't get up, she would paint his face. Ji Hong suddenly woke up. He reached out to the surprised girl and objected. Ji Hong pressed Charon to the bed and said that his strong hug would prevent her from doing it and he could sleep a little longer. 
The girl indignantly began to say that her daddy should stop spoiling her and get up because he promised to cook her something delicious. Ji Hong replied that it would be right away. The man opened the food cupboard and took out some canned tuna. Suddenly he was surprised. The cabinet was definitely taller. Had he really grown that much? Ji Hong sliced carrots and thought. He stopped growing in the third grade of middle school. He decided to go for a physical examination and find out. The man returned to Chiron and said that he had everything ready. The girl happily peeked out from under the covers. He happily handed her the tuna rice balls. Chiron was happy. Ji Hong watched her eat and asked how she liked it. Chiron replied that it was delicious. She happily thanked her daddy for keeping his promise and said that this one would be the best. Ji Hong smiled. He was glad that Charon liked everything. Then he suggested that the girl have a good time tonight. Father and daughter came to the amusement park. It was a wonderful walk under the May sky. Everyone was dressed very nicely, and everyone was looking at something in amazement. Everyone was captivated by the beauty of Ji Hong and Charon. Yet they stood out from the crowd. Charon thought that Daddy was even more handsome and that it was good that the massage was helping. Of course, she wanted to say that it was her magic, but it was too early. Ji Hong asked if the girl wanted to go on an amusement ride. Charon was surprised. Then she said that there was one. The girl pulled her surprised father's hand and said she would show him. She came back to the axe ride again and said that last time they hadn't been able to ride it. But now it was taller and they should do it. Ji Hong was not so sure. The man looked at the ride and hoped they wouldn't die on it because safety comes first. Then he pulled himself together and thought that he couldn't be afraid in front of his daughter. And then he doubted again because they could have died. But in the end, he agreed. Ji Hong smiled and told Charon that she was as brave as her daddy. The girl was happy and said that her daddy was the best. They went on the ride. Charon was having a lot of fun, and Ji Hong was almost dying of fear. When they got off, the man thought he was going to throw up. Charon was looking at the map of the amusement park. She happily showed her dad the brochure and said she wanted to ride everything. Ji Hong didn't understand why children were being advertised such dangerous rides. The girl looked at her father, and she suspected that he was scared. The man embarrassedly replied that he was not and suggested that they move on. He thought he was brave, but he felt quite differently. His life was definitely in danger. The roller coaster was next. Ji Hong was mentally begging to be saved. On every loop he asked for it. Charon, unlike her frightened father, was having a lot of fun. Ji Hong's legs were shaking with terror. He wanted to go home. Charon said that it seemed like they had ridden all the rides. She happily asked her dad to go on the rides that she was not allowed to go on next year because she would be older by then and they could go on them. Ji Hong mentally disagreed with this. Suddenly, a woman approached them and asked if Charon was Ji Hong's daughter. The man replied that he was and asked what happened. The woman said that she was the scriptwriter of the series Love Poems, Farewell Songs. She said they would look great in it. Ji Hong was embarrassed, saying that they were not actors and how could they do that. The woman replied that the director wanted to add naturalness. It was nothing complicated, they just needed to ride the ride with their daughter. Ji Hong asked if Charon wanted to do this and said that it should be fun and she might be on TV. The girl was surprised. She happily replied that she wanted to be on TV, just like the idols, and she wanted to be a part of it. There was a film crew near the carousel. People in the crowd were talking about how they were about to be filmed in the series Love Poems, Farewell Songs. Ji Hong was riding a horse with Charon and thought he hardly ever watches TV, so he had no idea what they were talking about. But it seems to be a pretty popular show. Charon turned to her dad and said that the woman sitting in front of them was very beautiful. The man replied that she seemed to be the main character. He thought that they would definitely be featured because they were sitting right behind this woman. This thought made him nervous. Someone from the film crew asked everyone to smile. To smile more naturally. Everyone on the carousel smiled. 
Ji Hoon asked Charon, embarrassed, if he looked natural enough. The girl said that he looked just fine. The shooting began. The carousel kept spinning. The director thought it turned out better than he expected. He was worried because he had to shoot an emotional scene in a public place, but the main character did a great job. Suddenly, he noticed some of the extras. He thought they looked gorgeous and very natural. He thought of using this scene as an advertisement. The director looked at Ji Hoon and thought that he was so handsome that he could be confused with one of the main characters. And the girl who was with him was the best actress on the set. It was the perfect shot, just as he had intended. The director thought about it. He imagined receiving the award for best scene of the year. Suddenly, a man told the dreamy director that the main character was not in the shot at all. He embarrassedly replied that he would have to reshoot. His assistant was upset because they were going to finish early. Ji Hoon and Charon occupied the director's thoughts, so the shooting was delayed. The main character was crying dramatically. The shooting ended and the director praised everyone. The fans shouted to Park Yumi, the main character, that she was the best and they loved her. Ji Hoon was filming Charon from the carousel and asked her if she had a good time. The girl replied that she really liked it. Suddenly, they were back in the spotlight and everyone thought that Charon was a new actress because she was in a movie with Park Yumi. Ji Hoon thought about how Charon always attracted a lot of attention. He thought his daughter really looked like a star. The female scriptwriter asked them to wait. The man was surprised and asked what was wrong. She handed them an envelope and said that they had forgotten to pick up the money for the shoot. Ji Hong was surprised. He said that he hadn't even thought about it and maybe he shouldn't accept it. The woman replied that of course he should because they had taken up his and his daughter's time. She happily asked to see their next episode because they should see how great they looked on camera. Ji Hong gave Charon an envelope and told her that this was her first paycheck. The girl was very happy about it. The man asked her what she wanted to do with the money, maybe buy something tasty or a new book. The girl was surprised. She thought about it. Charon happily replied that she wanted to put it in her bank account or buy stocks. Ji Hong was stunned by what he heard. He asked if the girl even understood what it was. Charon, looking very smart, replied that shares are units that create capital in a joint stock company. Ji Hong mentioned that his daughter was a genius and was already in high school at the age of seven. But stocks seemed too risky to him. Even the brilliant scientist Newton became bankrupt in this way. He imagined that Charon would fall into depression if he lost. The girl told her daddy that if he was worried, they could buy the most stable stocks. And then she could make a profit. Ji Hong didn't understand why she was so confident about this profit. He thought that he had been right to warn Charon about the problems she might face. And now was the perfect opportunity to do so. He told Charon that he would set up a brokerage account for her and that she could invest this money, along with the money he had given her for the new year, in stocks. The girl was happy. Ji Hong warned her that if she lost all her money, her account would have to be closed. Charon agreed. As they had agreed, Ji Hong opened an account for Charon. Charon wanted to buy stocks as soon as possible. The man asked her if she remembered her promise. The girl smiled happily and promised to fulfill it if she lost money. Suddenly, she asked her father indignantly why he thought she would lose everything and why he doubted her. The man replied that he believed in her. The girl told him not to worry and to support her. She would earn so much money that she could even give it to her dad. Ji Hong said, embarrassed, that he didn't want her money and suggested that they go out to eat or have fun. Charon replied that once a month she could spend it on entertainment. Ji Hong was to blame for spoiling the girl. And if she loses all 200,000, it will be a good lesson for her. Ji Hong was having fun in the park with his daughter, opened a bank account for her. And then the day of the dissertation defense came. Ji Hoon handed the professor a sheet of paper. Choi Woo Hyuk adjusted his glasses and began to read. Ji Hoon was a little nervous. He had made ten changes since last night until this morning. Ji Hong hoped that the professor would like the thesis, although he thought his hopes were vain because the professor was known for being strict. 
The man stood in front of Choi Woo-suk in embarrassment and thought that there were quite a few flaws in the thesis. The professor thought about it and replied that the work was quite good. Ji Hoon was surprised to hear that. The professor replied that the man should have realized by now that good means good and nothing more. Ji Hong thanked him. He could not believe that the professor liked his work. The man thought about it. Everything had been too good these days. His dissertation, his presentation, and even his sports training. He hoped he hadn't used up his entire supply of success. The more Ji Hong thought about it, the more everything seemed strange. The doubts that were already plaguing Ji Hong reached their peak when he went for his physical. The man was shocked to learn that he was 177 centimeters tall as he had stopped growing in middle school. He had never been taller than 5 feet 9 inches and 9 millimeters. The doctor explained to him that sometimes men continue to grow at a later age. Ji Hong thought about what she said because it meant that he had been growing all along. However, since middle school, he had grown only one millimeter and now suddenly almost six centimeters. After ten years, he grew, lost weight, and became more handsome. Ji Hong did not understand what this incredible change was. No matter how much he thought about it, he could not find any logic. The man had to understand what was happening to him. But he didn't know where to start. After the medical examination, Ji Hong told his friends about everything. Jiang Su told him that he had grown up. And it seemed like it happened in a few days. The man couldn't understand how this was possible because he hadn't grown for 10 years and then he suddenly stretched out. And his eyesight improved. One of his friends said that it was really strange about his eyesight. Jiang Su replied somewhat indignantly that this is the human body because somehow even cancer patients can recover. Then he suggested that Ji Hoon ask the professor about it. The man replied that he had already asked him, but the professor just laughed it off. The two men began to discuss that Ji Hoon should undergo an additional examination. Jiang Su thought it was not worth spending money on such nonsense. The two men argued, and Ji Hong thought that he was really worrying about it for nothing. Things had changed for the better, so he should think positively. He thanked his surprised friends for listening to him and said that Charon must have been waiting for him. Jiang Su grabbed his friend's hand because he was about to leave them. With shining eyes, they told Ji Hoon that today would be the debut of his acting career and in a popular TV series. The man was embarrassed and said that he was only there to be an extra. The men knew that Ji Hoon was sitting behind Park Yumi. He regretted telling his friends about it. Ji Hoon said irritably that he had to go, so the guys would watch the episode themselves. But his friends wouldn't let him go. They couldn't let this chance go to waste. Jiang Su begged Ji Hoon to join them. The man thought his friends were stubborn. He sighed and promised to watch the episode after they had dinner. The men were happy. Jiang Su even watched the entire series for one episode. Ji Hong could already feel how much his friends would tease him. It was already evening outside. In the show, a man was offering someone cocoa. Chiron was glad that the commercial was over. Everyone was looking forward to seeing what Ji Hoon and his daughter looked like. The man had never felt this way before, but now he was excited. He thought they would be shown for five seconds, because they were just extras. Jiang Su whispered to Ji Hoon that he was a little worried. The man was surprised. Jiang Su began to say that today's episode was going to be very sad. But he would have to stare at a man who looked like a squid, and now he would call Ji Hoon that because he was in a shot with Park Yumi. Then the man was slapped again. Ji Hoon happily replied that Jiang Su was lucky because Ji Jing was there. Jiang Su replied that Ji Hoon was too violent. The dramatic scene of the show began. Everyone was looking forward to the scene in the amusement park. After 20 minutes, everyone was still waiting. Another 40 minutes passed and everyone started to get bored. Jiang Su said that the episode would be over soon, and Charon asked why it wasn't on. Ji Hoon was surprised. The scriptwriter promised that the episode would be released this week, but they weren't there. The girl was upset. Ji Hoon thought that this scene was probably cut out and that Charon would be very upset about it. He was almost crying and begged to see them for at least a second. 
Suddenly, the scene with Ji Hoon and Charon began. The man was glad that they were not cut out. Jang Su was surprised that they were actually sitting behind the majestic main character. He said it would be a great memory for the girl. Charon was happy to be on TV. Suddenly, Ji Hong was embarrassed and pointed to the screen. They were shown in close-up, as if they were not extras but the characters in the series. The two men were surprised to see them in the final scene of such a popular TV show. Jang Su said that it was indeed Ji Hong's debut. The father and daughter were smiling. The man was uncomfortable because they were just extras. Suddenly, Jang Su said that Ji Hoon and Charon were trending. The girl was interested, and her father was surprised. Jang Su couldn't figure out whether they were in sixth or seventh place. Their highest ranking was sixth, and they were the key to the series. Jang Su started to say that they were showing Charon in general, and Ji Hoon was just in the frame. The camera couldn't capture even 1% of her beauty, and Ji Hoon was just photogenic in his opinion. The man started kicking his friend angrily and saying that he could help Jang Su become photogenic by simply taking him to a plastic surgeon. Charon happily supported her dad and tried not to say anything in front of him. Their friends thought that watching Chan Su being beaten up was much more interesting and maybe Charon would soon become famous because she was trending. Ji Hoon replied that Charon was cute and pretty, but not everyone can become popular. He couldn't hide his enthusiasm. Of course, the man didn't mind, and if the girl liked it, he wouldn't have any objections. He asked Charon if she wanted to be on TV more often. The girl looked at her father in surprise and asked if he would be with her. Ji Hoon replied embarrassedly that he couldn't. Then Charon indignantly replied that she did not want to. One of Ji Hong's friends said that such a brilliant girl should become a scientist and work for the benefit of humanity. Kneeling down, Jang Su told Ji Hun that he had recently lost weight and become more handsome. The man embarrassedly told his friend not to exaggerate. Chan Su said that Charon could become famous, but Ji Hun would be nothing more than her manager. The father and daughter were outraged. They could hear Jang Su screaming outside, and Charon was telling him that her daddy was very handsome and she couldn't keep quiet about it any longer. The man, who did not know that Ji Hoon had become more handsome thanks to Charon, paid for it with a severe punishment. The filming of the mass scene, which seemed like a one-off, took an unexpected turn. The man looked at his phone in surprise. He did not understand what it could mean. The internet is a place where something is always happening. People rely on anonymity to persecute others. Now Ji Hong and Charon are, so to speak, the fairy healer meme. They became volunteers and helped people who faced online harassment. Ji Hong looked at the phone screen. He said in embarrassment that their popularity continued to grow. Charon was admired by everyone. Positive comments were written about her, but Ji Hong was embarrassed that her photos were freely circulating on the internet. The man thought that Charon would stay in the trends for a few more days and everyone would forget about her. He decided not to worry about it and prepare for the lecture. He was sure that this would be the end of it. Ji Hong was wrapping up his lecture on artificial intelligence. He said he was ready to answer questions and asked if anyone wanted to ask anything. Everyone in the room raised their hands. The man was embarrassed. He had given quite a few lectures and this was the first time he had encountered so many questions. Ji Hong turned to someone in the audience and asked them to ask questions. The girl said she wasn't sure if she could ask such questions. The man asked her not to worry and to ask questions. She asked him if he was the one in the healing fairy meme. Ji Hong was stunned. He didn't understand what she meant, and the girls in the audience whispered that he was even more handsome in real life than on the internet. Questions about the show started pouring in. Ji Hong apologized in embarrassment and said that he would only answer questions on the topic of the lecture. The questions did not stop. The man thought it might be better to just answer them and not waste time. He asked the surprised audience to remain quiet. Ji Hoon explained that he and his daughter had recently appeared as extras in the TV series Love Poems, Farewell Songs. He thought that this was more than enough to satisfy the curiosity of the audience. But once again, the embarrassed man was bombarded with questions about the series. 
Ji Hong smiled and thought he should have kept his mouth shut. Contrary to his expectations, the healing fairy meme was only gaining momentum. As usual, the sky was blue over the university. Jiang Su showed Ji Hong the publications and told him that he was a real star. Ji Hong was surprised. He didn't understand what that meant. In the post, someone talked about the meme's father's visits to the school. Jiang Su said he was also shocked. Ji Hoon didn't understand why they were doing this, because no one was interested in news that wasn't about celebrities. Jiang Su was surprised by the number of likes on the post. There were just as many comments. Jiang Su was thrilled that it had become the top story of the week. Ji Hoon opened his phone and was surprised at the large number of new followers. Suddenly, some girls noticed him. They handed Ji Hong a sheet of paper and asked him to sign it. The man was frozen with surprise. He embarrassedly signed it while the girls praised him. They also took several photos with him. Ji Hong could not understand whether he was dreaming or not. A crowd of autograph seekers came to them. Jiang Su was happy that his friend was so popular. Ji Hong asked his friend if he didn't think it was strange because he expected something like this with Charon. Jiang Su joked that he must have been bewitched by the magic of popularity. Ji Hoon asked him not to talk nonsense, at least for now. Jiang Su replied that it was good anyway. Suddenly, he was surprised. Yona had written to him. She asked him if Ji Hoon had forgotten that Ji Hoon's birthday was in four days. The man was very surprised. Jiang Su asked what happened to him and widened his eyes in surprise. Ji Hoon did not hear him. After a while, they were sitting on the terrace. Jiang Su finally found out the reason for Ji Hoon's surprise, as he hadn't even started preparing for his birthday yet. He didn't like celebrations and was so busy that he had forgotten about it. Jiang Su told him that the biggest disappointment in his life was that his parents had forgotten his birthday. Ji Hoon looked at him in surprise and replied that he didn't even remember Jiang Su ever celebrating. The man replied that usually in elementary school, they organize whole tea parties on this occasion and asked his friend not to upset Charon and to prepare for the holiday. Ji Hong replied that this was the problem, he did not know how to organize everything. He wanted to impress Charon because it would be the first birthday they would spend together. Jiang Su said that for her age, it would be nice to have a party. Ji Hong replied that Charon doesn't go to kindergarten and doesn't have any friends. Then Jiang Su had an idea. He suggested asking for advice on the internet, since it was popular now. In such cases, a collective decision is a good option. Ji Hoon clenched his fist and replied that it seemed like Jiang Su hadn't gotten his ass kicked in a long time. Jiang Su asked him to calm down, because someone would be able to film it and post it on the internet. Ji Hoon was desperate. Jiang Su advised his friend to just ask Charon what she wanted. The man replied that the girl was smart, so she would immediately understand what he wanted. Then Chang Su suggested that he take a walk around the mall and see what Charon was interested in. It was worth at least a try. And so, on Chang Su's advice, Ji Hong decided to go with Charon to the mall. The man suggested that his daughter go shopping. Charon was surprised at the suddenness of the suggestion. Ji Hong began to imagine that they would buy new outfits. The girl replied that they had already bought a lot last time. Then the man said that the clothes were for him, but then the girl noticed that he had ordered them online. Ji Hong laughed in embarrassment and asked why Charon didn't want to just go for a walk. The girl smiled happily and replied that she wanted to go for a walk with him. Ji Hong noted that it had been a long time since they had gone out and eaten different foods. Charon agreed and said that they could also buy a birthday present. The man smiled and said they would buy a gift. But suddenly his smile began to fade. He realized that Charon had guessed right away. The girl was happy. Charon had a lot of fun. She was thinking about what to buy him for his birthday, a toy or a book. Ji Hong was a little disappointed that there would be no surprise. He was almost in tears. He didn't understand why he thought he could handle it. He couldn't even convince his daughter to just go to the mall. Ji Hong thought that he always messed things up with stupid things like this. He thought it was his fault because he should have thought things through better. 
Sharon asked her dad what he thought Auntie Yeji's son would like best. Ji Hoon was surprised. He asked if she was talking about the doctor from their lab. Sharon replied that it was her son's birthday and they needed to buy him a present. The man was confused and asked how Sharon knew it was the boy's birthday. The girl replied that she learned about it in the laboratory. Everyone there is friends with her. Ji Hoon remembered that Sharon's existence was much more important to them than his. In any case, he was glad that Charon didn't suspect anything. He could still surprise his daughter. The father and daughter arrived at the store. The boy was lying on the floor, hysterical because his mother wouldn't buy him what he wanted. The woman said that last time she had bought him the same toy. The boy objected because the toys were from different series and his mother just didn't understand. Ji Hong was watching. The mother dragged her crying son to wash his face. This was a common situation for parents who came to the mall with a child. Ji Hong thought that there was nothing wrong with that, and that children are children and they are characterized by such behavior. The man began to worry, because Charon had not been able to choose a gift for Dr. Ye Ji's son for an hour. The girl asked her father's opinion about the toy. She asked how he liked it, because it was the toy from the last episode. Ji Hong embarrassedly agreed with her. Suddenly, the girl was a little upset. She said she wanted to buy a gift, but she had no money. She didn't know what to do. Ji Hong told her not to worry and said that he would buy it himself, and then asked if Charon wanted anything for herself, because there were so many toys. The girl replied that if she wanted something, she would say so. Ji Hong thought that he was talking to her like a child, and Charon was responding like an adult. Perhaps he would like his daughter to cry like that boy. Now he was definitely stumped. He had no idea what to give Charon. Ji Hong thought that there was nothing wrong with her adult behavior, but at times like this, it didn't help him. The girl asked why her dad hadn't bought anything for himself, since that was what he had come here for. Ji Hong was surprised. Charon said that it was all very strange. Ji Hong began to worry. Sharon beamed with happiness and asked if Daddy couldn't think about shopping because he was distracted by her beauty. Ji Hun replied in embarrassment that Sharon was really so beautiful that he could not see anything but her. Fortunately, the girl didn't catch on. Sharon hugged her dad and said that if he didn't feel like it, he should go home. Ji Hong didn't know what to say. The girl said that her legs hurt. The man had to agree. Happy Charon and Sad Ji Hong walked down the escalator. They were going home, and the man still didn't know anything. Except for today, there were only two days left until Charon's birthday. Suddenly, the girl pointed to something and said she wanted to go there. Ji Hong was surprised at first, because it was a grocery store. Suddenly, the man remembered that Charon loved his cooking the most. The girl took out some vegetables and said that they reminded her of the rice balls her dad used to make, although simply fried vegetables are also delicious. Sharon told her dad that she wanted him to make more and asked if they could buy vegetables and make rice balls again. Ji Hong smiled and told her to pick whatever she liked. Then Ji Hong finally realized that he could prepare a surprise for his daughter. And that's how he came up with the best gift for Sharon. It was already dark outside. Ji Hong looked at the different dishes. There were many things he could make with the foods Charon had chosen. He chose a main dish and thought he should make her favorite rice balls. Ji Hong wanted to find a recipe for two days and decided to talk to Jiang Su about it. Since he had been cooking a lot lately, he was getting better at it. Ji Hong told himself to be more confident and raised his hands in the air. Charon had long been asleep at this point. There were various dishes on the table. Ji Hong's friends looked on in awe. They could not believe that the man had cooked it himself because it looked perfect. Ji Hong was pleased with himself. Jiang Su began to joke that maybe it only looked perfect, but it would not taste good. Ji Hong indignantly replied that everything that looks good tastes good. He offered his friends a taste. The boys wished each other a good meal. Ji Hong waited anxiously. The men were delighted, they were speechless. It was much tastier than the food they had bought. They asked when Ji Hong had learned to cook so well. Jiang Su said that he wasn't joking and it was really delicious. 
He was sure that Charon would love it. Ji Hoon thanked him embarrassedly. The two men joked about Chef Kim bringing them more of his food or cooking at their house. The man asked them to stop. He was glad his friends liked it. It meant that everything would go well tomorrow. Now the main obstacle was to organize a surprise because Charon woke up early. It was already dark outside. Ji Hong sat on the bed and thought that he should be the first to wake up. He was afraid that on the occasion of Charon's birthday, she might wake up even earlier. He set the alarm for five in the morning. The girl might wake up from the sound, so he put the phone on vibrate. Ji Hong was lying in bed and thought that the rice balls needed to cool down, so he would start with them. Then he planned to move on to the main course. And just in time for the girl to wake up, everything would be ready. The man wished the girl sweet dreams and promised that he would make the best birthday party for her. Morning came unnoticed. Ji Hong wiped his eyes. The warm rays of the morning sun were blinding him. He heard sounds coming from the kitchen. Ji Hong thought that someone was cooking. Suddenly, the man jumped out of bed at the thought. Ji Hong finally woke up and realized that something was wrong. Ji Hong did not understand what was happening. It was eight in the morning. He began to worry because he didn't understand why he woke up so late. His surprise was spoiled. Suddenly Ji Hong looked at something in surprise. There was a pot on the stove. Charon was standing there in her apron with a knife in her hand. She was glad that her father had woken up. The man was trembling with surprise. He asked what the girl was doing. Charon laughed because she was able to surprise her father. Ji Hong began to say that no matter how different Charon was from other children, she was still seven years old. He asked if she even realized how dangerous knives and fire were. He began to say that he had explained to her that she should not play with such things. The girl replied sadly that she was not playing. Then Ji Hong asked her what she was doing here if she wasn't playing. Suddenly he saw a pile of perfect dishes on the table. Ji Hong could not understand what it was and who had prepared such wonderful dishes. Suddenly, the bathroom door opened and Ji Hong's friends were sitting at the table. Ye Ji asked that Ji Hun not yell at Charon. The men said it was not easy to hide. Ji Hong opened his eyes wide in surprise. He didn't understand what they were all doing here. Ye Ji told Ji Hun to change his clothes first because he was exposed. The man began to cover himself in embarrassment and the woman laughed at him. She told Ji Hoon that it was a joke and that he should finally come to his senses. Ye Ji pointed to Charon and said that he should listen to her. The little girl hugged her daddy happily and said that today was her birthday. So she had prepared everything because thanks to her mom and dad she was born. Today Charon wanted to prepare a present for her dad. The man began to say, embarrassed, that it was Charon's birthday and she shouldn't give him anything. The little girl replied that she was doing it because she was grateful to him for having her. The man was touched by what he heard. It was unexpected for him to receive a gift for no particular reason. He realized what it means to reap the benefits. Yeji began to say that Charon had come to her a week ago and asked to spend her birthday with her. The girl said she wanted to cook something, but she didn't know how. Ji Hong thought that Yeji had cooked everything, but the woman denied it and said that Charon had done it with her own hands. The man could not understand how this was possible. Yeji explained that Charon practiced in the lab every day while Ji Hun was away, and the professor paid for the food. Ji Hong realized that everyone knew about this except him. The woman replied that the whole lab knew about it, so they had to work hard to hide it. Ji Hun turned to his friends. They also knew about it. They said that Charon also wanted to celebrate her dad's birthday, which was in March. Yeji said that their biggest fear was that Ji Hun would wake up early, but he slept like a log. Ji Hong was ashamed. He realized that his friends had been spying on him to see if he was sleeping. They told him that Ji Hong had made their plan successful and they had bought a cake to eat together. Yeji said that thanks to them, she had a restful morning. Then Ji Hun mentioned work. The woman told him that the professor had given him permission to stay home today and spend a nice day with Charon. 
The friend said they would not interfere, wished Charon a happy birthday again, and said goodbye. The girl waved back and thanked them for their help. Charon offered her dad something to eat because the food was getting stale. The man hesitantly agreed. He was upset. The girl asked why her dad was not eating. She thought it didn't look good. The girl was surprised. Ji Hong was crying. She did not understand what had happened to her daddy. The man replied that he just hadn't celebrated his birthday in a long time and said he would love to eat. Charon smiled and asked her dad not to cry. She promised him that she would cook for his birthday as well. Ji Hong wiped his tears and thanked her. He thought that he was very lucky to have a daughter. Ji Hong was in some office. Professor Beg Nahi was sitting in front of him, saying that she had heard that Charon had prepared a gift for him. Ji Hong was surprised that she knew about it. So the rumor had spread everywhere. The woman replied that people are interested in everything about Charon because she is a local celebrity. Ji Hoon asked what brought Beg Nahi here because she was definitely not here to have this conversation. The professor reminded him that she had promised to find out about the school. She told him that the Korean National University was engaged in the education of gifted elementary school children. Ji Hoon knew that this university was located in Gangnam. The professor replied that it was the only place that accepted students from elementary school. Ji Hoon thanked her for the information but explained that Charon was a research subject in Professor Choi Wusuk's lab. He also thought that Charon would not leave as long as he was working here. Beg Nahi replied that she had discussed this with the professor. The man was surprised. He was mentally outraged because no matter how special Charon was, she was still his daughter and he didn't understand why she was being discussed without his consent. He asked the professor why they were discussing where to send the girl without his knowledge. The woman apologized and explained that she was definitely not going to send Charon to university without his consent. She said that Professor Choi says that Charon's brain is the future of Korea. A normal curriculum would not make any sense to her. Next year, the girl will start middle school. However, in this situation, a Korean university is the best option. Ji Hoon replied that then Charon should go there. Beg Nahi explained that it wouldn't be very helpful for Jin Yum either, but it was worth a try. Ji Hoon then realized that he and Charon would have to break up after all. Ji Hoon said in embarrassment that in that case they had no choice. Beg Nahi explained that going to such an institution also made no sense, but it was the law. Ji Hoon realized that he was making a mistake because after all, he and Charon would be separated. The man explained that he understood, but to send a girl there so suddenly. He thought it would be hard for Charon to accept. The professor began to say that this is why she remembered. She mentioned the youth facilities at their school. Ji Hoon felt hopeful. Beg Nahi told him to think about it, because they had the future of Korean science in their hands. She asked him to think about whether it was really worth sending Charon to a Korean university. Then Ji Hoon asked if their school accepted not only middle and high school students. The woman replied that it did, but that Charon was under her jurisdiction. The woman picked up her coffee and said that the principal would not like Charon changing schools because of their admission requirements. So Beg Nahi discussed it with the president. She asked him to accept Charon because she was special. Ji Hoon was speechless with surprise. The woman did not understand her husband's surprise because Charon had proven that she was worthy of it. In the end, Beg Nahi received permission, so she needed to meet with Ji Hoon to discuss her entrance exams. The man was surprised because there were no entrance exams in elementary school. Beg Nahi replied that there was a case in another school where a student entered the sixth grade in November and graduated the following year. Charon might do the same. Ji Hong asked if Charon would also go to sixth grade. The professor replied that she would, because she was very good at math. But they don't have enough titles to officially confirm this. The woman explained seriously that Ji Hong should know how important they are. Charon needs to get a title, because it will help her a lot. Beg Nahi added that if Ji Hong agreed, she would like to take advantage of the exceptional provisions so that she could go straight to sixth grade. The man thought about it. 
He knew that titles helped to attract attention. Even if no one had ever heard your name, titles would make them pay attention to you. It would help Sharon if she wanted to get an education. Then more people will concentrate on her thesis. Ji Hoon thought that she should enroll and that she should listen to Professor Beck. The man agreed with her suggestion. He said he was glad they had discussed it and thanked her for her efforts. The professor replied that Charon was a precious child, so precious that even Professor Choi would do everything legally. Ji Hoon smiled and said that although he was the girl's father, he sometimes wondered if he was doing the right thing by interfering with her future because she was so smart. Beg Nahi asked her husband not to say that because he was the only father she trusted and depended on. He was surprised to hear her say that. The professor told Ji Hong that in the future, Charon would listen to him and his opinions, so she asked him not to regret his parental decisions. The man agreed to this. Ji Hong thought he was a good father, but the upcoming entrance exams made him doubt it. Ji Hong turned to Professor Choi Wusuk. He was sitting across from the man and indignantly said that Charon was his daughter and the professor should have discussed with him what was going to happen to the girl. Choi Wu Hyuk sincerely apologized. He embarrassedly said that he should have talked to Ji Hoon first and that he would try to make sure that this would not happen again. Ji Hoon honestly admitted that he was a little upset. Choi Woo Hyuk smiled and apologized for not telling Ji Hoon in the first place. That was exactly what the man wanted to hear. The professor had various notebooks in front of him. He said that it was all about competition and that due to the school's inattention, Charon's results became public knowledge. The professor drank his coffee and continued to say that there would not have been such a problem if it was just a leak. However, the number of schools that wanted to accept Charon increased. Ji Hoon said that if the professor wanted to enroll her, it wouldn't work without Charon's consent. Choi Woo Hyuk replied that the man was right about that. Many people wanted to see them both. And this could have become a big problem for the father and daughter. Then the professor said he didn't want to lose Charon, so he discussed everything with Professor Beck and the school president. It took about two days. Ji Hong realized it was yesterday. The professor embarrassedly replied that he hadn't been able to talk to his husband about it because he was away at work. Ji Hong didn't know that, and he apologized for having scolded the professor. Choi Wu Hyuk replied that he would have been upset too, because it was his child after all. But the professor promised that it would not happen again. Ji Hoon thanked the professor sincerely. Choi Woo Hyuk thanked the man in return for his understanding. The man turned to leave, but the professor said that he was waiting for him at the workplace because Jae Rin would only stay with them if Ji Hoon was there. The man was surprised. He turned to the professor and asked him if he knew how in grocery stores you get bonuses when you buy one item. Choi Woody replied that everyone gets a free 500 milliliters of detergent. Ji Hoon replied, embarrassed, that he and Jae Rin did, too. The professor realized that Ji Hoon was the free 500 milliliters. The man wondered why he was, since he was already on his way to his doctorate. The professor was looking through some records and calmly replied that it was Ji Hong. The man smiled and asked if the professor would change his mind. Choi Woody replied that he would never, and that Ji Hoon could go. These words struck the man right in the heart. It was deadly for Ji Hoon. He realized that in the lab, he was nothing more than a variable. The title that Ji Hong had received for all his efforts at the university was actually due to Charon. He doubted that he could decide her future. It was still a mystery to Ji Hong why he was not considered a genius father. And then he received some unexpected news. The man was very surprised by the combination of the words USA and he. Choi Woo Hyuk began to say that there was an AI symposium in Boston. He told Ji Hoon to listen to it with him. The man began to say that he had just recently joined their lab. Ji Hoon said that he was not sure if a newcomer should go and that he would rather choose Song Bi instead. Choi Woo Hyuk replied that Ji Hoon should go and that he was too old to joke about such things. The man couldn't understand why he was the one to go and asked if his report was related to the topic of the symposium. The professor replied that it was an interesting approach and a good report. Ji Hong was happy that he had finally contributed to the work of the laboratory. He asked the professor how long he had been there. 
Choi Waiti replied that it was three days in the east and four in the west, so Ji Hoon should be well prepared. The man wondered what he should do with Ji Hoon since he would be gone for a whole week. The professor mentioned that they were going to visit some tourist places, so he asked him to prepare some nice clothes for his daughter. Ji Hong was surprised that he could take Charon with him. The professor looked at him and asked why the man decided to leave his daughter alone. Ji Hong thought that he would be alone, because this was a trip to a symposium, not a vacation. Suddenly, he heard Charon's surprised voice behind him. She angrily began to ask why Daddy was going to go to the United States without her. Ji Hoon was embarrassed by her sudden appearance. Choi Woo Hye began to say that his presentation was about artificial intelligence and he couldn't leave Charon behind. The girl happily replied that it was the right decision. Then Ji Hoon started to worry about the ticket for her. The professor replied that the lab would cover all the expenses. Ji Hoon's legs began to tremble. He said he had to go. The man realized that he was going not because his article was good, but because otherwise John Il would not go. Choi Wu Hyuk smiled and said that was true. Ji Hoon was stunned. Choi Wu Hyuk smiled and said that the man was reacting very suddenly. Ji Hoon was stunned. The professor turned to Charon and asked her if she was happy to be going to the United States. The girl jumped for joy and could not wait for this moment. Ji Hoon's whole body began to shake. He realized that nothing was making sense. He remembered how hard he studied to win a competition in high school and then at university. He continued his studies in high school until he was humiliated by Jang Dong Ho. But after 28 years of hard work, he became just an addition to the Charon. The man was very disappointed. He did not understand why he had worked so hard. He stood on all fours in the laboratory and thought that life had no meaning. Charon was surprised to tell the professor that her father was strange. Choi Woo Hyuk replied that Ji Hoon was weaker than he thought. The professor told Ji Hoon to stop crying and get up. Choi Woody smiled, said he was joking, and asked the man if he really thought he was just an addition to Ji Hoon. Ji Hoon was surprised. The professor said that he would not have brought Ji Hoon to such an academic setting just because of Charon. He had told him that his report was excellent many times before, though he did not praise him. Ji Hoon looked at him in surprise. Choi Woody said that he didn't see any better options than Ji Hoon, but it would be difficult for a man to go abroad alone during professional research. That's why the professor chose him. He thought that it would be good for the father and daughter, because they would get a lot of memories, and then they would do research. Ji Hoon asked him in embarrassment if the fact that he was just a bonus to Charon was a joke. The professor coughed and replied that it was hard for him to joke at his age. Choi Woo Hyuk walked towards the door, as he had things to do, and told Ji Hoon to ask Charon if she didn't believe him. When the professor left, the girl turned to her father. She said that the professor had told her about his wonderful report. The girl held her father's hand and told him how proud she was of him. She said that she was smart only because of her daddy. So she asked him to help her in the future. Ji Hoon embarrassedly agreed. The girl indignantly began to ask what had happened to him and said that she would make her dad more confident. The man smiled back at her. He said that her dad would continue to be her lifelong assistant. Two weeks passed. The airplane was taking off. Charon looked at the big machine with delight and wanted to fly as soon as possible. Ji Hong had never flown before, so the first flight was exciting for him. Charon wanted to fly high and high. Suddenly a woman approached them and asked them a question. The man was surprised to hear what had happened. The woman asked Ji Hong if they were the father and daughter from the meme. The red-haired boy looked out angrily from behind his mother's legs. Suddenly, he took out a huge lobster biscuit and asked the girl if she wanted it. Everyone was surprised. The woman embarrassedly began to say that her son had seen the girl in the picture, so he wanted to talk to her. Ji Hong replied in embarrassment that he had seen it. Charon looked at the lollipop and the red-haired boy in surprise. The girl smiled and thanked him, adding that the lollipop looked delicious. The boy rubbed the back of his head in embarrassment and said that he had nothing to thank her for. The boy and his mother left. 
Sharon happily told her dad that it was the first time a boy had given her a sweet. Ji Hong was taken aback by the word boy. Now he thought that soon Sharon would be going to a new school and when she had friends, she would put them before him. The man looked at his daughter and did not understand how he could survive this. She always looked at him and smiled. He took the happy girl's hand. Ji Hong realized that he would not be the only important person in the girl's life and he needed to prepare himself mentally for this. Suddenly, the man thought, what if in the United States? He imagined that Charon and a certain Daniel were going to get married in the future. He suddenly shouted that this would never happen. Charon was surprised. Ji Hong's eyes were burning. He was not against interethnic marriages, but not now. He wanted to protect his daughter. White clouds floated outside the airplane window. Ji Hong and Charon sat in their seats and looked up at the sky. The weather was supposed to be calm. But no one had canceled the turbulence. Charon was fascinated that such a heavy thing could fly so high. Cities could be seen below. Charon asked her dad if it was his first time flying. Ji Hong replied that it was, and so was she. The girl smiled and denied it. She said she had flown many times because her mom had a lot of airplanes at home. Ji Hong was surprised and smilingly asked if the airplanes were real or if she was talking about toy airplanes. Charon answered that some of the airplanes didn't have as many seats, but they were still big enough. Ji Hong was surprised because only super rich people have their own airplanes and Yona even had several. The girl happily replied that when her mother's family had a big holiday, her aunt and uncle would fly in airplanes, and she would fly too. Ji Hong did not understand how this was possible. He imagined a huge castle with a flock of airplanes flying towards it. He had no idea that Yona was from such a wealthy family. At the time, Ji Hong thought it was not true, because children of that age like to fantasize and embellish reality. He was sure that Charon had mistaken the airplanes for ordinary cars because it looked more believable. He patted his daughter's head with satisfaction. This made her look more like a child to him, and it was cool to him. Charon said indignantly that her daddy didn't believe her again. Ji Hong was surprised. He did not understand what again meant. The girl angrily said that he hadn't believed her when she said she had memorized the multiplication table and when she said she wanted to invest money. And now he also thought she was lying like a child, so he stroked her. The man thought the girl could read minds. Charon covered herself with a blanket and said that Ji Hong was a bad father. The man nervously asked if she was joking now. The girl just looked out from under the blanket and hid again. The man did not know what to do. Things were looking bad. Ji Hong was almost crying because it was unfair. It was hard for him to believe that he was dating such a rich woman and his daughter was as smart as Einstein. Even if his life was a fantasy novel, readers would say it was impossible. Ji Hong looked at the wrapped up Charon and did not know what to do. But in any case, he had to calm her down somehow. Charon had been offended by Ji Hong before, but it was very easy to improve her mood. Just tickle her, and she stops being offended. Ji Hong began to gently tickle the girl. Sharon turned to him angrily and told her father that it was not allowed to make noise on the plane. She asked him why he was tickling her, because she was not a child anymore. Ji Hong apologized in embarrassment. The man thought that he shouldn't force her to be distracted, he had to apologize sincerely. Ji Hong scratched the back of his head and apologized to the girl for not believing her again. He promised that it would never happen again. Sharon was still wrapped in a blanket. She told her father that he was lying. Ji Hong replied pleadingly that he actually knew the girl was telling the truth. In his mind, the man said that it was hard to say that after her story today. Charon indignantly said that she knew what her father was thinking. She said she would not stop being offended until he truly believed her. Ji Hong was embarrassed to say that he didn't mean it. He said he had done wrong by not believing her. Charon was silent. Ji Hun was really apologizing. Suddenly, the plane started to sway. Because of the long turbulence, the plane was shaking a bit. The passengers on the plane were worried about it, afraid of crashing. Ji Hong grabbed his stomach and felt sick. 
Besides, he had to do something about Charon. But he felt like he was going to throw up from shaking. Charon looked at her father. She realized that he was beginning to feel sick. She took off the blanket, still angry, but still. She touched her father and asked him how he felt. The man was surprised. Suddenly the headache and nausea stopped. The man looked back at the frightened passengers. He didn't know how much time had passed and thought that Charon must be scared too. Ji Hong took the girl's hands, apologized, and said that he was distracted because he was feeling unwell. He then asked if she was scared. Charon replied that everything was fine. The man said he was glad his daughter was so brave. Ji Hong told Charon that everything would be fine and asked her not to worry. The girl smiled back at him. Suddenly, the plane started shaking violently and all the passengers were seriously scared. Ji Hong thought that everything had calmed down, but it was the calm before the storm. He was scared, but he was more afraid for Charon. What if she got hurt? He did not know how to protect the girl. Suddenly he asked the girl if she wanted to pray. Charon was surprised. He reminded the girl how they had been walking in the park in bad weather and how she had gotten better through prayer. Ji Hong suggested that Charon do the same now. The girl happily said she would pray. Ji Hong then suggested that they close their eyes and begin. They put their hands in front of them and began to ask for the weather to improve. Suddenly, a glow appeared around Charon, and she asked for the wind to stop. The radiance went to the clouds. She told the chaos to go away and ordered them to obey her immediately. Lightning began to illuminate the sky. The passengers panicked. Ji Hong nervously asked Charon if she was okay. The girl turned to her father in fear. The man hugged the girl in fear. Charon did not understand what was happening. The weather was disobeying her, and she thought it would be difficult. This had never happened to her before, and she did not know what to do. The girl remembered her mother holding her in her arms and telling her that the power of a dragon's words depends on its will. Of course, her will would get stronger with age. But this meant that even as a little girl, Charon could be strong. But there was a side effect to this great strength. Her mother asked her not to expend much energy until she grew up. The girl realized that she needed a strong will and needed to calm down and concentrate on the problem. There was a blue glow around her that was probably not visible to anyone else. The girl angrily mentally said that everyone who heard her should immediately obey her. She ordered the lightning to disappear and the clouds to disperse. She commanded the chaos to stop, and her radiance enveloped the airplane and the sky. Suddenly, the clouds began to disappear and the plane found itself in an expanse of blue, clear sky. The passengers began to calm down. Ji Hong happily told Charon that their prayers had been answered. The girl was very happy about this. Charon was glad that her powers were working but she did not understand why it had not worked before. She thought she did not have the will. The girl looked out the window. She began to worry about the side effect her mother had mentioned. But she pushed those thoughts away. The girl knew that her mother would protect her from anything bad. It was already dark outside. The passengers landed in Boston. Choi Wuhiak told everyone that the symposium starts tomorrow, so everyone can rest now. Ji Hoon led Charon down the hall and suggested that she go out for a snack. The girl happily agreed. Their room was very spacious. Charon fell on the bed and was surprised at how soft it was. Suddenly the man looked behind some curtains and was very surprised. He saw a gorgeous view of the starry sky and the shining city. Ji Hong could not believe it. That he was really in the United States. Charon said it was really cool here. The girl looked at her dad. Verna thought he would not fall asleep early. Today she decided to leave him because he didn't believe her story. But tomorrow, when her daddy was tired, she was going to help him. A glow appeared in her hand. Ji Hong was looking out the window with delight. Suddenly he yawned and said that he was sleepy. He smiled at Charon and said that he was sleepy, so he would go to the shower first. The girl happily agreed. She was smiling, with the city in the background. She was going to give her daddy a massage when he fell asleep. No one would take care of him but her. 
A star shone in the sky. It began to grow with different swirling rays. Charon could not even imagine what the consequences of her actions would be. The usual clear morning came. Choi Woo Hyuk looked at Ji Hoon in surprise and said that he looked better than he expected. It seemed to the professor that the man would have a hard time sleeping on his first business trip. Ji Hong embarrassedly replied that he was worried at first, but then it all went away quickly. And he slept soundly through the night. Choi Woo Hyuk said that was great because it would have been hard for Ji Hoon to attend the symposium when he was sleepy. The man was surprised to hear that it would be difficult to attend the symposium. Choi Wu Hyuk replied that the greatest minds of humanity gather there. They don't care whether you are a beginner or not. Everyone has to behave professionally. Ji Hoon said that he understood. Charon happily told her dad that he could do it. Suddenly Charon was surprised to see a purple sky with black clouds. She asked her dad to rest at the hotel. Ji Hong asked her what was wrong. Was she really sick? The girl replied that she was not yet used to this time zone and was very tired. The man said that if she was tired, she could stay at the hotel. Ji Hong waved goodbye to the girl, and the girl waved back. Charon could not understand what she felt. It was some strange energy. The girl was running down the hallway, worried that she had used the dragon language on the plane yesterday. She was worried about the side effect. There was only one method she could rely on. Everyone gathered at a symposium. One of the scientists was talking behind the podium about attribution and anonymity. Ji Hong sat nervously in the audience. He expected that it would be difficult for him because of the deadlines. The man in the white coat continued to tell him something. Ji Hong thought that maybe it was because there were people from all over the world performing here. Everyone had a different accent and such a variety of pronunciations that he found it increasingly difficult to understand them. Ji Hong's knowledge of English was not enough. He did not want to and could not even deny this fact. But with every passing second, he became more and more interested in listening. He would like to perform himself someday. Ji Hong looked at the professor on the stage and thought that he had also been a beginner once. So even if Ji Hong is not good enough now, it won't be forever. Everyone continued to listen attentively. Choi Wu Suk knew he had the right person with him. He looked at Ji Hoon. The professor thought that the man would be able to achieve a lot if he overcame his difficulties now. The only pity was that Ji Hoon was not ready yet. Then Choi Wei smiled and decided to use this chance to discover his talents. In the lobby, everyone was standing in nice clothes with glasses of champagne and discussing something. The professor was talking to other scientists, and he praised the presentation of one of the men. The other man was saying that Choi Wusuk's results were much more impressive. Ji Hoon's head started to spin because everyone around him was speaking English. He used to be motivated to learn English. But now, in front of people who spoke pure English, he couldn't say a word. Choi Wu Hia called Ji Hoon over to him. The man was surprised. The professor wanted to introduce him to some people if he didn't mind. Ji Hoon said he didn't mind, but he wasn't very good at English. The professor told him not to worry, because no one would ask a newcomer difficult questions. Choi Wu Hyuk began to introduce Ji Hoon to his colleagues and said that he had a few questions. He said that the man was a novice researcher and he had brought him along to gain experience. Everyone listened attentively. The professor said that Ji Hong might seem like an ordinary student, but he was sure that he had a great future because... The professor smiled and said that the man was the father of the model used to create the AI he was going to present. Ji Hong was dumbfounded. The man began to be bombarded with questions. He thought it was bad because the researchers were filling his head with English questions. Ji Hong turned to the professor and asked what he should do. The professor clenched his fist tightly. He mentally told Ji Hong to be stronger, to survive, and turned to him. Ji Hong looked at the professor in embarrassment as he was bombarded with questions. Choi Woody knew the boy's potential better than anyone else, but his biggest problem was that Ji Hong was afraid to try to do things he wasn't capable of. And the professor had no choice but to push him to do it. Choi Woo Hyuk turned away from the man because only the one who survives can call himself his student. 
Ji Hong begged the professor not to leave. One of the professors asked Ji Hong to answer his question. The man was very embarrassed. He realized that there was no turning back and that he had to step out of his comfort zone and give it his all. He assured himself that he could do it, and he needed to prove that he was capable of anything, even alone. The sky was clear outside the window. Charon was talking to her mother. The girl was kneeling in front of the panoramic window and asking her mother how long she was going to hide, because she knew her mother could hear her. No one knew what she had done yesterday. She asked her mom to help her. Suddenly, her mother's shining hand reached out to the girl. Yona told the girl that she had told her about the consequences and she should not use the language of dragons as she pleased. The girl looked at the shining silhouette of her mother and said that her father was going through a very difficult time and she was only using the language of dragons as she told her. Yona replied that that was why she hadn't come to her. She knew it would happen and Charon had to learn from her mistakes. The girl asked if she had any problems now. Her mother asked if she remembered when the dragon language was no longer effective. Charon remembered. Then Yona's silhouette asked her menacingly why Charon was asking her such questions. The girl replied that she had forgotten because she was scared. She looked at her mother in embarrassment and asked if she would forgive her. The embarrassed silhouette of Yona asked if Charon really thought that a simple apology would solve all problems. The girl hugged her mother and asked her to forget about it. Charon smiled broadly and said it would never happen again. Yona wondered how Charon could laugh when she should be crying, realizing what she had done. The woman agreed to forgive her daughter, but only on one condition. Charon looked at her with interest. Yona said that the girl had to take responsibility for everything that would happen after that. Charon stopped smiling and looked at the woman in surprise. Yona agreed to forgive her daughter, but only on one condition. The girl looked at her with interest. Her mother told her that she had to take responsibility for whatever happened. Charon looked at the woman in surprise. She asked what it meant to be responsible for everything. Yona asked her to take responsibility for her actions. Charon began to cry. In a trembling voice, she asked her mother if something had happened because of her. The woman thought about it and said she didn't know. Charon thought this was strange, because it was clear from Yona's eyes that something had happened. The girl did not understand what was happening and what she had done. Her eyes were even more filled with tears. She really did not know. Charon ran to her mother in tears, asking her to help her. Yona's silhouette began to dissipate. The woman told her daughter that she had to understand her responsibility for her power and she hoped that Charon would learn an important lesson from this. The girl began to beg for help in hysterics. The woman only replied that she would soon go deaf from her screaming. Yona turned to her daughter and began to say that she had been told that she was too young to use force. But Charon disobeyed and made trouble. The girl looked at her mother in despair. She continued to say that Charon should be punished for this. It was too late to get out of it. Charon's eyes filled with tears even more. She started to sob, and then suddenly, her piercing scream sounded throughout the hotel. In the corridor, someone was passing the elevator. The professor asked Ji Hong how he was feeling today. The man was happy, he felt incredible. Choi Wu Hyuk said that it was good that he didn't help him. Ji Hong agreed and thanked him. He couldn't believe in himself and give freedom to his strength. He wanted to show the world scientists that he also existed. The man bowed to the professor and once again sincerely thanked him for such a precious experience. Choi Woo Hyuk replied that there was no need to thank him because he had acted like a teacher. They walked down the corridor. The professor told Ji Hoon that once Charon got used to the time zone, he should talk to her. Everyone is excited because she is a genius and such children are born only once a century. Ji Hoon promised to talk to her. Choi Woo Hyuk said this because he didn't want to mislead his student, because he was not just Charon's assistant. Ji Hoon knew this more than anyone else. Suddenly, he heard a scream. They immediately realized who it was and the excited professor told Ji Hong to run to the girl because something was wrong. Charon kept crying and calling for her mom. 
Yona told her that there was no point in crying and that it was time to realize that the world was a scary place. Charon kept crying and begging for help. Ji Hong ran down the hotel corridor. Yona began to calm down because she realized that the girl's father was coming. She told Charon that it was not yet time for them to meet and she was leaving. Maybe she would help next time. The girl continued to sob with tears. Ji Hong opened the door to the room. He looked at Charon in surprise and asked her what was wrong and why she was crying. The girl was calling for her mom. Ji Hong asked her what was wrong with Yona. Charon ran into her father's arms. She tried to say something, but she started crying even more. Ji Hong tried to ask her what was wrong. He thought she was missing her mom. Charon cried and said that her mom scolded her. Ji Hong put his hand in his pocket. He was surprised by these words and did not understand what was going on. He worriedly called Yona, but she didn't answer the phone. Ji Hong did not understand why a woman could not answer the phone when her daughter was crying because of her. Then the man thought that maybe Yona had yelled at Charon in her sleep, which explained everything. The man smiled at the girl and said that if her mother started to fight, he would protect her and asked her not to cry. Charon looked at him in surprise and asked if it was really true. Ji Hong confidently raised his hand and told his daughter that he would do everything to stop her from crying. So he asked her not to cry anymore, for his sake. Charon sat on the bed and looked at him in surprise. She looked at her daddy with a pleading look. The girl smiled and said she would not cry anymore. Ji Hong hugged the girl and said that smiling suited her much better. Of course, she was beautiful when she was crying, but she was even more beautiful when she smiled. The girl happily told her daddy that he was the best. Sharon thought about it. She didn't understand what her mother meant when she said that the girl had to take responsibility. But she was ready to use the language of dragons for her daddy. With her determination, she would definitely protect him. A few days later, at the American Weather Bureau, the employees were worried. A woman was sitting at her computer talking about a very big problem. A surprised man asked what was wrong. The woman said that two hours ago a medium-sized convective system was detected in California. A tornado was forming there. The man looked at the monitor in surprise. This was a rare occurrence for California. He asked what the level was. The excited woman replied that it was an EF3, which was 70 to 92.5 meters per second. The man became agitated and said they should sound the alarm and order the evacuation of the residents. The frightened woman said that there was a miscalculation. The level was EF4, although it could have been even EF5. At this rate, the entire Silicon Valley would be destroyed. Black clouds hung over the city. Ji Hong told Charon that the weather was good in Boston, but in California it was terrible. Charon's hair was blowing in the wind. Her husband wanted to go shopping with her after the conference. Charon thought about it. A few days passed after she talked to her mom, but nothing happened. The girl thought her mother had deceived her, but she was a little worried about the weather. If nothing happened by the time they got back to Korea, she would just forget about it. Besides, Daddy said he would protect her no matter what she did. The girl hugged Ji Hoon and said she trusted him completely. The man was a little surprised, but said that he trusted her as much as she did. A man and a woman passing by recognized Charon and said that she looked very cute when she was holding her father. The girl was surprised, and Ji Hong replied embarrassedly that they were right. They said that it would be cool if they had a daughter like that, because the brilliant things she does are just incredible. Ji Hong was accepting all the compliments when a siren sounded. The piercing sound reached the frightened people. A loudspeaker announced that a tornado was approaching the state park. Everyone was asked to evaluate to a safe place. People began to panic and quickly hide. Ji Hong and Charon stood outside. The worried professor told the man to quickly hide in the basement of the hotel. Embarrassed and anxious, Ji Hong said he was coming. The man took the frightened girl in his arms and told her not to worry and that everything would be fine. Charon hugged him and Ji Hong said he would protect her no matter what happened. The girl was almost crying. 
Ji Hong ran down the street with Charon in his arms through the crowd of scared people. He thought that if it was just a normal tornado, everything would be fine and the concrete underground shelter would hold. Charon was crying and thought it might be a side effect of the dragon's tongue that her mother had warned her about. She could not sit still. Cars, bicycles, stones, and trees were flying around and falling under the pressure of the wind. The people in the Meteorological Bureau did not understand what was happening because the tornado was able to destroy the concrete building. Estimates showed that there were at least 260 people in the danger zone. One of the scientists said that they could not even send rescuers there. He asked when the tornado was going to stop. But even their best scientists could not answer that question. They said that the tornado was on the verge of weakening, but the wind speed remained unchanged. The professor governor asked for an assessment of the potential consequences and to keep all available personnel on standby for a quick response. The man was very concerned. He asked to be protected from the worst disaster in California's history. There were a large number of people in the concrete basement of the hotel. Ji Hong looked at his phone and marveled at the fact that the tornado was blowing cars away like fluff. He thought it was too much for a tornado. Professor Choi Wu Haik said he had experienced several similar situations, but he had never seen anything like this. People in the shelter were very scared, begging for help and praying. The professor said that the power went out. Ji Hong noticed that there was no internet either. Sharon looked at her father in fright. He smiled and told his daughter not to worry, because no matter how strong the tornado was, it would not destroy the underground shelter. The girl looked at him in surprise. Ji Hong told Sharon not to be afraid, but he couldn't boast about it himself. He was worried that the building would collapse. But he had to stay strong for Charon's sake and do everything he could to save her life. The people around him were crying and thought they were going to die. Charon looked at the whole crowd. She mentally called out to her mother and told her not to leave them in such conditions and to help. Yona continued to ignore her. Then Charon mentally told her that she would tell her dad that she was disobeying. Nothing changed. Yona was still ignoring her. Sharon said she could handle the wind herself. She said that she would show her that she could do everything without help and that soon her mom would have problems with her dad. The girl angrily stretched her hand toward the mountain, and Ji Hong was surprised. The man asked the girl in embarrassment what had happened and if she was uncomfortable. Sharon smiled and replied that she was fine with him for now. Sharon thought it was a very brave decision to say that she would do everything by herself. But she didn't know how to do it without her dad knowing. The easiest way was to use the dragon's language, but that could have made things worse. There was only one way left. It was risky, but there was no other choice. Sharon needed a strong will to feel the tornado. And then, a radiance invisible to everyone began to envelop the girl. She was about to direct all her feelings to the center. The shining Charon flew from Ji Hong's hands. Her feet rose above the ground. She was able to leave quietly. Charon flew in the sky and searched for the tornado's core. Suddenly she was frozen. In the huge tornado, which was flying astomobiles and a pile of debris, there was a black core surrounded by lightning. The girl turned to it menacingly and told it to come out to her. Even more lightning appeared from the core. A stream of wind confused Charon. The core ignored her order and the girl was angry. She shouted that he would get in trouble. Charon told him that if she wanted to, she could destroy him with a snap of her fingers. She ordered the core to hurry up and accept defeat before it was too late. The core raged and threw out even more lightning. Nothing happened. The core did not even perceive the threat, and if not for the side effects, Charon would have used the language of the dragon. Her eyes burned with anger. She had no choice. Lightning flew in all directions. If he doesn't listen to her. Cars were flying around, the tornado was raging at high speed. Shining paws with huge claws appeared around Charon. There would be problems, but she had to get rid of him. Charon's huge paws were approaching the core. She told him that she would deal with him even without the dragon's language. The girl said that this was the last warning. The core could surrender while she was kind. 
the big black ball of the colonel began to dissipate. Finally, it responded. The girl thought she could just absorb it. She stretched out her big paws to the colonel. But Charon wasn't sure she could do it. The core was too big. The dark spots of the core approached Charon. They hit her right in the chest. It seeped into her body. The girl grimaced in pain. Suddenly everything started to shake. The frightened people in the shelter were surprised. Charon's body remained in Ji Hong's arms. He was surprised that everything had suddenly gone quiet. He doubted the strength of the building. Suddenly Ji Hong was afraid. Charon smiled and said that the tornado had probably passed and that everything would be fine now. The man was scared and asked why the girl was so pale. Charon replied that everything was fine and the tornado was over. Choi Wu Hyuk said that Charon was right. Ji Hong was surprised by this. One of the men said he wanted to go out and take a look around. Another of the men agreed to go with him. Ji Hong said he'd go too and asked the professor to keep an eye on Charon. Choi Wu Hyuk agreed. Ji Hong could not believe it. He was climbing the stairs and thought that a tornado like this could not suddenly disappear. Suddenly, he and the men were numb with wonder. It was incredible. The sky was blue and clear. The winds had destroyed everything in their path, and it was as if they had magically stopped. Someone asked Ji Hong if everything was really okay. A man from Charon was sitting on the stairs, and he was talking to someone on the phone. Ji Hong replied that they were in a shelter and everything was being repaired. The woman on the other end of the phone said that she was shocked by the news and she was very happy that everything was okay. The man said that everything was fine and not to worry. He apologized for making her worry. The man hung up the phone. He was talking to his mother. The tornado was very strong. Just think, it had to go across the sea to Korea. The most powerful tornado in history had hit the world. But it mysteriously disappeared. There were witnesses to this inexplicable phenomenon. People stood in the yard with placards, claiming that the miracle was created by God himself. Even though the tornado was gone, the enormous consequences it caused did not disappear. Buildings were toppled and roads were destroyed. But there is no evil without good, and there were no human casualties. Choi at Heek said that he was informed that the conference was canceled. They will have to change the schedule and move to Los Angeles. He advised everyone to have a good rest. They suddenly had free time. The huge skyscrapers of L.A. lit up the night sky. Ji Hong clutched his blanket and could not believe that they had survived. He buried his head in the pillow and thought about the fact that they had faced such a disaster on their first trip abroad. He was very worried, and now his body was breaking down. Charon sat on the bed next to her father. The man looked at his daughter and asked if she was scared. The girl answered embarrassedly that she was, but her daddy was hugging her, so she felt good. Ji Hong told her that if they had a free day tomorrow, he would take her to all kinds of fun places. Charon was excited and said that she really wanted to do that. Then the man wished his daughter sweet dreams. The girl said good night in return. After a while, Ji Hong was sleeping soundly. Charon looked at him and thought. She reached out to him and told him to be healthy. Suddenly she stopped and thought. But still with a scared look she told her daddy to be healthy. To be strong and healthy. She looked up at the starry sky. Charon did not understand why nothing was happening. Tears rolled down her eyes. The dragon's language no longer worked. She clutched the blanket with her hands and thought that she needed to talk to her mother. But without the dragon's language, she could not even do that. Her eyes filled with tears. She thought she would never be able to do it again. Suddenly, she burst into tears and cries. Ji Hong woke up and asked his daughter why she was crying. Charon was sobbing. The man said that he was nearby. The girl put her hands over her eyes and called for her mom and dad, saying she was scared. Ji Hong thought the girl was having a nightmare. He thought the girl was okay, but it seems he was wrong. Charon continued to cry. The man hugged his daughter and told her that everything was fine and nothing was wrong. Then Ji Hong offered to sing Charon a lullaby. 
The girl was surprised. The man said that it was so that she would no longer have nightmares and then they would wake up and go for a walk. She agreed. The man began to sing a lullaby to the girl. Sharon stopped crying. After a while, the girl fell asleep to the melody of the lullaby. Ji Hong lay down next to her, said he loved her, and wished her sweet dreams. The man looked at the girl and thought that he was scared and did not know how scared Sharon was. He wished that Yona was with her at such moments. Tomorrow he has to make Sharon the happiest and compensate for the absence of his mom. He had become stronger, so now he could walk with his daughter wherever she wanted. The next morning the sun shone through the windows. Sharon thought about it. She knew this would happen. Ji Hong had been dreaming. The girl asked if he was okay. Ji Hong lay on the bed and thought about how long it had been since he had had a seizure. He turned pale. It was strange, because he had been feeling well lately. Perhaps the tornado had somehow affected his condition. The man apologized to Chiron and asked her to rest for a while, and then they could go for a walk. The worried girl agreed. She thought that if she could use her powers, her daddy would recover quickly. Chiron did not know when they would return. The boomerang returned to the girl. The side effects brought her to energy exhaustion. She was as if chained to the bottom of a deep reservoir with a black tornado in her heart. In this state, it was impossible to use the dragon language. Now Charon understood what her mother was talking about. She sat on the bed, dangling her bare feet, and wondered how long it would take. If this case drags on, her mom will intervene and help her. And if she didn't, maybe the effects would stop soon. Charon was outraged. She thought it was unfair because her mother could have helped her. She thought that she didn't seem to care about her at all. This made Charon angry. All she wanted to do was have fun with her daddy. The sun shone through the window pane. Ji Hoon stretched out in bed. Resting was good for him. He looked at Charon and thought that she was not feeling well either. Children are unusually resilient. The man took out a brochure and asked his daughter where they should go. Ji Hong said that there were many amusement parks here, which Charon really liked. The man suggested that she go there. The girl thought about it and said she didn't want to. She suddenly pointed and said she wanted to go there. It was Koreatown and Chinatown. The man was surprised to ask how she was sure, since these were just ordinary streets. Charon enthusiastically said she liked it and asked her dad to go there. Ji Hoon wondered why Charon was more interested in a regular walk than an amusement park. He thought that she would be bored there, but if Charon wanted to go, he couldn't refuse her. The man suggested that his daughter start with the nearest neighborhood, but said that it would not be very interesting. The girl smiled happily and agreed. Ji Hong and Charon came to Chinatown Lot. There were red lanterns hanging around and Chinese style buildings. The man was surprised by the large number of people. He looked at Charon, who looked happy. He did not understand why the girl was having fun here. Suddenly, Charon pointed to some delicious food and said she wanted it. Charon was happy, and Ji Hong was embarrassed to think that the girl just wanted to try street food. The caramelized strawberries really looked delicious. The father and daughter happily walked down the street eating the delicacies. The man asked if the girl liked it. Charon said she did, and then they would go to Koreatown. Ji Hoon asked her if she was sure about that, because there would be nothing interesting there, just like at home. Charon replied that she had fun where there were lots of people. The man was surprised to hear that. The girl replied that she just likes to watch people around her. Charon looked around and said that she was thinking about what these people might be thinking. What kind of life they live. Many of them had left their homes and the girl was curious about their lives. Ji Hong thought about the people who had left their homes. Now everything became clear to him. Charon just wanted to see the people who were close to her. The man smiled at his daughter and said that he could not even think of such a thing. Charon smiled back and told him that daddy should try it because it was fun. The man ate his strawberries and thought that it was really interesting to watch people. He had never had the opportunity to take a break and think about the lives of others. It was not in his nature. Sharon really knew how to make people interested. 
The man was wondering if he could save up for a trip when he was done learning. Suddenly, someone approached them. A girl with incredibly beautiful blue eyes said that Ji Hong's baby was very cute and asked to take a picture with her. Ji Hong apologized in embarrassment because he did not understand her request. The woman repeated that she wanted to take a photo with his daughter to preserve the memories of the trip. Ji Hong looked at the embarrassed woman and couldn't understand why she was speaking Chinese and not English because he didn't look Chinese. Suddenly, Charon said that they were not Chinese, but Korean. She smiled at the woman and said that her daddy only knew Korean and English, so she asked her to speak English. Ji Hong was surprised that Charon had learned Chinese, and the woman praised Charon for her knowledge. The woman apologized, saying that they were in Chinatown, so she thought Ji Hong was Chinese. The man replied that everything was fine and asked what the woman wanted. Charon whispered to him that the woman was a traveler and she wanted to take a picture with her as a souvenir. Charon smiled happily at the Inca and asked if she had told her father everything correctly. The woman smiled and said yes. Ji Hong agreed to take a picture of them and the woman gratefully handed him her phone. The man pointed the camera at them. When the woman picked up the phone, she was a little surprised. She asked if this was the best he could do. Ji Hong asked her, embarrassed, if she liked it. The woman replied that he had done his best. She said she would teach him a trick and asked him to do it with the child. Ji Hong surprisingly agreed. The woman asked him to strike a pose and took an incredibly beautiful photo. Ji Hong told her that the photo was great and that the woman had talent. She laughed and said that she and her daughter were just good models. The woman asked what brought them to the United States. She thought that the husband and daughter had decided to take a family trip. Ji Hong replied that it was something like that and now they were heading to Koreatown. The woman happily said that this was a good coincidence, because she was also going there. The woman said her name was Maria, and she was from Serbia, and asked if they would mind if she joined them. The woman said it was a good coincidence, because she was also on her way to Koreatown. She said her name was Maria, and she was from Serbia, and asked if the father and daughter would mind if she joined them. Jihun did not know what to say. He was embarrassed to think that they didn't even know each other. He decided to ask Charon, and if she didn't mind, then. Ji Hong asked the girl's opinion. She said that she was okay with it, as long as her dad was okay with it. Charon said that this auntie didn't look bad. Ji Hun looked at the woman. Charon was right, Maria clearly had no bad intentions. There was nothing wrong with meeting people while traveling. The woman shook his hand and said it was nice to meet him. Ji Hong introduced himself and replied that it was nice to meet him too. He thought they would have good memories. Ji Hun, Charon, and their new friend made their way to Koreatown. Ji Hong asked Maria about her teenage life in China. She replied that she had been in the United Kingdom for elementary school and China for middle school and moved to the United States for high school. She then asked about Ji Hong's education. The man replied that he spent all his school years in Korea. Maria replied that she was very interested in their country, so she was happy to hear that they were from Korea. The man asked what she was interested in about their country. Maria replied that what Serbia was going through was very similar to what Korea was going through. That was how she had studied, and for her, Korea was an example for Serbia's revival. Ji Hun thought that the woman might have some political ambitions as she was fluent in foreign languages and had studied abroad. Maria then asked about Ji Hun's wife and why they were not traveling together. The man replied that she was not with them at the moment. Ji Hong embarrassedly said that he was happy to spend time with his daughter, but that he wished her mother was with them. Charon said indignantly that she didn't want to see her mom. The man was surprised because yesterday she had been crying and saying that she missed her. Charon said she didn't want to talk to her anymore and would only have fun with her dad. She hugged her dad angrily. Maria laughed and told Ji Hong that her daughter loved him very much. The woman noticed that Charon was good at foreign languages and asked if she had studied abroad as a child. Ji Hong replied that she had not and this was their first long distance trip. Maria was surprised because Charon spoke like a native speaker. Ji Hong replied that his daughter was very smart. 
The woman replied that she would like to have a daughter like that. She looked at her watch and noticed that time had passed very quickly. Then Maria suggested that they go to a baseball game. Ji Hong was surprised. She said that she wanted to watch the La Dodgers play tonight and asked if Ji Han and Charon would be her teammates. The man replied that he had heard that a Korean was playing for them, but he didn't know much about baseball. Maria happily began to say that she would explain everything and that there would be fireworks in the evening. Ji Hoon wondered when they would be able to watch American baseball live again. Besides, it would be good for Charon to see a professional game. He asked what she thought about it. Charon replied that she wanted to go very much. Maria offered to go if everyone agreed. All the stands were filled with people. One of the players hit the ball and the commentators happily reported that it was unbeatable. Ji Hong was surprised that they got two out so quickly. Maria replied that it was a double play. She explained that the pitcher had thrown the ball to second base before the batter touched first. And the fielder at second caught the ball and threw it to first base. Ji Hong started to say that the second baseman threw the ball to the right fielder and the two of them ran, which caused the batter to come out and ask if this was true. Maria replied that it was two outs. The man smiled and replied that he did know a little about baseball. Ji Hong asked if it was Charon's first time at the game. She said yes, but thanks to Maria, she understood everything. The girl was happy. Ji Hong breathed a sigh of relief because the girl was enjoying herself. He was worried that she wouldn't get into it, but there is a certain joy in cheering for the team. The ball flew towards the stands. It was a home run. The man sitting behind them was able to catch the ball, and everyone was very happy about it. The atmosphere in the stands was amazing, the interaction with others, and the enjoyment of the game. The accumulated stress immediately disappeared. Ji Hong was simply mesmerized. Suddenly, the girl pointed to something in surprise. It was the kissing camera. Everyone cheered, and Ji Hong closed Charon's eyes in embarrassment. Everyone was kissing on camera. Random people were caught on camera. Charon did not understand what her dad was doing. Ji Hong told her that children should not watch this. The man hoped that the camera would not point at them, because with so many people it was unlikely. Suddenly, the camera showed them. Ji Hong was stunned. Maria asked what they should do now. In the stands, someone was shouting for kisses. Someone was shouting that it would never happen. And it was Ji Hong. Everything was wrong, and the audience was asking him to kiss her. Suddenly, someone touched his shoulder. Maria told Ji Hong to end it quickly. The man looked at her in embarrassment, and the woman reached out to him, expecting a kiss. People were screaming all around. Mary's lips were moving closer to Ji Hong's. The man thought it was too much, he didn't know what to do. He felt as if he had lost his mind and did not understand anything. Yet Ji Hong was married. Ji Hong embarrassedly reached for Maria's lips, because a kiss was inevitable. The woman seemed to be suggesting that he end it quickly. But Ji Hong could not, he was not ready for it. Suddenly, the people around him were surprised. Everyone clapped their hands. The screen showed Charon kissing her dad on the cheek. The girl smiled at the camera. Someone told Ji Hong that his daughter was the best and that they would have a daughter as well. Charon hugged her father. He asked if she was ashamed. Suddenly, Charon looked at him angrily. She asked why her father was going to kiss a girl who was not her mother. She said that it didn't matter how many times they had seen each other, but you can't kiss someone else. Ji Hoon was worried. Charon asked what would happen if she told her mom. He imagined Jonah trying to kill him with a huge baseball bat. The man was scared. Charon hugged her dad's hand and told him not to worry. She smiled and said that mom would never know and that she trusted him. Ji Hong thanked his daughter. Charon thought about how her mother hadn't helped her and that was why she wouldn't tell her. It was revenge. The girl made a face as if her mother could see her now. Finally, the fireworks started. Everyone was leaving the stadium. Maria said that today was a wonderful day and asked Ji Hong what he thought about it. 
The man replied that it was a lot of fun and that it was not a bad idea to go for a walk. Maria thanked Sharon for helping her out. The girl said she was just saving her dad, from her mom, of course. The woman asked Ji Hong if he was on social media. The man was surprised to hear that of course he was. Iaria said that was great because she would be able to contact them. She wanted to have a friend on every continent. It was a wonderful goal. The woman waved goodbye and said that she hoped Ji Hong and Charon would have the best memories of the trip. Ji Hong smiled and said goodbye to Maria in return. He turned to his daughter and suggested that they go to the hotel. Ji Hong suggested that Charon go to Hollywood tomorrow. She was surprised, but agreed. Ji Hong's eyes were shining. He planned to stay in Hollywood, visit the Griffith Observatory, and then go to Universal Studios, and then the trip would be a success. Sharon was upset. She asked how her dad was feeling, since he had been on his feet all day. Ji Hong replied that he was fine, because if they were in America, they had to visit all the famous places. His morning pain was completely gone. He felt his muscles and said that today he was in very good shape, not even tired from walking. Sharon thought about it. Daddy did not know that his endurance was the fruit of her strength. She looked at her father. She couldn't use them today. The man was cramping again. He didn't understand why his body was so sore after a short walk because he hadn't walked that far yesterday. Sharon stood sadly by the bed. They couldn't go to Hollywood. Kyron realized that she wouldn't be able to help her dad anymore. She thought that next time she should learn the magic of recovery. Sitting in the hotel, Ji Hong and Charon completed their first trip. After a while, they returned to Korea. Ji Hong's friends did not appreciate the souvenirs. They did not understand who goes to Los Angeles and buys a keychain with the Eiffel Tower. Jang Su said he didn't know Ji Hong had such bad taste. Sharon said that she chose them. The men immediately changed their minds and began to say that the girl knew what she was talking about because they were about to visit France, so they really liked the gift. Ji Hong said he was joking. He pulled out a bag of gifts from behind his back and told his friends that these were the souvenirs they had asked for. The boys were surprised. Ji Hong told them to be kinder next time. Jang Su asked if Ji Hong had been to a Law Dodgers game. The man asked him how he knew. Jang Su showed him something on his phone. A picture of Charon kissing Ji Hong was made into a gif. The man was shocked. He could not understand how this was possible. His friends began to say that this gif had spread all over the internet. They asked if Ji Hong had been asked to participate in the show. Suddenly, someone called the embarrassed man and he picked up the phone. He pretended that he was receiving a call from the Jung program. The men waited with excitement for him to finish. Ji Hoon apologized and said that he didn't have much to do. Jang Su was surprised to hear that, as it was a very interesting show. Ji Hoon replied that he had more important things to do. His friends told him that he could become popular. The man replied that he was not interested. Suddenly, they heard someone's footsteps. The professor said that Mr. Ji Hoon would not be able to participate in the show for now because Choi Woo-suk smiled and said that Ji Hoon would be leaving for training camp soon. Choi woo Hake said that Mr. Kim would not be able to do this because Mr. Kim will soon go to the army. The man was surprised because he thought he had about three years left. Choi woo Hyuk replied that it would be good for him. Sharon asked what the army was, and if her father was going, she was going too. Ji Hoon was embarrassed and didn't know what to say. Suddenly, Professor Choi told the girl that he and her father had to go away and that he would tell her everything soon. Sharon was surprised. Ji Hoon is worried. The army. It seemed to him that he would not be there soon. The professor said that he understood that Ji Hong didn't really want to go there right now. But there was a reason for that. The man did not understand anything. Choi Woo Hyuk said that everyone around him was talking about the Fourth Industrial Revolution. The political revolution is the same. Ji Hong asked what this had to do with his service. Choi Woo Hyuk replied that everything has its time. The man was surprised. 
The professor explained that in recent years, the topic they were researching had begun to gain popularity. It was now being discussed at the national level. This meant that they would soon gather a lot of support and become more influential. The professor believed that this would happen and they would be able to take advantage of this and fly high. Suddenly, Choi Woo-suk slammed his hand on the table, which scared his student. He told ji Hoon to just imagine. He told him that he was flying high and then being pulled down to the ground by military service. The professor asked him if this did not seem tragic to the man. ji Hoon replied in embarrassment that he understood. Choi Woo-hyuk said that this was the reason why he wanted to resolve the matter as soon as possible and asked what ji Hoon thought about it. The man thought that it was really better to go to the service now than to put it off until later. After all, it would take several months before he would be there and he would have time to mentally prepare himself. Ji Hong smiled as he thought about it. He happily told the professor that he agreed with him. Choi Woo Hyuk happily replied that it was a good decision and he knew Ji Hong would agree, which is why he used his connections. He said that the man would be taken away next week. Ji Hong was not expecting to hear this. The father and daughter were sitting in the park. Charon asked if her father had the option to refuse. Ji Hoon replied that he didn't want to go, but he had to defend the country. The girl was surprised to hear that he had to defend the country from whom. The man replied that they had a peace treaty with North Korea. Charon was disappointed because she couldn't bomb it to stop her dad from leaving. If she did something like that, she would never be able to use the dragon language again. But four weeks seemed too long for the girl. Suddenly, Charon threw herself into her father's arms and began to shout that if her daddy went to the army, she would not be able to see him, and she would also give up her studies without him. Passersby looked back in surprise at the girl's cries. Ji Hong explained to her that she had to study and he had to serve in the army. He said that Charon was smart and should understand that. The girl continued to cry and say that she could not live without him. Charon was crying, and Ji Hong thought that it was difficult to think of something in such a situation. Then he asked his daughter what she thought about the fact that if she did well in school, her dad would grant her a wish. The girl stopped crying and looked at her father in surprise. She was thinking. Then she started to smile and said that she had one wish. Ji Hong asked her to wish for something that he would be able to fulfill. Charon spun around happily and said that it would be very easy. The girl pointed up with her finger. She told her daddy to go to college with her, and that was her wish. Ji Hong was very surprised by this. Charon laughed and said she had a plan. She presented her father with a plan of action from graduation from the training center to entering Korea University and asked what her father thought about it. Ji Hong thought it was absurd, but this was Jiren after all. Then the man asked his daughter about her studies. Charon replied that she had a plan that she would tell him about later. The man said that he did not know what the girl was planning, but he agreed to it. Charon was very happy. Then she was sad because her dad would be gone for four weeks. Ji Hong promised her that if she listened to her grandparents, he would be back very soon. They shook their little fingers as a sign of promise. A week passed. Ji Hong was busy filling out his university application documents. He also had to attend Charon's graduation ceremony. And then, the sun's rays were reflecting off the huge metal arch Ji Hong waved goodbye to his family, thanked him for seeing him off and asked them to take care of Charon. Charon's eyes were filled with tears. She waved to her dad, told him she loved him, and asked him to take care of her. She thought that even if she missed her dad very much, she wouldn't show it, because they had agreed. Ji Hong and Charon parted ways for the first time. It was already nighttime. Charon made a promise, but... The girl started screaming that she missed her daddy, she wanted to see him. Charon beat the pillow on the bed. She missed him even when they hardly saw each other because of his work. She did not understand how she could endure the whole month. If she could use the dragon's language, she would have gone to her dad right away. Charon did not understand why it was still not working. The girl raised the pillow over her head again and angrily said that she had had enough. She couldn't take it anymore. The pillow went down on the bed and suddenly a glow appeared over the surprised girl. She felt the air being filled with energy. The radiance filled the room. 
It meant. It meant that the dragon had returned. Now Charon could see her daddy. The girl's legs rose above the bed. Joyful Charon asked to be taken to her daddy. She smiled and told her dad to wait, because she would be there soon. The light began to spin and the girl disappeared. The military unit was illuminated by lanterns. Charon found herself standing over her sleeping father. She saw that Ji Hong's face was very tired. She thought that the training year was not the easiest and decided to restore his energy. The girl smiled, stretched out her arms to her father, and wished him a speedy recovery and strength. The man smiled in his sleep. Charon was happy. She hoped that this would be enough. Then the girl decided to see if her dad was okay. A ball of light appeared from his body. The girl said that anyone who hurt her daddy would have to deal with her. This ball is Ji Hong's memories. Sharon saw her dad showing his brothers a picture of his daughter and everyone saying that she was really a little model. Ji Hong was embarrassed to say that they had no idea how cute, smart, and beautiful Sharon was. The girl thought that she shouldn't be praised so much, but it was nice to hear her dad say that. Sharon also wanted to talk to him directly, but if she showed herself to her dad, her power would be revealed. She wondered what she should do. Suddenly, the girl was surprised. She saw her father at the shooting range. The girl thought that if her dad became the best at shooting, maybe he would be allowed to call her. But her father was very bad at shooting. He could not even dream of winning, because Ji Hong would be stuck there all day. Suddenly, the girl saw a do. The radiance drew her to Charon. The girl told her to hit every target and not to miss any. Charon wiped her forehead and said that it was a little unfair, but she had no choice. She said that she and her dad would be able to talk soon and she would be waiting. The morning came. Ji Hong lay on the ground with his gun in his hands and thought that it didn't matter what happened today because he had to call Charon. But yesterday he hadn't managed to hit a single target. The man was panicking. The target was far away and he didn't understand how people managed to do it. He wanted to at least get out of there and any championship was out of the question. One of the leaders said into the microphone to get ready. And then he gave the command to shoot and all the men began to shoot down the targets. Ji Hong was suddenly surprised. He did not understand what was happening. He managed to hit all three targets with just one bullet. The man thought he had some hidden talent. Ji Hong realized that he would definitely get permission to make the call. Sharon sat in her room and thought that her daddy should have called her by now. She sat with the phone in her hands and thought that her daddy had not received the award. Then the girl convinced herself that this could not be so and she just had to wait. Suddenly, the phone started ringing. Sharon happily picked up the phone. It was Ji Hong. He was standing in the phone booth and asked his daughter if she was okay. The girl replied that she missed him. Ji Hong replied that he missed him too and was very sad. He promised to do his best to see her as soon as possible. The girl began to cry. The man said that he loved her very much. Sharon was surprised. She smiled and said that she loved her daddy so much that even infinity would not be enough to describe it. Ji Hong thought that this conversation after a long separation was very important for her. If only he could talk as much as he wanted, he would stay up all night. Suddenly, the soldier accompanying Ji Hong said that 30 seconds had passed. The man told his daughter that he had to go and asked her to listen to her grandparents. The girl promised to obey and wished him health and strength. The call ended. Sharon was upset that they had given her so little time. She got out of bed and said she would do everything possible to get her dad back as soon as possible. But her mistake could have hurt him, so she would have to be patient. Sharon opened her laptop. She decided to start studying because she had nothing else to do. When Sharon got her dragon powers back, she started practicing to stay out of trouble. The girl sat at her desk and searched for something on her laptop. Since her power affected the world, people could get hurt. That's why Sharon is learning to read the thin thread of people's thoughts. She can penetrate the thoughts of internet users. The girl thought that when she became stronger, she would be able to read people's emotions and thoughts with 100% accuracy. Suddenly, Charon came across something online. She thought that the graphs were quite strange. 
There hadn't been any big changes in it lately. She decided to buy shares starting tomorrow. Sharon had a very strong desire to do this. There is no place where people's aspirations and desires are darker than on the stock market. In the stock market, greed knows no bounds. Sharon thought that by using power, she could learn the essence of greed. Also improve her control over her abilities. She dreamed that she could kill two birds with one stone by multiplying her pocket money. In addition, her father would be happy when he found out how hard she had been working. Sharon was eager to improve her control over her power and to steady greed. The endless September came to an end. Ji Hong finally completed his military service and went home. Sharon joyfully threw herself into his arms and told him that she missed him. He replied that he missed her too and asked how she was doing. Sharon replied that she missed her dad and thought about him every day. Ji Hong's father said he didn't even want to remember how gloomy the girl was. But after he called, Sharon immediately lit up. The man smiled. He suggested going out to eat. Sharon said she only wanted to eat her daddy's food because it was the best. Ji Hong's father asked if he and Sharon would like to go to Taejun for the Chuseok holiday because they would be waiting for them. The man said no problem. Sharon was surprised to hear that this was not where they had celebrated the new year. Ji Hoon replied that it was. Today was Chuseok, so he suggested making traditional rice balls. The girl smiled and said that she would go anywhere with her dad. A week has passed since they arrived in their hometown of Taejun. Cousin Ji Hoon and his aunt praised Sharon for making rice balls with her little hands that looked better than the ones in the store. The girl thanked him. The woman didn't understand how her cousin had such a cute daughter. Her mom told her to look at how Ji Hong had lost weight and gotten prettier. She also added that her nephew looked much better than before. The woman said that she had never thought about marriage, but looking at Ji Hong and Sharon, she wanted to have a child. Her mother advised her to find a good man before it was too late and she would be happy to have grandchildren. The woman said indignantly that Sharon was listening to everything. Her mother turned to her nephew and said that the girl was only seven years old and would not remember so much. Ji Hong embarrassedly replied that Charon has a good memory and remembers a lot. The women listened to Charon in amazement. She said she remembered the clothes her aunt wore last New Year's Eve. The girl said it was a black t-shirt with a sky blue sweatshirt and blue jeans with gray socks. The women opened the photo on their phones and were surprised to see that it was true. Then Ji Hong suggested something. He laid out cards in front of Charon and told her to memorize them in a minute, then asked her to name them in order from left to right. The girl asked to answer immediately. The man was surprised that she had already memorized. Charon began to tell him the location of the cards. Everything was correct. Ji Hong's aunt said that she had underestimated Charon because she wondered how such a beautiful and sweet child could be so smart. The man smiled and said that Sharon even had her own fan club. The woman was surprised at how popular the girl was. Sharon replied that she was grateful to everyone for thinking of her as a little sister. Then Ji Hong's cousin offered to play poker with a bet of 10,000 won each. Sharon happily replied that she wanted to play poker as well. Ji Hong was surprised to hear that she knew how to play. The girl replied that she had seen it on TV. The man said that psychology was more important than intelligence and asked if she really wanted to. Sharon smiled and said she would definitely win. Then Ji Hong patted his daughter's head and said that she was good at everything. The girl laughed and told her dad to just believe in her. The man thought that if he was lucky, Sharon would be able to play a few parts. But he didn't know if the child could be good at psychological games. Sharon put a straight flush on the table and said that she had won again. Everyone was surprised. The girl's aunt said that her father had given up as soon as he got bad cards. But Sharon was smiling from start to finish. So it was hard to tell whether she had good or bad cards. Ji Hong asked his daughter how she learned to play so well. Sharon wiped her forehead and said that she had studied a little psychology while her dad was in the army. Ji Hong's aunt smiled and gave her the envelope with the winnings. Sharon was excited and said she would buy something tasty for everyone. The woman replied that it was the girl's money and she should spend it on herself. 
Sharon smiled again and said that she would buy everyone some goodies. The girl's grandfather was genuinely surprised at how kind his granddaughter's heart was. He gave her some more money to make sure she had enough. Sharon asked if she would do the right thing if she accepted the money. The grandfather replied that a good heart attracts all good things. He asked her to remember that she should be kind and fair. Sharon smiled and thanked him. She ran to her dad and told him that she had been given pocket money. Her grandfather thought the girl was incredible. He said that a precious treasure had come to their home. It was already evening outside. Ji Hong was relieved to finally be able to rest. He lay on the bed and said that he had not been able to rest well after the army. Even though they had come for one day for a holiday, it felt like a whole month had passed. Ji Hong said that although the food was delicious, it was better at home. He looked at his daughter and asked her what she thought about it. Sharon replied that she didn't think so. The man was surprised, thinking that the girl would like it better in Taejeon. But he was wrong again. Then Ji Hoon asked the girl in surprise where she liked it best, and he really wanted to know. Sharon thought about it. She said she wouldn't tell him and asked her dad to guess. Ji Hong asked what kind of place it was and said that he would like to go there with Sharon. The girl thought about it. She said she wouldn't tell him until her dad guessed. The man asked for a clue. Sharon was surprised to hear that it was very easy and she didn't understand why her dad hadn't guessed yet. Ji Hong asked for one hint. The girl shrugged and said that she goes there every day. The man wondered where Charon goes every day, because it should be easy enough. But he didn't have a single thought in his head. It seems that the task was easy only in the girl's mind. Ji Hong's friend said it was too easy and they had guessed right away. The man indignantly said that he seemed to be the only one who did not understand what was going on. His friend said that he should figure it out for himself and then he would be even more impressed. Ji Hong said not to do that to him. The men replied that he should think carefully because the answer was really easy and they had work to do. Ji Hong called them parasites and said he would find the answer anyway. Ji Hong's determination did not last long. After a while, the research center was plagued with many problems. The man listened to the professor in amazement. Choi Woody said that this time, the manager asked for a report on the work done before paying him. He suggested that they talk about the results that each of them was striving for. One of Ji Hoon's colleagues suggested holding an event dedicated to the advancement of technology. The professor replied that the boss would want to see their work presented, as one of the main goals was to commercialize the AI developments of the past three years. One of the men said that first they needed to complete the research and gradually make sales in the company. His colleague replied that it was too difficult because they did not specialize in sales. Ji Hong raised his hand and asked what they thought about self-driving cars. He said that this is the most commercial development of all artificial intelligence models right now, and if they use the technology in their lab, they will be able to switch to fully autonomous driving in the future. His colleagues supported this idea, as it would be enough to rent a high-speed network to connect to the database, but if the amount of data is not large, then this will not be necessary. Choi at Heek happily said that one good idea gathers a lot of discussions around it. The only question is who will take it on. Then his colleagues suggested that Mr. Kim should be put in charge, since it was his idea. Ji Hoon was surprised and asked if they were sure they should trust a newcomer with such a task. The professor replied that there was nothing wrong with that and that he would also provide a machine for the experiments. Their colleague said that she would contact Shinsung Motors alumni to make the job a little easier. Ji Hoon asked the professor if he was sure he could take on such a high-budget project. Choi Woo Hyuk replied that the man was with them because they had always seen his potential. He told Ji Hoon to believe in himself. The man agreed and said he would do everything he could to make the project a success. Work on the autonomous driving project began and continued smoothly. Soon, the topic of the automotive industry was raised at a cabinet meeting. Telecommunications companies actively cooperated with the project. In addition, thanks to OK Kim Chul, a connection was established with Shinsung Motors. Ji Hong put the most effort into the autonomous parking. He was driving the car and said that even at this stage, the parking lot was functioning perfectly. 
His colleagues said that if they collected more data, they would definitely achieve the desired results. Ji Hong smiled and said that working with Shenzhen Motors would help with this part of the research. The woman replied that it was a good idea. She advised her husband to get the professor's permission and go ahead. Ji Hong thought that their research center did not specialize in cars, so there might be problems with trust. But they achieved good results, and now cooperation with them was very attractive. However, these were only Ji Hong's naive aspirations. The man objected indignantly and sipped his coffee. Ji Hong asked in embarrassment why they were not satisfied with the results. The man replied that it was simply that the technology was already under development in their R&D slash team. At the moment, their bosses are not interested in external research. The man put down his cup and added that they had been working well together all this time and told Ji Hong that it could be considered that they were fighting a war for influence. He nervously said that until now, all the big projects had been done in collaboration with R&D, and if Choi Wusuk's research center did research, their team would have no work. Ji Hoon said that in that case he was powerless. The man replied that it wasn't easy for them to come up with the results they had. He apologized and said that they were not ready to cooperate now. Ji Hong smiled and said that everything was fine and he understood. When the man returned home, it was already dark outside. Charon asked why Daddy was sad. Ji Hoon smiled and said that everything was fine. He apologized and said that he had been working so hard lately that he hadn't spent time with her. The girl replied that everything was fine and she would understand. Ji Hong realized that even though Charon said everything was fine, she was still sad. But the man was happy to have a daughter. Ji Hong smiled and told the girl that they would have fun tomorrow and wished her sweet dreams. Charon smiled and wished him sweet dreams as well. Ji Hong was already sound asleep. Charon got out of bed. She wondered if her dad was more upset than she thought. She didn't know how to help him. Suddenly, she remembered Chan Don Ho and how bad people like that should pay for their sins. But Charon could not force anyone to do anything. So she could not limit someone else's freedom of action. The girl walked in circles around the room and did not know what to do. She had to help her dad and not force anyone to do anything. Suddenly, Charon stopped. She smiled and realized what she could do. She picked up her laptop. She told her dad to sleep well while she worked on solving his problem. The morning came. Ji Hong asked Charon what they were going to eat. The girl wanted ramen and rice. Suddenly, the man received a phone call. It was Mr. Yang's boss. Ji Hong did not understand why he was calling him. He answered the phone. Mr. Yang said hello. Ji Hong said that they hadn't seen each other for a long time and asked what had happened. Mr. Yang replied that he had heard about the development of a decent automated parking module. Ji Hong was confused. He didn't understand how the man knew about it. Yang said that he had come across this information during his market research. He offered to meet Ji Hong to discuss the details if he had time. The man invited Yang's supervisor to their lab. He asked if it would be okay for Ji Hong to come by at 3 in the afternoon. The man smiled and replied that he would be fine with that time. Ji Hong hung up the phone. He had accidentally agreed to the meeting. The man had no idea what the urgency was. Ji Hong wondered what the parking lot had to do with Hatch Electronic. Charon stood next to her father. She had done a good job yesterday. As she expected, everything was going according to plan. Ji Hong met with the manager, Yang. The man was surprised that they were interested in the automated parking module. He didn't understand how this was connected to Hatch Electronic because they were not in the car business. CEO Young smiled and replied that this time their company had decided to focus on electric vehicles. While researching their long-running developments, he realized that they were missing an automated parking module. In addition, the lab's cooperation with Shinsung had been terminated. Ji Hong was embarrassed to hear that Yang's supervisor had the right information as the development was now on hold. Yang then said that Ji Hong should understand what he was getting at. His company wants to enter into a business partnership with their research institute. The man asked what he thought about it. Ji Hong said that he could not make such decisions. 
CEO Yang smiled. As far as he knew, Ji Hong was the key researcher in the development of the module and Professor Choi Wusuk would listen carefully to his proposal. The man replied that Yang was well prepared and said he would talk to the professor about it. Yang's supervisor told the man that he could contact the legal department for more information and then said goodbye. Yang left the cafe. He thought it was really the truth. In fact, he had come to Ji Hong because of an anonymous message in his community. The man thought that information about the electric car business and technical cooperation was strictly confidential. He didn't know who could have leaked it. Of course, after the conversation, some things came to light, but it cannot be ruled out that someone from the laboratory was involved. Yan thought that there were a thousand suspects and it would not be easy to catch the culprit. Ji Hoon was sitting in the professor's office. Choi Wu Hyuk was telling him to move on. They had already worked the case, so it could be sold. The professor smiled and said that Ji Hoon would not be held back by anything. The man objected. Choi Wu Hyuk was surprised, because it was his creation. Ji Hoon replied that it would be good if the professor also participated in the negotiations. After all, he had more experience and a higher status. Choi Wu Hyuk believed that it was Ji Hoon's idea and he should give it life. The professor added that the trip to America was good for the man. It was the same here. You need to believe in yourself and negotiate. With the support of Professor Ji Hong, on behalf of the Institute, he sat down at the negotiating table with Hatch Electronic. The man read his report. Contrary to Ji Hong's fears, the discussion went smoothly. It seemed that everything should go smoothly. But, as is always the case in the world, nothing ever goes well. Ji Hong didn't understand the urgency because they had refused. Okay, Kyung Chiol, his colleague, said that they had designed the AI database through collaboration with Shinsung, and given that they had also participated in the creation of the car parking module, they also had a stake. The man did not understand anything. The woman said it was absurd to talk about it after their proposal was rejected. Now they have become Shinsung's competitors, and they have even officially sent a notice that they are ready to defend their rights at the legislative level. Ji Hoon asked what Okay Kyung Chiol thought about this. The woman replied that he should talk to them. The man thought that this module would only cause problems. Ji Hoon knocked on the door of the professor's office and said it was him. Choi Woo Hyuk asked what was wrong with the man's face. Ji Hoon apologized and said that he seemed to have caused trouble. The professor smiled and said he didn't understand what kind of trouble. Suddenly, his face became stern and the professor said that it was the fault of those who decided to interfere in their business. Ji Hoon asked what he should do now. Choi Woo Hyuk said that he had to move forward and not give up. The professor said that he only put up with it for the sake of the company and he never liked the arrogance of the Shinsung people. Choi Woo Hyuk folded his arms and confidently said that now that they have established contact with Hatch Electronic, there is no need to endure it anymore. If they want to go to war so badly, then so be it. Ji Hong looked at him in surprise. The professor said he would be gone for a while and asked the man to work in his place. Ji Hong said that if it was research, there were probably more experienced colleagues to do it. The professor reached into a drawer. He handed the man a piece of paper. Choi Woody said that he wanted Ji Hong to teach the class instead. The man was taken aback. He was not prepared for this. The professor replied that it was just an undergraduate class. All he had to do was review the textbooks. Ji Hoon knew he had no choice. Choi Woo Hyuk told him that he would manage. It would probably take a while, so Ji Hoon would have to cover for him until next week. The professor put the books in front of the man and said that he was relying on him starting tomorrow. He also asked him to remember to read the textbooks. Ji Hong stared at a huge book on the philosophical understanding of science and technology. He was nervous and thought it would be impossible to read it all by tomorrow. It was already dark outside. Ji Hong put the book down in front of him and wondered how he was supposed to read all of this and if it was even possible. He was nervous and thought about saying that he would just not come to class. But then the professor would be upset. If you think about it, it's impossible to read. Ji Hong did not know what to do. June ran up to her dad, asked what was wrong, and said she would help. 
The man smiled and said that he had to give lectures starting tomorrow, but he wouldn't have time to read the entire textbook. He showed the girl the book and asked if it was too big. Sharon thought about it. Suddenly she said that she had read it and remembered everything. Ji Hong was stunned to hear this. Sharon replied that while Daddy was in class, the professor had let her look at it. She suggested that Daddy take notes. Ji Hong said he would be very grateful and asked if it was hard for her. The girl replied that of course not and asked him to wait for half an hour. The man thanked his daughter again. After a while, Sharon happily brought her father a laptop with the finished notes. Ji Hong was embarrassed to say that the girl was the best and the outline was great. Sharon laughed and said she was going to go play. They thought they could learn it all in a minute. The man replied in embarrassment that even one outline takes a lot of time. Sharon said sadly that she wanted to play with him, so she tried her best to help. Ji Hong thought that Sharon never ceased to amaze him, she was his pride. The man decided to start teaching her tomorrow. He told the girl that they would have fun today. Sharon jumped for joy. The lectures went much more smoothly than expected. Based on Sharon's notes and his experience, Ji Hong gave lectures as well as real teachers. His only concern was that he would not be able to have lunch with Sharon. Ji Hong sat in the dining room and thought that every day he had lunch with his daughter. It was very unusual to eat alone. He ate and thought that Sharon had a nice lunch. He was very worried. Ji Hong was lecturing again and invited the students to start their assignments. Suddenly, the classroom door opened and Jiang Su walked in. The man embarrassedly tried to ask what his friend was doing here. But he interrupted him and said it was not important. Sharon joyfully burst into the classroom. Ji Hong asked her why she had come. The girl said she missed him. She ran up to her dad, said she didn't want to eat alone, and asked why he didn't come. Ji Hong said that he was sad too. He did not know what to do. Suddenly, he looked at the students who were watching the girl hugging him and remembered that the class was not over yet. The students were also shocked. The man embarrassedly told them that it was his daughter. Suddenly, someone banged their hands on the desk and said it was a very familiar face. The girl was surprised to say that Ji Hong was the father of the famous Charon. Everyone was very shocked. They thought the girl was really beautiful and said that her father was also handsome. Ji Hong thought that the couple should continue. He smiled at his daughter and said that she was a bit of a distraction to the lecture and asked her to wait in the hallway with Jiang Su. The students began to say indignantly that the girl was not disturbing. Then the man told his daughter to take an empty seat. Sharon was happy and said she would be quiet. Ji Hong suggested that they continue solving the problems, saying that the students had until four and that those who had solved the problems and scored a passing grade could be dismissed. Sharon said she also wanted to solve the problems. The man surprisingly gave her a sheet of paper and a pencil. The girl sitting next to her thought that Sharon was too young to do this. Her friend replied that Sharon was the genius from Professor Choi Wusuk's lab. But the girl didn't believe her. Time was running out. Fifteen minutes passed, and Sharon told her dad that she had decided. She handed him the sheet and asked him to tell her how many points she had. Ji Hong said that she had no mistakes and did a great job. The students were shocked, and the girl was happy to be praised. Then one of the students brought him her work and said that she had also finished it. Ji Hong replied that she had gotten a passing grade and could leave quietly. The girl looked at him in surprise. The man asked what was wrong. The student thought he was joking and whispered to him if Charon was doing well. The man showed her his daughter's work. The girl was shocked. She did not understand how a child of seven could solve all the problems correctly. Ji Hong said that she also had a good result and asked her not to be upset. The man proudly thought that earthly things should not compete with heavenly things. He had nothing left. The man was surprised that the professor came back so early. Choi Woo Hyuk said that he had some business to attend to and asked if anything unusual had happened. The lab technician said he would have reported it if something had happened and asked if the professor had solved all the cases. Choi Woo Hyuk whispered something in his ear, surprising the man. The lab assistant said it was obvious, otherwise everyone would have been arguing around. 
The professor asked him to call Mr. Kim to his office. He wanted to give him the news quickly. After a while, Ji Hoon was sitting in the professor's office. Choi Woo Hyuk asked him if it was interesting to give lectures. The man replied that it was a great responsibility, so it was very interesting, although difficult. The professor said that this is the job of a teacher. Overcoming difficulties, you move forward one step at a time. Ji Hoon said that the professor came back earlier than he expected and asked how he was doing. Choi Woo Hyuk said that it was scary to imagine how many people he had to see to get everything resolved. He said that his friend, the Minister of Technical Sciences, helped him the most. Ji Hong was surprised by this. The professor said that he understood a lot about their business, so he could tell everyone above him. The professor said he thought he would be heard. Ji Hong thought the professor was talking about the Ministry of Technical Sciences. But it was even higher. The man was beginning to think it had something to do with the Prime Minister. But Choi Wu Hyuk objected to that, too. If it's even higher. The man was embarrassed to think that it was related to the president. Ji Hoon thought that if it was even higher, then only the president himself could move the professor. Choi Wu Hyuk said that this was true and asked if their case shouldn't reach the president's ears. The man was still shocked. The business professor asked if Ji Hoon knew that the current president was very interested in industry. Choi Woo Hyuk put a cup of coffee down on the table and said that the president had already been told that their lab had revolutionized all four industries. And between them and Shinsung Motors, it was the lab that was chosen. The professor smiled and said that all the problems had been successfully resolved. He asked Ji Hong not to worry too much and to continue the project. The man was happy because the biggest problem was solved. With everything settled at Shinsung Motors, negotiations with the Hatch Group went smoothly. It was already dark outside. Charon asked about the cars with her dad's technology. The man said that it would take several years to implement it. The girl said that it had worked out anyway and that daddy was so busy that she was tired of being sad in the evenings. Ji Hoon apologized for not paying attention to her and promised to have fun together from now on. He asked the girl what she wanted to do. Charon thought about it and answered that she wanted to do whatever her dad wanted. Ji Hong looked at her surprised and said that they hadn't played for a long time and that maybe the girl would suggest something. Charon objected and said that she wanted to do something with him more than anything else. Then Ji Hong suggested reading a book. Charon happily agreed and said she would read as well. The man said he was planning to finish a web novel he had started and asked what his daughter would read. Charon thought about what to read. She picked up a biochemistry textbook from the shelf and said she would read that. The man was shocked. He thought that while his daughter was reading foreign scientific journals, he was reading some novels. Ji Hong knew that Charon was a genius, so that's why it worked out that way. If he had the same IQ, he would also be reading such journals now. Besides, it's a crime to read scientific articles in your free time. Ji Hong laid down next to Charon and began to read the novel. Suddenly he was surprised. Out of all the 60 novels he had read, only 47 were available all year round. And 13 of them are published very infrequently. Ji Hong was upset because the vacation he was looking forward to was not available. Charon asked him what was wrong. The man explained that his favorite novels had been suspended and he had nothing else to read and he had been waiting for this day. The girl touched him and asked why he was upset. She told her dad that if there was nothing to read, he could write it himself. Ji Hong got out of bed with some mockery and asked if he should write himself. Charon replied that if she did, it would be cool. The man said that he was being presumptuous because it still required talent. The professor asked the surprised Ji Hong if he would write a novel on his own. The man replied that he and the novel were incompatible and that the professor was too harsh. Choi Wuhak told him seriously that the recent news had mentioned how a Japanese artificial intelligence had taken part in a literary competition. He smiled and said that if they could do it in Japan, there was nothing stopping them. Moreover, the professor thought that their artificial intelligence could challenge art. Ji Hong said that in that case, a sample of Charon's work was needed. The professor said that the man could write it himself and publish one volume. Ji Hong asked if his lack of writing talent would hinder him. 
The professor replied that the process is important and with quality attention, they will be able to make a full-fledged artificial intelligence. Choi Woo Hyuk told the man not to try to write too well. The main thing is that he should like it. It was already dark outside. Ji Hong opened his laptop and decided to write. Although the professor had told him to just write, he couldn't think of a topic. Sharon asked her father what he was doing. The man replied that he was trying to write a novel and asked if the girl wanted to join him. Sharon was excited to write with him. Ji Hong asked what kind of novel she would like to write. Sharon thought about it and suggested writing a fantasy. The man was surprised because the girl said they were not interesting. Sharon replied that it was true, so she would write it herself. She wanted to show what a real fantasy is, breathing with dreams and illusions. Ji Hong smiled and said he hoped she would succeed. Sharon looked at her father with interest and asked what he was going to write. The man said he didn't know and asked if the girl had any advice for him. Sharon thought about it and started looking for something on the internet. She asked her dad what he thought about something romantic. Ji Hong was surprised. He had never read anything like that and didn't know if he could do it. Sharon happily told him to write a story about him and his mom. He thought about it because it was a good idea. After all, stories about teenage love are always popular. Ji Hong thanked her for the good idea and suggested that she start writing. Sharon wished her dad good luck. Ji Hong started writing. He chose a topic. The first meeting, the first kiss, the first trip. He thought about writing about this first of all. They first met in the sixth grade. They became friends while on duty. They went through middle school and high school together. They did well in school and were popular, so there was plenty to worry about. The man continued to type. He remembered how Yona told Ji Hoon that he was very late and kissed the embarrassed man. He was sad. He did not understand what they were doing. A month passed. The professor was reading Ji Hoon's novel. Choi Woo Hyuk was very surprised that the man had written a novel. It just needed a little work and could be sent to the printer. Ji Hoon thanked him in surprise. The professor said that he was not speaking in vain. He and Cherny's work needed to be uploaded to artificial intelligence data. Ji Hong did not think he would be recognized for his work. He was surprised that his skills were worthy of praise. Writing was much more interesting to him than he thought. He thought about trying to write something else. Inspired by his professor's praise, Ji Hong almost immediately began work on his second novel. He sat at his computer and thought that maybe he could come up with something worthy again. It was time to challenge the daily web novels. The comeback tag was popular now. The man wanted to combine an action movie with a comeback. He came up with the title The Return of the Rough Rider. It suddenly occurred to him that the title was already a masterpiece. Ji Hoon wondered what would happen if it rose to the top of the list. He did not understand why he wanted to become a writer at such moments. Ji Hong finally plunged into his fantasy. After a while, he finally finished the first chapter. It turned out to be longer than he expected. He thought about publishing it on a panunit. The man signed up. After a while, the novel was uploaded. He nervously checked to see how many people had read it and thought that he could get to the top from the first chapter. After ten minutes, Ji Hong was still indignantly checking the number of views. After thirty minutes, he kept checking. He couldn't believe it. Ji Hong didn't understand why the number of views didn't change. He thought that nowadays everyone only reads novels with large reach and thought that he should post a few more chapters and then the views would definitely start. He told himself not to be upset and to continue writing with renewed vigor. Sharon looked at him. She thought about it. But Ji Hong's confidence was in vain. For twenty chapters, no one had written a single commentary. The man looked at his work. It was very difficult for him to describe the fictional world. He realized that there was no point in being praised for his first novel. Ji Hong resigned himself to the fact that he had just had a good experience and needed to continue what he had started. Suddenly, he looked at the screen in surprise. A comment appeared. It said that Ji Hong had talent, but it seemed as if he was using it in the wrong place and should write about something closer to his heart. The man thought about these words. 
His last novel was based on his experience. He understood what he was writing about. What if he had something in his memory that was not related to everyday life? And he remembered how he met little Charon. Ji Hong realized that he was looking far away, but he could not see anything under his nose. There was something fantastic in his surroundings. He called the novel My Daughter is an Angel Who Lost Her Wings asterisk and thought it would turn out well. Charon approached her father and asked if he was doing well. Ji Hong said that he was. He said that one of his readers had given him some advice today, so he would try to write a novel about him and his daughter. Charon was excited that they would be the main characters. Then Ji Hong asked how the girl was doing. Charon said that she was doing well, and when she was done, she would show him everything. The man looked at their work and said that writing fantasy was difficult, but her work was outstanding. He asked where the girl got the name. The mythical fog swallowed the golden apple. The man asked what it meant. Charon laughed and said that her dad would understand when he read it. But she strictly forbade him to show it to anyone until he had read it himself. Daddy should be the first to read it. The man agreed and asked if he could read it now. The novel says that God created the world. There were mountains and sands all around. He began to raise people as his own foster children. Humanity ruled the whole earth using spiritual words. They could create a river in the desert or make a road across the sea. They could make grain sprout in dead soil or water seep through stones. People were powerful and fearless creatures. But along with the power of the spiritual words, human greed grew. Eventually people rebelled against God. Angry, he took away the protesters' strength and left them to eke out a miserable existence. But those who remained on God's side could still use spiritual words. They laughed at the rebels and, to separate themselves, nicknamed themselves dragons. The dragon clan began to rule people with the help of the dragon's language. All earthly treasures began to belong to them. To get a miserable coin, people tried their best to be faithful to the clan. But one day the god said goodbye to the dragons for a long time and disappeared. He went on a long journey. The absence of the god changed the dragons' minds. They said that the deity had given them life and they should follow absolute perfection. Others said that the deity said that he would protect those who would be saved on the day of judgment. In the meantime, they should stay here and rule over people. They could not agree and each went his own way. The dragons who decided to follow God gave their wealth to the people. They were happy when they saw a pile of treasures. But the dragons laughed at them. They said that the treasures had blinded the people and that none of them would use the golden apples to save themselves. People fought for the right to have the treasure and no longer worshipped the clan. The dragons that remained on earth decided to hide and watch. The existence of dragons may have become a myth, but the golden apples for the Day of Judgment are still hidden somewhere. Ji Hong did not understand where this certainty came from. It was just a wonderful text. The man asked the girl in surprise if there was anything in this world that she could not do. The girl looked at him and said that she could not hurt her daddy. She had never really done anything bad to her husband. Ji Hong patted her head. The girl smiled. The man thought that the girl's novel had an open ending and there would be no next volume. Charon said there would be, and she would tell him how to get the golden apple. Ji Hong asked her to tell him about it first, because it was very interesting. Charon sat in her father's arms and thought. It was not a good thing to tell, but since he was her daddy, she would tell him. But she told him it was a secret, and if he told anyone, she would be very offended. Charon started whispering in his ear that it was a matter of. The man asked his daughter to tell him the rest of the story first, as he was very interested. Charon sat in his arms and thought. She said that she would tell him, since he was her daddy, but in general, it was not allowed to tell such things. The girl said it was very secret, and if he told anyone, she would be offended. Ji Hong promised her that he would be as mute as a fish. The girl agreed and started whispering in his ear in secret. She said that Ji Hong already had a golden apple. The man was surprised. He did not understand what Charon was talking about. Charon smiled. Ji Hong realized that he hadn't heard her. He thought that the girl didn't want to spoil anything, so she was just saying stupid things. He decided to stop asking and just wait. 
Ji Hoon thought that this was Charon's way of showing him that it was better not to question her prematurely. He would see what was in the next volume. The man thanked his daughter for telling him. Charon smiled. The next morning, Ji Hong was at the university. His friends could not believe that Charon had written this novel. Jang Su said she was a great writer and asked if there was anything she couldn't do. Ji Hong replied that there was. She didn't know how to upset him. Jang Su was outraged, asking why the man was so capricious, because he had asked about something completely different. One of his friends asked that new novels were gaining popularity and whether the man was thinking of making money from them. Ji Hoon replied that positive feedback from readers was enough for him because he was not a professional to charge money for it. He hoped that the novel he was currently writing would be enjoyed by readers. Charon finds meaningful novels easy to write, and most people rate them well. Ji Hong thought that of course he could make good money in this fashion, but until he finished his professional training, he couldn't do anything. Suddenly, his phone rang. Ji Hong picked up the phone. He was surprised to hear that he had ordered a delivery, but he would have to pick up the parcel himself. The man replied that he would be right there. Jang Su asked who he was talking to so carefully. Ji Hong was surprised by his question. Embarrassed, he explained that he had ordered a doll for Charon for Christmas. He thought they could deliver it, but it was too fragile, so he'd better pick it up himself. Chan Su was surprised at the huge amount of money for a doll. The man replied that this doll was one of a kind. He wanted to give her something unusual. Once a year, it is not a pity for Charon to spend such a sum. Ji Hong said that he was going to leave, and if the girl asked where he was, he asked her to say that he would be back soon. The men nervously said that when he was away, Charon's face was so scary. Jang Su asked why Ji Hoon hadn't made up his mind yet. The man asked what they were talking about. Jang Su said that he was wondering where Charon wanted to celebrate Chusok. The man had forgotten about it because he was busy designing the parking lot module. Chan Su told him to think about it before Christmas and not to disappoint Charon. He told his friend to leave before the girl came out and promised to tell her that he had urgent business. Ji Hong was surprised. The men watched the door close behind him. They thought that Ji Hong was smart, but he was a mess at simple things. Suddenly, Charon came in and asked where her dad had gone. The men were scared. She was looking at them. Jang Su said that her father had been called to a lecture. The girl was outraged. She turned around and said that she understood. Without Ji Hoon, she was really unfriendly. But nothing could be done about it. It was already evening. Ji Hoon was coming back from the store and planned to give Charon a doll in the morning. He also had to prepare a kind of festive breakfast. And they also had to decide where to hold the party. Charon had to remember the end of this year. Ji Hoon was in a state of thought. They had already gone to the amusement park in the mall. Then he thought about renting a car and driving out of town. Or take Charon to a play. Although, probably something else would be better. The man stopped. In fact, he had become a father, but he knew nothing about his daughter. He wanted to please Charon so badly, but he didn't even know where she wanted to go. Suddenly, he noticed a girl addressing her parents. She was saying that she was very happy that they were going out today and wished it could happen every day. Ji Hong looked at them. He remembered Charon, who loved absolutely everything she did with him. The man realized something. A few weeks passed. Christmas Day came. Charon looked at the doll with joy and said that it was very beautiful and sweet. She thanked her father and kissed him on the cheek. Ji Hong said that he was happy when she was happy. The man told his daughter that he would wash up and they would start cooking and asked Charon to play with the doll for a while. The girl agreed. The girl smiled after him. As soon as the door closed behind the man, the girl thought sadly that her daddy had been very nervous when he chose the gift. She could have done without it. She was sad that her daddy did not know anything about her. Charon sat down on the bed and said that this was not what she wanted. She looked at the doll and thought that her mother was right when she said that men do not understand women's feelings at all. Charon looked at the doll again and told it to come to life. The doll moved. It bowed before Charon and asked her to give it a name. The girl was surprised. 
She hadn't thought of one yet. Sharon looked at the bookshelf where there was a book by Oriana Palish. She told the bowed doll that she would be called Oriana from now on. Sharon told Oriana that from now on she had to obey her, and when she and her father were not at home, she had to protect the house. The doll understood and bowed again. Sharon told her that if any criminals decided to break into their house illegally, Oriana should tell her mistress, and she would deal with them. Sharon also added that when they were at home, Oriana had to pretend to be an ordinary doll. The doll obeyed her. Sharon ordered her to climb on the table and sit there. The doll started to walk as ordered. It sat on the table and froze. It was as if the doll had never come to life. Sharon thought that her daddy had been very meticulous in preparing the gift for her. It was good that she found a use for it. The girl thought that when they returned from the walk, she would have to tell him everything. So that he wouldn't do that in the future. Ji Hong and Sharon came to the ice rink. The girl was delighted. She skated and said it was very cool. The man said there was nothing she couldn't handle. Even on skates, Sharon learned to skate quickly. The girl laughed and said that his tips helped her. Ji Hoon suggested that they go skating some more and then go for a walk by the Changi Echen River at sunset. Sharon happily agreed. The man watched his daughter skate skillfully on the ice. He was thinking. It seems he hit the mark, the girl was enjoying it very much. After a while, they came to a river with garlands of stars hanging over it. Sharon saw a shining reindeer with a sled floating on a platform on the river. The man asked her if she liked it. Sharon said she did, and she also remembered seeing the Christmas tree at their amusement park. Jihon was glad that she liked it. Sharon thought that her daddy was looking into her eyes again. It was really quite easy for her to be around him. She closed her eyes and decided it was time to tell him everything. Sharon turned to her father. Suddenly, Ji Hoon started talking about a place where they were together. The place she wanted to visit the most. The man and his daughter were standing by a Christmas tree. He asked if this was the place. Sharon looked at him in surprise. She said indignantly that her daddy didn't know. And he didn't know until the moment he started preparing the gift. The Christmas tree was shining. Ji Hong said he was very worried about this, but then he suddenly remembered. He remembered that Charon liked everything, as long as they were together. The man said that it was good that he guessed right. He felt a little embarrassed. Charon pushed her head into his stomach and asked her father to promise her something for the future. Ji Hong was surprised. Charon asked him not to worry about a gift. After all, the best gift for her was time spent with her dad. Ji Hoon said he understood. He patted Sharon's head and told her that he wouldn't do it again. He also added that he loved spending time with her the most. Sharon hugged her dad happily. Some time has passed. The old year was eventful. And now the new year has come. Everything was covered in snow. Ji Hong and his colleagues from the research center went to a ski resort to celebrate the new year. Ji Hong said that he had been thinking of going snowboarding for a long time. Jang Su told him not to be professional, but to just have fun. Charon was excited. They all went down the mountain happily. Ji Hoon asked his friend if he thought he would be able to get down, because he was not used to snowboarding. Jang Su said that the man was good at sports, so he would probably make it. If he falls down without getting hurt, then there is no need to worry. Ji Hoon told Sharon to be careful on the first descent. The girl agreed. The snow sparkled under the snowboard. Ji Hoon thought it was very cool, but he wondered if he was going too fast. The man turned to his daughter and told her to be careful and follow him. Suddenly he was surprised. Sharon's hair flew past him. The girl was confidently riding down the mountain. Sharon took off her mask and happily told her dad to hurry up. Ji Hong realized that there was no point in worrying about her. He told his daughter that she was much better at snowboarding than he was. He asked her when she had learned how to do it. Sharon said that when she lived with her mom, she used to ride with her uncles. Last time he taught her how to skate, and now she will teach him how to snowboard. Ji Hong said he would try his best. A woman was watching them. Suddenly she addressed them. She asked if they were the father and daughter from the meth lab. 
The man said, embarrassed, that six months ago it was very popular, but it was still remembered. The woman said it was too beautiful to forget. She said that she had wanted to contact them back then, but for some reason it didn't work out and that this meeting was probably a sign of fate. Ji Hong was surprised. The woman handed him a business card and said that she was Kang Hanna, the former head of the inactor's rookie team. She would like his daughter to grow up in their organization and asked how Ji Hong got the idea. The man was surprised. Charon asked her dad what it was. Kang Hanna explained that it was an entertainment agency that employed famous actors such as Kang Rada and Na Ji Hyun. After completing training with their team, you can become a sought-after actor. Charon thought about how to refuse. Ji Hoon thought that Charon was really worth trying. But she said she wouldn't do anything without him. Even on Christmas, she wanted to spend time with him the most. He should have said no and not put them in a difficult position. Sharon said it was an interesting proposal, but she would think about it for a while, and then she would contact their organization through her dad.